Before we go any farther, I guess I should introduce myself. My name's Makoto Naegi.
Oh, hey! Another new kid? Huh? Then you guys are all... Yeah. We're all new here. Today's supposed to be our first day of class. So, counting him, that makes 15. Seems like a good cutoff point, but I wonder if this is everyone.
I'm Kiyotaka Ishimaru. I believe in bold simplicity. Let's work together on our educational crusade. Problem. What the heck? <laughs> I'm telling you. Anyway. getting to know you. Hold on. Uh, um. You hear me? Um. Sorry. The name's Leon Kuwata. What's up?
mean, seriously? Hey, listen. You know... me by my nickname the alpha and the omega i don't mind What can we do? Totally! Yoko Kyrgyz. doesn't matter. Hello, 
Nice to meet you. I'm Chihiro Fujisaki. Just call me Hina. I do not think we have been introduced. I am Celestia Ludenberg. Yasuhiro Hagakure. Hero for short. Take it easy, yeah? I know I will.
You know? Name's Byakuya Togami. Come on. I am Sakura Ogami. Seriously? Piece of shit! Are you for real? Ha! 
Ahem, ahem. Testing, testing. Mic check, one, two. This is a test of the school broadcast system. Am I on? Can everyone hear me? Okay, well then. students. I would like to begin the entrance ceremony at right now. Please make your way to the gymnasium at your earliest convenience. That's all. I'll be waiting. Huh? Goodbye. Hey! Could it be... <laughs> you know? Huh. Uh. huh? <laughs> anyway... Come on! Is everyone here? Good! Then let's get things rolling! Huh? Uh, teddy bear? I'm not a teddy bear. I... Am Monokuma, and I am this school's headmaster. Nice 
nice to meet you all. Come on now! Master. Say what? Oh, shit. What are you gonna do? Most unfortunate. What's this?
dream! What the hell? You little piece of shit! I don't know if you're a toy or a stuffed animal or whatever the hell. Either way, I'm gonna rip you to fucking shreds! What? Violence against the headmaster is in violation of school regulations! Shut the fuck up! Let me out of here, I swear to Christ! Hey, damn it! Piece of shit! Watch out! Huh? You 
guys. Shing! Yes, indeed! And...
Hey. Listen to me! You hear me? Huh? However... Stupid! What the...? But... This is fine. Alright, so then... around <laughs> however yo Such ignorance. <laughs> Give me a break. Just hold on. 
What? What? Such ignorance. You're fucking dead. What? You want to throw down? You son of a bitch!
Sayaka? S sorry. Are you okay? Uh, I'm fine. I hope you're okay. <laughs> sorry about that. I'm psychic.
That's good. Okay, it looks like everyone's here. Time to start the meeting. Let's all go around and share what we found out during our respective investigations. The sooner we find out what's going on, the sooner we get out of here. Hold on a sec. What are you talking about? Hmm. Ah. 
Yeah. Huh. And pause. Hey, come on! Quiet down and listen! What should I do? This is bad. Bad, 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 bad! Hey, come on! Um... You see? What the hell's wrong with you?
bastard. Actually, hey. Dude, shit. Well... What the heck? But more important... It would seem... It's true. However... <laughs> you know? <laughs> What's your problem? Okay with this? Understand? Actually... What? Are you okay with this? <laughs> I see. Indeed. What can we do? <laughs> Let's see. I 
hope you are well. Um... Wah wah! Announcement. It is now 10 p.m. As such, it is officially nighttime. Soon the doors to the dining hall will be locked, and entry at that point is strictly prohibited. Okay then, sweet dreams, everyone. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. you I will send you all off into
Good morning, everyone. It is now 7 a.m., and nighttime is officially over. Time to rise and shine. Get ready to greet another beautiful day.
Listen. That's why...
That's why... I'm psychic. Announcement. It is now 10 p.m.
As such, it is officially nighttime. Soon the doors to the dining hall will be locked, and entry at that point is strictly prohibited. Okay then, sweet dreams, everyone. Good night, sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Good morning, everyone! It is now 7 a.m., and nighttime is officially over! Time to rise and shine! Get ready to greet another beautiful day! <clears throat> this is a school announcement. It is now 10 p.m. As such, it is officially nighttime. Soon the doors to the dining hall will be locked, and entry at that point is strictly prohibited. Okay then, sweet dreams, everyone. Good night, sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Which is why I said I need that pick-me-up. Good morning, everyone! 
It is now 7 a.m. and nighttime is officially over. Time to rise and shine. Get ready to greet another beautiful day. Hmm. Seriously? But more important... Seriously? Hey! Are you okay with this? Huh? Do you understand? What? What? Piece of shit! Ugh. <sighs> 
Dead. Huh? Hey, come on. <laughs> you son of a bitch. around hey um you son of a bitch hmm. Ooh, how exciting Well now. Is that right? However, that's true. Hell yeah. Yo. Jesus Christ. Piece of shit! Stop fucking around! Hell yeah! Hey, um...
Yo. You getting picked to attend Hope's Peak Academy is like a dream come true. Make sure you do your best. I'm so proud of you, son. But remember, don't push yourself too hard. Are you really watching this, Makoto? Good luck, okay? into Hope Speak Academy and his family who supported such a lucky boy. But it seems like something happened to this family's well-being. Oh boy, this is bad. What could have possibly happened to this family's well-being? Is it 
like. What does this mean? What the? Do you understand? Problem. Huh? That's enough. I hope you are well.
Sayaka? Please, help me. Why? Why is this happening to me? To kill or be killed? I just can't take this anymore. Sayaka. <gasps> Sorry. Sorry. You 
It was so strange. Lakota. I was so scared. Announcement. It is now 10 p.m. As such, it is officially nighttime. Soon the doors to the dining hall will be locked, and entry at that point is strictly prohibited. Okay then, sweet dreams, everyone. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Like I said, I'm psychic.
Let's everyone do our best to follow these new guidelines and live happily ever after together! Good morning, everyone! It is now 7 a.m., and nighttime is officially over. Time to rise and shine! Get ready to greet another beautiful day! <laughs> hey, Makoto. <laughs> Yo. Sorry. Well, hello. Indeed. <laughs> my bad, my bad. What's your problem? Yo! What? Yo! <laughs> um, however... Um... Well...
Just give up. What? What? talking.
In other words, During the trial, you'll have to present your arguments about who you think the Blackened is. And once everything comes to an end, the outcome will be decided by popular vote! If the answer you've arrived at is correct, only the one that disturbed your peace will be punished. The rest may continue their communal life. However, if you choose poorly, then the one who got away with murder will survive! And the rest of you will receive your punishment. Which of course means your school life will come to an end. As far as class trial rules go, that's all there is to it! Well... Hmm... What? Execution is... Execution! Execution! Electric chair! <laughs> Poison gas! <laughs> Torn apart like a paper plane in a hurricane! Enjoying yourself now. Are you? Huh? Violence against Headmaster Monokuma is not allowed! You violated a school regulation! I invoke the mighty summon spell! Help! To me, godly spear, Gunnir!
now you see just how serious I am. Defy me and you get shot full of holes, exploded, buried alive, disintegrated, etc. So, if you don't want that to happen to you, you best obey those school regulations. In other words... <laughs> what the heck? <sighs> That's terrible! Just a second. <laughs> of course. What the heck?
Oh, then. Damn it. You're fucking dead. So, um... Anyway... Very suspicious.
execution is execution. Execution! Electric chair! <laughs> Poison gas! <laughs> Torn apart like a paper plane in a hurricane!
by the way. You son of a bitch! Ugh, shit. You're fucking dead. Yo. What are you doing? Isn't it obvious? N no. Not really. I'm searching. Searching? Did you lose a contact or something? Listen. I see. Hey. So... Indeed. I see. Well? Yo. What? 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 By the way.
It would seem... Right. So... Well, Makoto. Makoto. What? Correct. That's right. It would seem... So... Just a second. I see. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> 
Monokuma appears! No, no, you can't go any further! No, no, you can't go any further! You can't go any further! So, in other words... So, that's it. Hey, listen! Hey, you bastard! Is it like... There's no way to think about this in a common sense kind of way. You know what I mean. Completely unforgivable! Mr. Naegi! Without a doubt!
I feel as if... Most suspicious. Unforgivable! That's it! I'm sure of it!
I'm sorry. Zono, the ultimate pop sensation, lead singer for a world-famous all-girl pop band. For these girls, the glowing spotlight only made them that much more beautiful. But then... successful team suddenly fell apart. None of them will ever perform on stage again. None of them will ever feel the warmth of the spotlight. For Sayaka, there's simply nowhere for her to return to. So here's the billion dollar question. What oh what could have caused the group to go to pieces? So, uh, I'm getting tired of waiting. What say we just get started, hmm? It's time for the long-awaited class trial! Now then, allow me to appoint a proper location for the proceedings. Please go through the red door on the first floor of the school. <laughs> See you soon! <laughs> Listen to me! Is 
everyone here? Okay, then. Please board the elevator in front of you, which will transport you to the courtroom, where all your fates will be decided. <laughs> I'll meet you all down there. I'll be waiting. Well then. Yes, indeed. Hey. Makoto. begin with a basic explanation of the class trial. So, your votes will determine the results. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. And the killer really is one of us, right? Of course. Okay, then. Everyone, close your eyes. And whoever did it, raise your hand. Don't be a goddamn idiot. Why the hell would they raise their hand? Before we move on and start the trial, can I ask a question real quick? What's going on with... those pictures? I'd feel awful if they got left out just because they died. Friendship penetrates even death's barrier. Friendship penetrates? <laughs> okay, but what about that other empty seat? There were only 15 of us to begin with, so why are there 16 seats? Oh, no reason. It's just that our little courtroom here can technically fit up to 16 people. Okay. That about does it for the preamble. Get ready to get started. First up is the case summary. Now, let the class trial begin.
I assert that the one who was murdered was Miss Sayaka Maizono! Yeah, we know that part already. And the murder took place in Makoto's room. In the bathroom. So it seems most likely that the killer must have taken her by surprise while she was in the bathroom. She didn't even have a chance to resist. No, it's wrong! Just a second, Chihiro. Try to remember how my room looked. With the way things had been damaged, I think we can definitely assume there was a struggle. A struggle? Between who and who? Between Sayaka and the killer, of course. So you're saying Sayaka wasn't caught by surprise in the bathroom? She must have been attacked in the main room first. Then, she ran to the bathroom to try and hide. The killer followed her in, and that's where they finished the job. That much should have been obvious after taking one look at the scene. It shouldn't even need explaining. Sorry. Okay, so what's next? Next is the subject of the murder weapon. Wow, this is starting to sound like a real trial! So what was used to kill her? It was some kind of sharp object thrust into her stomach. Without a doubt, that is the murder weapon! So the killer used some random knife they had on him. No, it's wrong! No. I do think it was a knife, but not just any knife. I'm almost positive it was a kitchen knife. Huh? A kitchen knife? After the murder, we discovered that one of the knives from the kitchen was missing. Which means that knife must be the murder weapon. Oh, yeah. I guess that makes sense. You could sort of see the weapon sticking out of her stomach. And if you look real close, I could totally see that being a kitchen knife. Okay, so the murder weapon was a kitchen knife, but where does that get us? I mean, we all know Makoto killed her, right? That's right. Makoto's room was the scene of the crime. What more proof do you need? Hold on a second. I'm... Let's draw our conclusions after we've presented our arguments. Otherwise, what's the point of the trial? Well, we can talk all we want. It's not going to change that conclusion. I don't think that's true at all. I'm sure if we keep at it, something new will reveal itself. You really believe that? So I guess there's no question that the kitchen knife was the murder weapon. But where does that get us? Makoto mm, must have taken it from the kitchen, right? He did it in secret. Nobody was in the dining hall. No, it's wrong! Okay, wait. Hold on. I didn't take the knife from the kitchen. Next you're gonna say you're not the killer, right? Go ahead, and say it all you, you want! Well, what if I have a witness? What do you think, Hina? Huh? Remember what you were telling me earlier?
just to be perfectly clear, the knife disappeared while you were in the dining hall, correct? Y yeah, that's right. And at any point while you were there, did you ever see me come into the dining hall? Um, no, I don't think so. You don't think so? No, he definitely wasn't there. The knife disappeared while Kino was in the dining hall. But I wasn't there the entire time. In other words, there's no way I could have taken the knife. Okay, then what about this? What if the idiot swimmer girl and Makoto are in on it together and lying to protect each other? Idiot swimmer girl? Oh, and more importantly, why would I get involved in something like that? Speaking of which, I'd like to ask the bear. If there is an accomplice, do they also become blackened? So you ask, and so I shall answer. Each murder is allowed to have an accomplice, but only the one who does the killing will get to graduate. So in other words, two people can work together, but one of them has no chance of profiting from it. Then there's no way anyone would work together, right? But what if they did work together, and they just didn't know about the rule? Ugh, good grief! Enough already! No, okay? There are no accomplices in this case! Oops, did I say that out loud? Anyway, I didn't go to the dining hall, and I didn't take the knife. So I'm not the killer! Okay, so then, who did take the knife? Hina seems the obvious candidate. After all, she just said she was in the dining hall. No, no way! I swear it wasn't me! Sure, but can you or anyone else prove that? I can. That's right! Sakura was with me the entire time I was drinking my tea. Uh, I hate to have to ask, but just to be sure, Sakura's... Me. Right. But then, couldn't either one of them have grabbed the knife? Actually, no. Because, um, well... Just spit it out already. I stayed in Hina's room last night. I got so scared thanks to those creepy videos. I wasn't really thinking, I just asked her to stay over. Which means, we have airtight alibis. You stayed over? Doesn't that violate one of the school regulations? We're not allowed to sleep anywhere but the dorms. But it doesn't say we have to stay in our assigned room. So, I don't think that's a problem. It is a problem! A boy and a girl spending the night together? It's... it's... unwholesome! But I'm a girl. You are? Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry! But if it wasn't either of you, then what other possibility is there? Actually, there is one other possibility. Right, Hina? Oh, yeah, that's true! One other person did come to the dining hall while we were there. Why didn't you say so in the first place? Well, because... they're not here anymore. Sayaka. She's the one who came to the dining hall. And then later, she wound up dead. I got it! Then, Sayaka is the one who took the knife? That's the only possibility. And thinking back on it, she was acting kind of unusual. When she came into the dining hall, she didn't even look at us. She just went straight to the kitchen. As she left, she said she just wanted a drink of water. But most likely... And the person who took the knife was the victim herself. I'm sure... I'm sure she just took it for self-defense. So you're saying the knife she took was then taken from her and she was killed with it? 
In that case, you may not have taken the knife, but you still could have killed her. What? See? He did do it after all! No! You're wrong! So, that's how you would twist the argument and send us all off in the wrong direction? Hmm. You possess a most terrifying talent. Hold on. It's still too early to decide conclusively that Makoto is the killer, wouldn't you say? Because you see, if the room did belong to the killer, then they did something most bewildering. And until we unravel that little mystery, you simply can't declare that he's the killer. Bewildering? What the hell are you talking about? Something was missing from the scene of the crime that by all rights should have been there. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? wasn't a single hair on the floor. So, the culprit removed some evidence? Yes. And if I were the culprit, why would I need to get rid of all the hair in my own room? It wouldn't be unusual at all to find my hair at the crime scene if the crime scene is in my room. The reason all the hair was gone was to remove any trace that Sayaka had ever been there. That makes sense, does it not? No. If that were the case, they would have had to do something about the body itself, not just her hair. Ha ha ha! Yes, very true, very true! Okay, then why wasn't there any hair on the ground? The killer got rid of it all, of course. He removed any trace that they had ever been there. Then that means... Precisely. It's simply beyond reason to believe that the room's owner and the killer are one and the same. Then... Makoto isn't the culprit? Are you sure we can decide something so important based solely on the absence of some hair? No. There are other reasons that prove why Makoto couldn't have done it. I would like to hear these reasons. Do you remember anything remarkable about the bathroom at the scene? Sayaka was attacked in the main room first, then fled into the bathroom, right? Yeah, then they ran after her, got into the bathroom, and stabbed her. And how did the killer get into the bathroom? Did they have any trouble with it? What do you mean? It's fairly certain that the killer had some trouble getting into the bathroom. There was clear evidence left behind. Do you remember, Makoto? that the killer had trouble getting into the bathroom. You're talking about the doorknob, right? Huh? The doorknob? What doorknob? The doorknob for my bathroom. 
It was completely broken. See how the top part was unscrewed? And the doorknob's about ready to fall off? Oh yeah, true. But what does it mean? In trying to bypass the lock, they ended up nearly removing the entire doorknob. This is another most bewildering act for the room's owner. It proves Makoto is beyond suspicion. So what? You're saying he wouldn't break the door in his own room? But if the only choice you have is to break it, you break it. There's nothing bewildering about it. You still don't see? Okay then. Let's take another look at how the incident unfolded. Hopefully that will help you understand. that took place in the Koto's room. Sayaka was first attacked in the main room. She then fled into the bathroom. Then the killer ran after her. And they got into the bathroom. At that point, the killer had to try and bust down the door. Because Sayaka had locked it. No, it's wrong! The reason my bathroom didn't open wasn't because it was locked. After all, the girls' rooms are the only ones with locking bathrooms, right? Yes, now that you mention it, that is true. Then why didn't your bathroom door open? Because it was stuck. Huh? What are you talking about? My bathroom door doesn't fit in the frame quite right. Monokuma over there can testify to that. Yep, true as true can be. But you know, you're supposed to be the ultimate lucky student, right? But to have such a cruddy door... <laughs> that's not lucky at all! So the reason the door didn't open was just because it was stuck. But the killer didn't know that and assumed it was locked. So they tore apart the doorknob to get in. Okay, but then why would the killer even think the door was locked in the first place? Everyone should have known you can't lock any of the boys' bathrooms. The killer could easily make that mistake, thanks to one important detail about the scene of the crime. The killer must not have realized that it was my room. What? Are you saying the culprit didn't even know where he was? That's inconceivable! And yet, he's absolutely right. Say what? Well, to be more specific, what the killer didn't know was that Makoto and Sayaka had switched rooms. Which is what led to the misunderstanding about the bathroom. If Sayaka had been in her own room, then... Then there would have been a lock on the door, and they would have had to break through! So they had no idea how unnecessary their actions were. Ultimately, we can't know if it came open by force or simply by accident. But... The killer must have been considerably confused, with no idea how they actually got the door opened. Regardless, it was a pointless act. Wasting time trying to break down a door that wasn't locked is... Definitely something I wouldn't do, since I would have known exactly why it wasn't opening, right? That is a definite possibility. So the killer would have to be someone who didn't know they'd switched rooms? Then Makoto couldn't have done it. 
Okay, then who did do it? I'm sorry, but I give up! Quit without saving! But... what happens if we can't decide on who we think did it? Well, why don't we just vote right now? Majority rules! Majority rules? Do you really think that's a good idea? Yeah, our necks are on the line here. Someone seriously needs to do something. For serious. Does no one have any other thoughts or questions? It does not matter how trivial they may seem. Oh, as a matter of fact, I do have one question. Oh, you... You don't gotta sound so disappointed. It's fine, it's fine. Just ask your question. Oh, yeah. Okay, so... Um... Well... I was just wondering... How did the culprit get into Makoto's room in the first place? Hmm, yes. How did the killer get inside? Maybe Sayaka just dropped the key somewhere and the culprit picked it up. That's possible, right? I don't think so. That seems way too convenient. Then... maybe someone picked the lock? Negative! If you remember, Monokuma made it quite clear that the locks are all unpickable. Fine. How about this? The killer got in the easy way. They could have knocked and said they wanted to talk or something, and Ms. Maizono just let him in. No, that can't be it either. Oh, trying to argue against me? Sounds like someone doesn't know his place. Hello? Why exactly can't that be it? Because Sayaka was already scared, remember? That's why she asked me to switch rooms in the first place. Knowing what she'd been through, I just can't believe she would have opened the door for anyone. What if her being scared was a lie? Huh? Well, what the hell is that supposed to mean? Why would she lie about something like that? I know you don't want to consider it, but look at this and tell me. Can you still deny the possibility? I found a notepad during my search, and I shaded in the top sheet with a pencil. And these are the words that appear. Oh man! I've totally seen people do that on detective shows. When you write, it can leave an imprint. Sketch over the next sheet of paper, and you can see the words. When I saw that, I was like, holy crap! I'd better make sure I rip the paper out before I use it from now on. It's a pretty old-fashioned technique. But even the classics can be surprisingly useful sometimes. Oh, and I should also mention, I found the notepad on the desk in Makoto's room. Huh? Which means, only someone who had been in Makoto's room before the incident could have written it. Then either it was Makoto who lived there, or Sayaka who switched rooms for a single night. So, Makoto, did you write this? No, I didn't. But... Of course you didn't. Because the note also bears a perfectly legible signature. Sayaka's signature. But, but why? Why would she write that? The note was likely her way of getting in touch with a certain someone. She must have slid it under their door to let them know she wanted to meet with them in secret. If you got an invitation like that from the ultimate pop sensation, what young man could resist? Of course, I'm only into 2D, so it wouldn't have any effect on me! But can we be sure anyone even got this note? And honestly, even if they did, 
I do not think they are at all involved in what happened. Huh? What makes you say that? <laughs> Would you like to hear what I have to say? Very well then, pay attention! Sayaka and Makoto switched rooms, correct? But in the note, the place they were asked to come to, it specifically says, my room. I see. So if someone read that note, then they would have gone to Sayaka's room. Exactly. The room that Makoto was sitting in. No, it's wrong! The nameplates on Mai and Sayaka's rooms got switched. They got... switched? That's right. The nameplates got switched, just like the rooms themselves. As a result, the nameplate on Sayaka's room actually had Makoto's name. And the nameplate on Makoto's room had Sayaka's. So what you're saying is, the room Sayaka was staying in was actually marked as her room. Then, if someone did do what the note said, they would end up at Makoto's room where Sayaka was. Plus, their rooms are right next to each other, so switching the nameplates would be no problem. And the one who switched the names was... Well, of course it wasn't you, right, Makoto? Right? Okay, then who did it? I got it! Me and Sayaka were the only ones who ever knew about us switching rooms. So the only other person besides me who would even know to switch the nameplates was Sayaka. You can also infer as much from her notes. She specifically tells the reader to check the nameplate. She would only have written that if she knew the nameplates had been switched. But why would she switch them in the first place? She wanted someone to come to the room she was in, and also hide the fact that it was Makoto's room. What? Inviting someone to your room, but not telling them you'd switched rooms. Why would anyone do that? To understand that, we first need to understand what happened after she invited the person into the room. That's where the answer lies. What happened then was... probably... whoever she invited over... came in and... attacked her! We figured it out! We know who did it! Whoever she invited over is the culprit! But we still don't know who it is, you goddamn idiot! Sayaka fought with her killer there in the room, yes? Perhaps the answer to our previous question lies in that initial struggle. Yes, I think you're right. Then... We just have to figure out what happened during the fight, right? That reminds me. There was a replica sword at the murder scene. Was that perhaps used during the fight? Oh yeah. What's the deal with that sword? Sayaka suggested I should hold on to it. I thought it might come in handy if I had to defend myself. It seems pretty likely that the killer used it to break Sayaka's right wrist. How the hell could you possibly know that's what broke her wrist? All you have to do is take a good look at her broken wrist, and it should become pretty clear. Right there where her wrist is all swollen, there's something glittery there. See? Is... is that gold? It sure is. Specifically, the gold coating from the replica sword. You barely have to touch that stuff, and it'll stick right to you. And there's some on her wrist because... I got it! Because she got hit with the sword! Right there on her wrist! I 
I see, I see. And so the truth draws ever closer. All right, then it's about time to solve this mystery. When the fighting broke out, the culprit grabbed the sword, and that's when the first blow was dealt. The sword-based sneak attack! No, it's wrong! Actually, no. I don't think the fight started with the sword. Why not? Because the sword's sheath had been scratched. See? There's a gash in it. Like someone cut into it with something sharp. Something sharp? You mean like the kitchen knife? That was the only sharp thing found at the scene. Stop jumping ahead! Slow down and explain it so I get what the hell's going on. If the sword was used first, there wouldn't be any explanation for the scratch on the sheath. If you were going to attack with the sword, you'd take it out of the sheath first, right? That's true. With the sheath on, it'd be heavy and bulky and useless as shit. Okay, so how did the sheath get damaged? If they got attacked with the kitchen knife, maybe they grabbed the sword as a defensive impulse. In that situation, there wouldn't be any time to actually unsheath the sword. So you're saying the sword was initially used to defend against an attack from the knife? Which means whoever had the kitchen knife was the one who attacked first. I think I get it. So here's how it all played out. The culprit came in, found the kitchen knife hidden there somewhere. Then they took the knife and attacked Sayaka before she knew what was happening. So she grabbed the sword to defend herself. But then the culprit took that from her too. Then, after they broke her wrist with the sword, they took the knife and finished it. Sorry, but I don't think Sayaka used the sword to defend herself. What? How the hell can you not think that? Because she never held the sword at all. There's a certain part of her body that makes this clear. I got it! You're talking about her poems, right? The palms of her hands were perfectly clean, so I don't think she ever picked up the sword. How can you know that just by looking at her palms? Like I said before, the gold coating on that sword comes right off. All you have to do is touch it. In fact, if you look, you'll notice that a lot of the gold has already come off the handle. It's safe to assume that's because whoever used the sword got some of it on their hands. There's really no way she could have picked it up and come away completely clean. Maybe she washed her hands after she had escaped into the bathroom. Sorry, but I don't think so. Why do you say that? Is it because you think I'm ugly? No, that's not it at all. According to the Monokuma file, Sayaka's time of death was around 1.30 a.m. In other words, at nighttime. And the water in the bathroom shuts off at nighttime, right? Oh, I didn't know that. Actually, I haven't taken a shower here yet. Oh, my. You're 
no difference. You smell like a big, fat, ugly donkey. Hmm? I'm not sure whether to take that as an insult or a compliment. An insult, obviously. So anyway, if Sayaka never touched the sword, then that means the killer is the only one who used the sword. But hold on. If that's right, then the one who damaged the sheath with the kitchen knife was... I got it! Sayaka? She had the kitchen knife? But we already said that the attack started with... The person with the knife attacked first, and the sword was used as an impromptu defense. Then the one who attacked first was... Sayaka? Now do you understand? She wasn't a blameless victim in this. No, far from it. It's almost as if she'd been planning to commit a murder of her own. She took the knife from the kitchen, then invited the culprit to the room she was staying in. And if it's true that she had the kitchen knife and attacked without provocation... Indeed. These are all the actions of an assailant. Which brings up another point. Nakuto, Sayaka was the one who suggested you two switch rooms, correct? Maybe the reason she wanted to switch rooms was so that she could pin the crime on you. That is a possibility, is it not? Sayaka wanted to... on me? That would also explain why she would switch the main place. She wanted to get whoever she had targeted to come to Makoto's room where she was staying. And by committing the murder there, instead of her room, that would implicate Makoto. But for that to work, the target had to be lured out while still keeping the room swap a secret. If the target knew she had switched rooms, they would have become suspicious right away. So all that's why she switched the names? But doesn't that plan seem a little risky? For one thing, even if her plan worked, Mr. Naegi would just tell everyone they'd switched rooms. I don't know. I'm not sure our soft-hearted Makoto is capable of that kind of cutthroat behavior. I'm sure Sayaka realized the same thing, which is why out of all of us, she asked him to switch rooms. Plus, she was the ultimate pop sensation. A totally forgettable kid, or a national superstar. Who are you more likely to believe? Wait, then... You're saying she had this all planned out? Holy shit! But in the end, her plan backfired. She launched her attack with the knife, then found herself under attack in turn. That must be when her wrist got broken, and she was forced to drop the knife. The tables were suddenly turned on her, and she died at the hands of the one she'd planned to murder. Just hold on! That can't be true! Because... Hey! Hey! You guys have totally derailed the argument! You're being super boring right now! Come on, hurry up and decide who did it! Wouldn't it be awful if I had to punish you all just because you ran out of time? Oh yeah, we gotta decide who we think did it. Makoto, right now you just need to concentrate on figuring out the answer to this mystery. If we can't uncover who murdered Sayaka, it's over for all of us. It's easy just to say, hey, decide who did it. But there just aren't any more clues, right? No, it's wrong! There still might be one clue left. Sayaka's dying message. Dying? Wait, wh what did you say? The dying message. She wrote something on the wall behind her, remember? One, one, zero, three, seven. Written in her own blood. There must be a clue about the killer hidden in there. Well, before we get too far into that, I need to ask, 
Can we really be sure that Sayaka is the one who wrote it? A gun! Her left index finger had blood on it. That could only be because she used that finger to write the message. I see. She broke her right wrist during the fight, so she'd have to use her left hand to write. Sure. I think we can all agree Sayaka wrote it. But still, what the heck do those numbers mean? One... Hey, Chihiro. You're a computer nerd or whatever, right? You should know all about numbers and shit. N no that's not... Yes, I'm a programmer, but I don't see any kind of meaning in these numbers. Of course. It's because they're not numbers. Oh! Yeah, it looks like... Huh? What? What? You no, know, it's just... Uh, look at the numbers, assuming they're not numbers. Don't these first two, one one, look less like two numbers and more like one letter? Ah, oh, you're right. The connecting line is barely there, so I assumed it was one one, but... Looking at it now, you could also read it as an N. Whoa! You might have finally just said something worth a shit. <laughs> Our little gray cells are really getting excited now. But even if that really is an N, N037, doesn't make any more sense than before. Rotate the image 180 degrees. Oh my god. Now I see. She wrote down the killer's name. Huh? You just shot past the clue card and right onto who did it. So, whose name did she write? Here's my answer! The key to solving this mystery was simply to rotate the writing 180 degrees. If you turn the message around, it becomes the letters L-E-O-N. L-E-O-N. Or more accurately, Leon. What? What the hell are you talking about? It's just a coincidence. It's just a bunch of random squiggles that happen to look like my name. No, it's not random at all. She wrote that message on the wall behind her as she was leaning up against it. In that position, she couldn't move to write normally and had to write upside down, as it were. And as a result, when you look at it standing in front of her, it ends up getting flipped. Try it for yourself if you want. Write something sitting like her, and the letters will be inverted. That, that sounds like one hell of a stretch to me. I'm the killer? You can't just go and say shit like that. If you're not the killer, then why did you try to destroy the evidence? Huh? You know what I'm talking about, right, Makoto? The evidence Leon tried to get rid of? I got it! You mean, the burnt shirt piece I found laying on the ground by the incinerator, right? As the killer stabbed Sayaka, they must have gotten some of her blood on them. And to dispose of the shirt covered in the victim's blood, they threw it into the incinerator. But one piece burned off and got left behind. And the killer didn't notice. If they had, they most certainly would have panicked. Isn't that right, Leon? Is one scrap of fabric enough to conclude that Leon is guilty? Yeah, I mean, Leon's not the only one wearing a white button-up. 
that, that's right. There are plenty of other people here with shirts like mine. With just that one little charred piece, there's no way you can say for sure who it belongs to. You're right. That alone isn't enough. But there are some other points that may reveal the truth. Are you finally starting to understand? The answers to all the riddles are right here. Yeah, I think so. I got it! If we look closely at how the shirt was disposed of, we should be able to figure out who the killer is. Oh, oh yeah, that's a good point. I, I think I know what you're gonna say. You can't reach the incinerator without opening the gate in front of the trash room, right? And obviously, you wouldn't be able to hit the switch to turn it on, either. You'd need the key to get in, and the one with the key was the person on cleaning duty. So the killer had to be whoever was in charge of taking care of the trash, right? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> trash room. Whoever was on cleaning duty must have had it, right? So the only one who could get to the incinerator was the person in charge of the trash? And you'd have to get close to the incinerator. No, that's wrong. Hold on. I think I know how someone could dispose of the evidence without using the trash room key. But if you can't get past the gate, you couldn't possibly turn on the incinerator, could you? Yes, you could. If you used this. What is it, some kind of glass ball? It's busted to hell. Actually, it was supposed to be a crystal ball, but... Uh... But how would you use it? I got it! The killer simply took aim at the incinerator switch and threw the ball through a gap in the gate. All they had to do was hit that switch, and the incinerator would come to life. Someone threw that... through a gap in the gate? Remember what you said before, Hikuni? So the only way the incinerator could have been turned on without his knowledge was because the killer was able to hit the switch without opening the gate. Once they got the incinerator going, all they had to do was ball up the shirt and toss it in. Hey, come on! What the hell is this? All you have to do is look at the scene to know that the killer never actually went inside the trash room. The shards of broken glass, the incinerator left running, the piece of shirt that escaped the fire? If the killer had been on cleaning duty, the evidence would have been taken care of much more thoroughly. Wait, wait, no, just hold on. But the distance from the gate to the incinerator has to be at least 30 feet, right? The pinpoint accuracy you'd need to throw a glass ball that far and hit something that small. Could someone really do that? that that's right, there's no way, it'd be impossible. Difficult, absolutely. Impossible? I don't think so. Because the killer is... I got it! Because the killer is the ultimate baseball star. Isn't that... You, do you have any idea how stupid you sound right now? A target 30 feet away would surely be little challenge for the ultimate baseball star. You... You can't be serious! I... I... I'm not the killer! These goddamn shipper brains have got it all wrong, I'm telling you! You still won't admit it? Okay, then. Makoto, go ahead and review the incident one more time to make his crime perfectly clear. And with that, 
We can end this. Listen to me! What the hell do you mean, end this? Say what you want, Leon. But all the questions have been answered. And the truth has been revealed. Now here's what happened. Better take one more look back at the case from the beginning. Last night, the killer went to the room Sayaka was in. In other words, my room. From what we can tell, Sayaka invited that person there intending to kill them. She attacked them with the knife she'd taken from the kitchen earlier. But then something happened that she wasn't prepared for. They grabbed the fake sword I put in my room and fought back. During the struggle, a strike from the sword broke Sayaka's right wrist. And that's when she lost her grip on the kitchen knife. Finding herself cornered, Sayaka panicked and ran into the bathroom. The killer went after her, but couldn't get the bathroom door open. What they didn't know was that my bathroom door got stuck easily, and there was a trick to opening it. Sayaka knew about that because I told her, but of course the killer had no way of knowing. So instead, the killer forced the door open, took the kitchen knife, and stabbed Sayaka. But with what strength she had remaining, Sayaka left a dying message. To keep the killer from noticing, she wrote it on the wall behind her. 
And with that, all her strength was gone. With Sayaka dead, the killer quickly began destroying the evidence. First, they took off their shirt, which was covered in their victim's blood. Then they took the lint roller in my room and cleaned up the entire area. They wanted to make sure they got rid of any trace they'd ever been there. Afterwards, the killer headed to the trash room to destroy their bloody shirt. They tried to burn the shirt using the incinerator there, but the trash room was blocked off by an especially sturdy gate, preventing access to the incinerator. So they came up with a plan to use Hero's crystal ball, which he left in the laundry room. The killer managed to throw the ball through the gap in the gate and hit the incinerator switch. For any normal person, that'd be an impossible throw. But the killer had the confidence to take a shot. And that's because the killer was the ultimate baseball star. The crystal ball, thrown with absolute precision, hit the switch on the incinerator, which then quickly roared to life. Having destroyed the final piece of evidence, they left the area with, I imagine, a sign of relief. But there was one thing they missed. Part of the shirt they'd thrown into the fire burnt away and fell out of the incinerator. The killer didn't notice this, and so left behind a piece of indisputable evidence. Right, Leon. It would appear that Hero simply forgot his crystal ball in the laundry room. You went there to try and wash the blood out of your shirt, and that's where you saw it, right? Seeing the ball, you thought of a way to take care of everything. So, Leon, do you object to anything that's been said? Do I object? Yes, I object! Of course I do! I object! I object! I object! I mean, all of this is just a bunch of stupid theories! You need evidence! Where's the evidence? Without evidence, it's all bullshit! It's bullshit and I refuse to acknowledge it! Well then, I guess this is as good a time as any to present the evidence that proves you did it. Makoto, I believe you're in possession of that evidence.
When the killer removed the screws from the doorknob, they didn't use anything from your room to do it. Instead, they must have used something that belonged to them. I refuse to acknowledge you! You're stupid! Stupid, stupid, stupid! Stupid, 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 stupid! Where's your proof? You kidding me? Not a chance! It wasn't me! Stupid! You lie! Stop talking! Shut up! Where's your proof? You kidding me? Not a chance! You lie! Shut up! Where's your proof? You kidding me? Not a chance! It wasn't me! Stupid! You lie! Stop talking! Shut up! Where's your proof? Where's your proof? This should prove it! The screws on the bathroom doorknob were removed. I wonder what kind of tool the killer used to remove them. I mean, it had to be a screwdriver, right? Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure the toolkits we got each had one inside. That must be what he used! There aren't any other tools anywhere! But the toolkit in my room had clearly never been used. That's because the culprit didn't know it was your room! They thought they were in Sayaka's room! Only the boys got toolkits. So the killer naturally assumed there wouldn't be one in there. Okay, then whose toolkit did the killer use? Stupid, stupid, stupid! It had to be their very own toolkit. Stupid, 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 stupid! Leon, would you mind showing us your toolkit? If I'm right about this, then... The screwdriver will show some evidence of being used. Stupid, stupid, stupid! Huh? And if you say you used it for something else, you'll have to explain exactly when, where, and why. And let me say this right now. I lost it isn't an excuse at this point. Stupid. Stupid. So, you have no rebuttal? Then it would seem we are finished here. <laughs> Looks like you've reached your verdict. Then are we ready to cast our votes? You all have a lever in front of you. Use it to make your selection. Oh, just to remind you all, make triple sure you vote for someone. You wouldn't want to be punished for something so minor, right? Okay, then let's get excited! Who will be chosen as the blackened? Will you make the right choice? Or the dreadfully wrong one? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Hold on. But, but... 
You son of a bitch! I... I didn't have a choice. So... that's why... None of you are any different! I was just... <laughs> unlucky. That's all. Hey! Come on! That's enough. Calm down. Ba-bam, ba-bam. Yes, indeed. Punishment? You mean... execution? Wait a second! Yeah, that's it! Is that okay? Understand? So that's why. Oh,
kills, chills, kills! I'm begging you, please, don't do this! Hey, come on now! Stop, please! Now then, I've prepared a very special punishment! No, 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 no! Let's give it everything we've got! It's punishment time! No!
Just a second. Makoto. Listen. It's true. However, so certainly. Anyway. Right. Correct. What? What are you gonna do? Hey, come on! A 
I see. You got it! Are you okay with this? Announcement. It is now 10 p.m. As such, it is officially nighttime. Soon the doors to the dining hall will be locked, and entry at that point is strictly prohibited. Oh, and one other thing. It was totally obvious before that you were trying to make yourselves feel better and justify what you did. See you, see you, don't see you, see you. That's about how much I can see you, even when you try to hide. Now pay attention and remember this well. The burden of judging others is a heavy one to bear, so be well aware of your actions. Order and stability rely on the sacrifice and responsibility of everyone. Okay then, sweet dreams everyone. Good night, sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Don't fuck with me.
Okay, lift your arms up and down. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now reach way up and bend way down. Tighten those muscles. Let's add a little strength, a little speed to those young bodies of yours. about that. Piece of shit! Hey. You hear me?
For me, uh, I'm sorry.
So in other words, hmm. however, Now, if... So... Are you okay with this? Yo. <laughs> what? What? Uh. Hey, come on. What? Fucking around. <laughs> you piece of. <clears throat> so then. Announcement. It is now 10 p.m. As such, it is officially nighttime. Soon the doors to the dining hall will be locked 
An entry at that point is strictly prohibited. Okay then, sweet dreams, everyone. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. I mean, right, Mr. Monokuma? Good morning, everyone! It is now 7 a.m., and nighttime is officially over! Time to rise and shine! Get ready to greet another beautiful day! Oh, that's right! I wanted to let you know that your e-handbooks have been updated! New regulations have been added, so please take a look and enjoy your school life more than ever before! Hey, Makoto. Yo, yo, yo. Hey, come on! to think about this in a common sense kind of way.
I think maybe... Hey, uh, what are you doing? I'm fishing. What does it look like I'm doing? I'm trying to read, so if you could be quiet. Oh, sorry. Wait, no! What are you doing here? Everyone's super worried. We've all been looking for you. Who asked you to do that? Because... We're all supposed to meet up in the morning and eat together. We made a promise. A promise? <sighs> Can't I get a second's peace and quiet around here?
Are you okay with this? I see. Actually... So, in other words, <laughs> what? Possible. You son of a bitch! <laughs> what? <laughs> Piece of shit! Don't make me repeat myself. Come on. Uh, I'm sorry. 
Stop fucking around. Hm. Piece of shit! What? <laughs> you son of a bitch! Just a second! Piece of shit! But... <laughs> Don't fuck with me! Maybe... <clears throat> this is a school announcement. It is now 10 p.m. As such, it is officially nighttime. Soon the doors to the dining hall will be locked, and entry at that point is strictly prohibited. Okay then, sweet dreams, everyone. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. I was in the bathroom, just looking at myself in the mirror.
Good morning, everyone. It is now 7 a.m., and nighttime is officially over. Time to rise and shine. Get ready to greet another beautiful day. Serious. <laughs> you hear me? Duh, shit. right
Listen to me! Hey, damn it! Hey, damn it! What? You're corrupt! You hear me? D Damn you! Count on it! You wanna fight? You hear me? What? Hey. I see. Got it. Piece of shit. Stop fucking around. You. You want to throw down? You son of a bitch! Ridiculous! You wanna fight? <laughs> Stop fucking around! Hey, Mondo! What, asshole? You can take off your uniform, you know? Go ahead. I won't judge. And you can shut the fuck up and mind your own business. I mean, look at you. Your face is all red. What are you, one of those goddamn hot spring monkeys? It just so happens, I was born with a red face. You don't have to act all big, man. Act, you say? <laughs> I'm still plenty good to go. I'm so good, I could eat a steaming hot bowl of soap right now! Don't you think it's about time you gave up? What about you? You can't even hardly talk. Dumbass. Say whatever you want. I'm still totally good to go. In fact, I'm starting to feel a uh, kind of cold. That's probably not good. <laughs> this is a school announcement. It is now 10 p.m. As such, it is officially night time. Soon the doors to the dining hall will be locked, and entry at that point is strictly prohibited. Okay then, sweet dreams everyone. Good night, sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. In a true competition, there's no such thing as a tie. You win, or you lose. That's 
the only thing that matters. Listen to you, you son of a bitch. Then bring it on. I'll... I'll push you right up to the gates of hell! and nighttime is officially over. Time to rise and shine. Get ready to greet another beautiful day. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> what? You hear me? Ain't that right? Without a doubt. Piece of shit. your problem
air. <laughs> He's really here. Okay, Makoto, go talk to him. What? Stop being so loud. Just hurry up and go talk to him. You go talk to him if you want to so bad. I can't. I don't want to interrupt him. myself. Announcement, school announcement. Nighttime is quickly approaching, but before it arrives, all students, please gather in the gym immediately. Emergency! Emergency!
What is this? <laughs> Certainly. What? Hmm. Could it be? <laughs> hmm. It's not like some occult mystery. Huh? Hmm. Embarrassing memories and secrets are all contained in the envelopes I have right here. I'm going to hand them out now, so take a second to take a peek.
This is kind of depressing. For me, oh, <sighs> come on, come on. Honestly, here we go. Hey, say what? Sorry. But, but... So, um... That's true. Night time. Soon the doors to the dining hall will be locked, and entry at that point is strictly prohibited. Okay then, sweet dreams, everyone. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bug bite. Hmm. Of course.
yourself. Maybe you should try reading between the lines. Good morning! <laughs> yep! <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Um... Hey. Naturally. Just the worst. Uh, um. Wait. That's fine. I have unlocked the doors. Please look around to your heart's content. It's all clear now. I see.
Very strange. I see. has been discovered after a certain amount of time which you may use however you like the class trial will begin what Damn. Ah! Hmm. Uh. Oh, what the? What? 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 Hmm. 
well. Ah! Please! <laughs> myself.
such ignorance. <laughs> Naturally. What? Such ignorance. D Damn you! Piece of shit! Calm down. Because... That's right. What? Hey! Hey! <laughs> Actually... So then... Hey, um... <laughs> Punishment is waiting for you! Interesting. You son of a bitch! So, um... <sighs> there is nothing to be done. Naturally. <laughs> what? Stop talking. Let's go. Very strange. What?
Let's go. So in other words, such ignorance. Hmm. 
Very strange.
Don't make me repeat myself. What? Don't make me repeat myself. <laughs> it's all clear now. I don't have time to play with you. Cause, I mean... Very strange. Don't make me repeat myself. Yeah! Let's go. Thing. It's just that uh, Hina was really worried about you holding yourself up in your room. Leave me alone. Um, yeah, sure thing. But could you open up just for a second? Won't allow it. Huh? I won't let Genocide Jack have control!
That's fine. Yakuya. Don't make me repeat myself. Let's go. So in other words,
that's enough. Such ignorance. In other words,
That's right. So in other words, in other words, Interesting. In other words, let's go.
Da -da -da -da. I feel as if. Mm -hmm. That's it. I'm sure of it. Indeed. However, Well, so then, goodbye. Of course. I'm 
I'm sorry. However, Fortunate. <laughs> Actually.
Indeed. Hmm? What are you doing out this late? Oh, um, I was just... Are you planning to go exercise, perhaps? What? How did you know? Because I can see a blue track jacket sticking out of that duffel bag you're carrying. Oh, you're right. Thanks. Well, I'd better get going. I'm kind of in a hurry. <sighs> yes, indeed. Getting tired of waiting. Shall we just plunge right in? It's the moment you've all been waiting for! The class trial! You remember where to meet, right? Please go through the red door on the first floor of the school. <laughs> See you soon! Yo. Thank <laughs> you. 
Let's go. It's true. Let's begin with a basic explanation of the class trial. So, your votes will determine the results. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the Blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. Okay, then. So, first off, let's talk about the murder weapon! Chihiro's fatal injury. It appears it was a head wound. According to the Monokuma file, the killer used a blunt instrument, but what kind of blunt instrument could it have been? I bet it was an iron pipe. Interesting. That certainly would make for a powerful weapon. What you feel? Chihiro's fatal injury. It appears it was a head wound. According to the Monokuma file, the killer used a blunt instrument. But what kind of blunt instrument could it have been? I bet it was an iron pipe. No, that's wrong! Can we agree that the object that dealt the fatal blow was the dumbbell, found at the scene of the crime? It was covered in blood. And there was nothing else at the scene that could have caused that kind of injury. And the wound on the victim's head is consistent with the shape of the dumbbell. As far as I'm concerned, there's no mistake and no room for doubt on this one. You... looked at her head wound? Yay! That's so creepy! If you don't mind, I will proceed from here. Let's move on to discussion of the culprit. Although, I believe the criminal behind this heinous act is already quite clear. What? For real? Chihiro's killer is the fiendish serial killer, Genocide Jack.
culprit is Genocide Jack. I'm sure. Case closed. As far as I'm concerned. But that's impossible! Why? What makes it impossible? Well, I mean, come on! There's just no proof for it. No, that's wrong! I might know one reason he could be involved. What? I found this file while I was looking around the archive in the library. I guess it's some kind of confidential file the police put together about the Genocide Jack case. What? That's kind of weird as shit, isn't it? What was something like that doing in the library? The why of it is probably more trouble than it's worth. So let's forget about that for now. More importantly, it outlines all the specifics of every Genocide Jack case in exceeding detail. According to the file, there appear to be two defining characteristics in every Genocide Jack case. The first is that a bloody message is found written at the scene of every murder. Oh, that's right. Ooblust. Ah, uh, no. It's actually bloodlust. But more important is the other characteristic, and it's something that has never been made public. Never made public? What the hell is it? Why don't you tell them, Makoto? I got it! Apparently, in every Genocide Jack case, the killer suspends the body in a certain way. Other than the killer, the only people who know about this are the higher-ups in the police department. However, Chihiro was most definitely suspended in the same way. So, how did the culprit know about this when only high-level police officials were aware of it? There's only one logical answer I can think of. It's because the culprit in this case is the real Genocide Jack. No fucking way! You're saying Genocide Jack is one of us? Yes. In fact, it's Toko. What? Genocide Jack's true identity is Toko Fukawa. You lie! What? what? Hey, okay, wait, oh, hold on a sec. Toko has like Bloodophobia or whatever, remember? What kind of serial killer is afraid of blood? Is Toko Genocide Jack? The answer is yes and no. Another riddle. Man, why is this gotta be so complicated? Is it because Genocide Jack has a split personality? Huh? I think I read that somewhere in the file, too. They thought that the suspect might have, what did they call it? Dissociative Identity Disorder. Oh, okay. But still, to go and say that about Ms. Fukawa is... Perfectly acceptable. Toko's strange behavior after seeing the body is proof enough that she has a split personality. I got it! You're talking about how she started acting totally different than usual, right? That's right. Think back. She fainted when she saw Chihiro's corpse, and then, when she woke up...
acting funny, that's for sure. That melancholy tone of hers completely disappeared. Don't go assigning adjectives to my tone without permission. Not to mention, once she regained consciousness and saw Chihiro's body again, she was utterly calm. In other words, within her is one personality that can't handle blood, and one that obviously can. <laughs> so when Toko trapped herself in her room, it's because she was scared of Genocide Jack? The reason she locked herself in her room wasn't to keep other people from getting in. It was to keep her other personality from getting out. What? Toko was afraid. Afraid of the murderous fiend inside of her. Of killing even more people. Uh, how? Yeah. How can you know all this? I do believe you misunderstood her. What she's trying to say isn't, how can you know all this? No. What she wants to know is, how could you tell them? Huh? Last night, just before Monokuma gave his motive speech, Toko and I had a strange conversation. She told me a most interesting story. She said, a murderous fiend lived within her, and she was afraid it could appear and attack at any time. And that trepidation is what's caused her to have such a bleak attitude. Isn't that right, Toko? <laughs> this is all a lie. Right, Toko? You said you wouldn't tell anyone. What? You promised? I can't believe you lied! You have only yourself to blame. You came to me with your tragic little story. I didn't ask you to. This is the real world, not some romantic fantasy fairy tale. <laughs> Besides, you broke your promise first. You said that as long as you were here, no matter what, you wouldn't let Genocide Jack kill anyone. But in spite of that promise... You said if I kept my promise, you would go out with me. That's the only reason I promised! How many times do I have to tell you? I never said that. But you weren't able to do it. You just couldn't resist that rush you got from killing, could you? I, I tried! I swear I tried to control it! But, but... but your efforts were useless. What a disappointment. <laughs> I hate you! Well, the opening act is nearly finished. All that's left is to hear from the person in question directly. The person? You don't mean... Is it me you were hoping to see? Yes, yes, you... What the heck? So you figured it out, huh? Well, whatever. What are you gonna do? I'm the ultimate murderous fiend, Genocide Jack! Or better yet, let's go with Genocide Jill! What the fuck is this? Toko, what happened to you? Not Toko, that's a loser name. And what happened is a textbook split personality. One of them happens to be a serial killer. You should turn a blind eye to one's fault. <laughs> so intense. Like they say, sound and murder is mine, sound and murder is body. This one is so different from the one we've come to know. Yes, well, the world is composed of a front and a back, you know. 
Just like how every inning has a top and a bottom, or how in the depths of every truth lives a little lie. Behind every dark and gloomy soul lives another that shines as bright as the sun! <laughs> Um, Miss Jack, uh, uh, Jill, can I ask you a question? What's up? Some of us think you might be the mastermind behind our entire situation. Well, I'll tell you, I am the mastermind of all masterminds! Just kidding! Then it's not true? Of course it's not true! How dare you try to link me to that creepazoid? Another thing, the police and government and society in the outside world are totally powerless! I mean, they just let this idiotic, bloodthirsty maniac go buck wild all over town! Sure, I'm a bloodthirsty maniac, but life is pain, right? To live is to hurt other people. It's a necessary evil if you want to survive. The act of living itself causes pain for everyone. Just kidding again! <laughs> this should be enough to convince you. This murderous fiend is responsible for Chihiro's death. There's clearly a motive, so there should be no doubt. A motive? Remember what Monokuma told us? If someone didn't murder and graduate within 24 hours, an embarrassing memory or secret would be revealed. Well, let's assume that Toko's secret was about Genocide Jack. If a secret like that came to light, Toko's life would have undoubtedly been forever ruined. So she had a very clear motive to never have that side of herself exposed. Interesting. Very, very, very interesting. But sorry, as much as I hate to admit it, I'm not the culprit. Huh? But I cannot imagine anyone other than you could murder someone in such a bizarre fashion. Maybe so, maybe so, but nevertheless, it's the truth! Do you really expect any of us to believe you? Yeah, I could never believe a word you say, you monster! say that, but do you really expect any of us to believe it? Perhaps if you had an alibi, that would change things. Oh, an alibi, huh? Now we're talking! When you compare your past murders to this incident, the modus operandi matters completely. No, it's wrong! Are the methods of murder really exactly the same? I'm not so sure about that. I think there's a slight difference between the Genocide Jack cases and this one. Huh? How's it any different? Uh-oh, you don't know? Well then, human garbage, let me tell you! I murder with passion and conviction. I consider myself a professional, and I have a very particular way of doing things. Imagine you go to a fancy Italian restaurant. They're very picky about the noodles, the sauce, everything. But what happened to Chihiro? It'd be like if that same Italian restaurant started using ragu or Chef Boyardee. This is no creation of mine. Let me rephrase that in a way that maybe makes more sense. There are two clear differences between the Genocide Jack cases and this one. The cause of death is different. In the Genocide Jack murders, all the victims were killed the same way. According to the case file, they were all apparently killed with a pair of scissors. 
But Chihiro died from a blow to the head, right? Ah, uh, yes. That is remarkably different from the other murders. Wouldn't it be strange for someone who kills the same way without fail to suddenly change their method? And there's more. One more conflicting detail. That's right! In my recipe of murder, if the bloody message is the tortellini, then the arrangement of the body would be the pesto sauce! Can you please stop comparing killing people to cooking? So, are you saying the other difference has to do with how the body was arranged? Remember what the killer used to suspend her? They used some kind of rope to hang her up by her wrists. What is your point? Well, in all the previous Genocide Jack cases, something else was used to suspend them. Specifically, pairs of razor-sharp scissors. And guess what? I used my own specially designed scissors for the murders the arrangement. Like I said, I'm a professional, so naturally I'm very picky about the tools I use. And, 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 and you know what else? Big Mac said there's two differences, but he's wrong. Big Mac? Are you referring to me? Listen up, Big Mac. There's actually one more difference. Huh? My word, you really didn't notice? Take a look at who the victims were in each Genocide Jack case. There's a pattern there, just waiting to be discovered. A pattern? Figure that out, and it'll be plain as death why I couldn't have possibly killed that little lolly girl. Is it because Chihiro was a girl? Bingo Bullseye right on the money! What are you talking about? In all the Genocide Jack cases, all the victims had something in common. Explained your hobby and your philosophy. But that's not all there is to it. It's a different matter entirely when you're forced to kill in order to survive. Quiet, Lowly Kerr! Lowly Kerr? I would never kill for a reason as petty as mere survival. And if by some fluke I did kill to survive, why would I bother with the message and arrangement? It'd make me the obvious suspect! That does make some amount of sense. Plus, whatever reason I have for killing, I would never leave out my prized scissors! Who would go out of their way to use a big, stupid, heavy dumbbell? Maybe you used the dumbbell because you couldn't find any scissors in the school? Don't just use any scissors. I only use my own set of high-class envy of the entire world scissors! 
Okay, whatever. There still aren't any in the school. Are you sure about that? She's fully equipped! That's right! So I can go anywhere, anytime! Why would I resort to dumbbells or rope when I have my trusty scissors by my side? Go ahead, tell me I'm wrong! You can't, can you? Gutter dogs, all of you! Not to mention, I have no clue how to tie a good knot! <laughs> so rope's probably out of the question anyway! <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what's going on anymore! Could such a heinous villain really be innocent? But the body really was suspended, right? And nobody but the police knew about that. Yeah! That's why we figured it had to be the real deal, and not some copycat killer or whatever. Here's my answer! Byakuya, it's possible you could have found out, isn't it? You'd have no problem gaining access to classified government documents or internal police records. Plus, you've already looked through the Genocide Jack file before this all happened, hadn't you? Are you saying Mr. Togami did it? Then, the reason he pushed the theory of Genocide Jack being the killer so hard was... ...because he wanted to pin the crime on her. So, he rearranged the scene to disguise it and make it look like he put my stamp on it! The adorable glasses man was behind it all?! Oh, I'm on fire! Well, Biakia, what's your response? I see. So now the suspicion falls on me. Then I must ask, when would you say I began acting suspicious? Surely you must have an answer. Hmm. Looking back and thinking about it now, the way you were acting right before we discovered the body was a little strange. You wanted to go to the girls' locker room right away, right? But since you're a guy... I should have naturally thought of the boys' locker room first. Is that what you want to say? The victim was Chihiro, a girl. Hence why I said we should check the girls' locker room. Nothing strange about that, I'd say. On the contrary, there's something very strange. Okay, then. What's so strange about it? Go ahead. Share with the rest of the class. Yakuya was acting kind of weird before we found the body. But he was acting weird... How? If you're presented with the opportunity to check out the girls' locker room, you absolutely take it! That's a natural reaction for any guy! The victim was Chihiro. No, that's wrong! I'll tell you what's so strange about that. 
because up until we actually discovered the body, we couldn't have known who the victim was. So your claim that you went to the girl's locker room first because Chihiro was the victim doesn't hold up. I see. That's a good answer, I must admit. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. But your reasoning is still too weak. Huh? What's wrong? Is that it? Surely you've got more than that. Go ahead, show us. What's the matter? You're not finished already, are you? There must be more to it. There is, I think. There is more to it. Think about it. We just talked about the differences between this case and past Genocide Jack incidents. The proof you're looking for is hidden in there. Oh? Proof that I'm the culprit, you mean? Absolutely was! Then there must be something very fishy indeed about that rope. Hey, Byakuya, where'd you get it from, huh? I'd never seen that rope before in my life. No, that's wrong! Actually, I'm pretty sure you have seen it before. Because, you see, that rope, or should I say, that extension cord? What? An extension cord? Yakuya, you've used the extension cord in the library more than once, haven't you? And the same extension cord that was in the library all this time? Went missing after the murder. And there's no way someone who uses that extension cord as much as you do wouldn't discover that fact. And Byakuya must be the one who took the extension cord. I can't imagine any other possibility. That's really what you think? Then your conclusion is something like this? I killed Chihiro in the girl's locker room, then hung her up and wrote that bloody message. I intentionally made it look like Genocide Jack was behind it. Is that about right? What's wrong? I asked you if you think that's what happened. Hell yes, that's what happened. So that's it, right? Biaki is the killer. I don't disagree with not disagreeing. He kept calling this a game, right? So he'd be totally willing to do something like this to win. Um, sorry, but can we hold on just a second? I... I think we need to talk about this a little more. Sure. We really need to. We've already decided who did it. I know, but still. There's something that's still bothering me. Is that right? And what, pray tell, is still bothering you? I killed her in the girl's locker room, then disguised my crime. Specifically, I dressed it up to make it look like it was the work of a homicidal psychopath. What about all that bothers you? I got it! You say you killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, right? 
But are you sure about that? Isn't it possible that the murder took place somewhere else? How disappointing. What kind of question is that? Even in the world of disappointments, this is a true letdown. She was found dead in the girls' locker room. There is absolutely no question about that. How could the scene of the crime have been anywhere else? Well, I think it's entirely possible that she was killed somewhere else, then carried there later, along with the rest of the murder scene. The rest of the murder scene? That was awfully specific. Please tell me you have a reason for saying all of that. I believe I do. Hey! Don't just move on without permission! What do you mean she was killed somewhere else? Come on, Makoto. If there's any chance the murder took place somewhere else, let's see the proof. I got it! The proof that she was killed somewhere else is... The poster that's hanging in each locker room. Your proof is some posters? The poster in the girls' locker room was... A picture of a big boobed supermodel. But don't you think that's kind of strange? Why would the girls' locker room have a poster like that? I bet those massive jugs of hers were totally fake! <laughs> Meanwhile, the boys' locker room had... A poster of the super popular boy band Tornado. Again, that doesn't really seem to belong in a boy's locker room. So you're saying that maybe the posters were switched? And there's one other thing I noticed about the locker rooms. You know what I'm talking about, right, Sakura? You're referring to my protein coffee, aren't you? Protein coffee? While I was in the girls' locker room earlier, I spilled some protein coffee on the carpet. But I noticed that after the murder, the stain had been totally scrubbed away. I got it! The stain on the girls' locker room carpet wasn't scrubbed away. In fact, I found it on the boys' locker room carpet. That's definitely the stain from my protein coffee. Then, does that mean that the carpets were switched to? But why would anyone do that? To move the murder scene from one locker room to the other. It's certainly plausible, don't you think? What? In other words, in order to completely swap the scene of the crime, the bloodstained poster and carpet were moved along with the dead body. By doing this, the killer was able to change the entire room where the murder took place. I can certainly follow your reasoning, but why would the culprit bother doing that? Huh? Why would they go through all that trouble of switching the scene of the crime? Actually, an even bigger question. If the murder did take place in the boys' locker room, then how did Chihiro get in the boys' locker room in the first place? Wow. To get into the locker rooms, you have to swipe your e handbook across the card reader device. But Chihiro's handbook should have only allowed her access to the girls' locker room. She had no way to get into the boys' locker room to begin with. No, she did have a way, and I can tell you what it was. I highly doubt that. Shut up! I'm telling you, I know how she could have done it.
Is it really possible? Could Chikiro really have gotten into the boys' locker room somehow? Ah, I got it! She must have hacked her e-handbook! She was the ultimate programmer, after all. I'm sure that would have been no problem for her. No, I don't think that's it. She used the thing that was in the main hall. Huh? What then? I'm talking about Leon's handbook, of course. No, that's wrong! No, I don't think Chihiro used Leon's handbook. Why not? Because Leon's handbook was broken. Oh. Well then, yeah, I guess that'd be pretty impossible, huh? I am struck silent by how quickly you gave up. Plus, isn't there a regulation against using someone else's handbook? Actually, the rule states that loaning your handbook is prohibited. It says nothing about borrowing one. In other words, you could borrow a dead person's handbook all you want, and you'd be safe. Yup, yup, yup! Hit the nail square on the noggin! Of course, if it were broken, that wouldn't make any sense anyway. So then, she must have hacked hers, like I said. She used her ultimate programmer skills and... Psst! You can't fix an e-handbook! The instant you open one up, a security buzzer starts blaring! So, if she didn't use Leon's handbook, and she didn't modify her own handbook... Maybe Mr. Nayagi's initial assumption is just... wrong? It seems like there's no way she could have got into the boys' locker room. So I guess so. Okay then, I vote for Byakuya! Hold on a second. I agree with you, though. I think you're on the right track. What the... You finally decide to open your mouth and that's what you've got to say? There's no way she could get in the boys' locker room, right? So... Why are you so sure she couldn't get in? There's still one other way she could have gained access. What? What are you talking about? What other way is there? Well, to explain that, why don't we take a little break from the trial? I'd like you all to come see something. Wait, 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 wait! Just what do you think you're doing? Don't worry. This'll make the whole trial more exciting. I'm sure that thought must please you. Huh? It'll make things more exciting? Well, all right then! I declare an official class trial recess! <gasps> For real? Now then, what is it you want to show us? It better not be boring or I'll be very unhappy! Oh, I have no doubt it'll meet your lofty expectations. So, shall we go? locker room? We've already searched this place top to bottom! What are you trying to pull, Missy? I'd like you to examine the victim's body one more time. Be sure to examine the entire body very carefully. Take your time. Examine her carefully? Like using our hands? No way, no way, no way, no way, no way! It's probably best if I don't run my hands all over a girl's dead body. It's not that I'm creeped out or anything, it's just... based on religious grounds, you know? Very well. I'll do it. But, but you're a girl! You shouldn't have to touch a dead body. Just let one of the boys do it. No, it's okay. I think Chihiro would rather have a girl examine her. So just leave this to me. S sakura What is this? Some kind of secret girl-on-girl -girl action? Is that 
that what you two are about? That's not it at all. Stop screwing around. Okay, here I go. I'm sorry, Chihiro. Please excuse the intrusion. Be sure to check her entire body, and I believe we will solve this particular mystery. Her entire body? I know you say that, but... What? This is... What is this... What is it? Not possible. It's not possible. This... this girl is... Is what? Is a boy! Ah, I see. So, she was actually a he. Interesting. Thank you for confirming this fact. What? You're joking, right? I wouldn't joke about this. Is it really true? Chihiro was... a guy? Hmm? Oh, what, you guys didn't know? Heck, I knew that right off the bat! Chihiro Fujisaki was totally a guy! <laughs> he was a cross-dresser? So that's what Kyoko wanted to show everyone, huh? Interesting. <laughs> yes, that certainly does make things much more exciting. Now let's ride this wave of excitement back to the courtroom and get back to the trial. <clears throat> I do apologize for keeping you waiting. Now then. Let's resume the class trial. We've all just learned of the shocking revelation that Chihiro was actually a boy. Let's pick up from there. Yes, well, I don't know his reason for hiding it, but the fact is, Chihiro was not a girl, but a boy. And because the victim was male, he would have had no problem gaining access to the boys' locker room. Assuming his handbook did, in fact, list his gender as male, then yes, that would be true. Of course his handbook said he was a boy. He dressed like a girl, but he was a boy through and through. So then, there should be no issue with Makoto's initial assertion. The victim was killed in the boys' locker room, and was then later moved to the girls' locker room and the killer could have easily used Sayaka or Junko's handbook to get into the girls' locker room. So Chihiro really was killed in the boys' locker room? I still don't understand the motive for moving the body, but... yes, that does seem plausible. Well, I must admit, I did find it rather odd. I knew he felt a little... off. There was a certain incongruity to his female body. This is the most titillating situation! So now everything has been connected. All the mysteries have finally become clear. Okay, well, connected or clear or whatever. We still think you're the killer, remember? <laughs> very interesting. This has become very interesting indeed. Ah, he's off in his own little world. What about you, Makoto? After everything we've learned, do you still think Byakuya is the killer? Well, without a doubt, Byakuya is the one that made Chihiro's death look like Genocide Jack did it. But... But I... I think he might not actually be the killer after all. What? But aren't you the one who accused him in the first place? He just seems to be too... easygoing about all this. Like he's enjoying us solving the mystery. The way he's acting, it makes it seem like it doesn't have anything to do with him. And you think that might be because it doesn't have anything to do with him? Plus, the evidence he left behind was a little too... How can I put it? 
overt. He consciously chose to use the extension cord, knowing it could connect him to the murder. At least, that's how I see it. And Byakuya, when you found out the murder took place in the boys' locker room, it seemed to rattle you. And then again, when you found out Chihiro was actually a guy. If you really were the killer, that stuff wouldn't have had any effect on you. So that's your thinking, huh? Well, it bothers me that you don't have more concrete reasons, but... It's fine. I guess I'll mark it as correct, for the time being. Mark it as... correct? He's right. I am not the culprit. I just happened to come across the corpse in the girls' locker room and decided to alter it. Are you fucking with us right now? No, I am not effing with you right now. I'm telling you the truth. Well, I find it very hard to believe! Go ahead. Find it very hard to believe. You're free to be executed along with the rest of us. If you're really telling the truth, then... Why? Why do you do that to his body? My reasons hardly matter right now. Uncovering the culprit is much more important, wouldn't you say? Now then, if it wasn't me, who was it? Well, I don't think I can say for sure without talking about it a little more. You're seriously gonna keep going? We're all good, aren't we? I thought it was clear Biapia did it. No, I'm with Makoto. If there's any doubt whatsoever, we need to explore every possibility. Because if we're wrong, we all die here. That's true. Very well then. I'm with you too. Damn straight. Count me in. Do you not have a mind of your own? Of course I do. What am I, an ant or something? Anyway, let's discuss this all as a group one more time. We still have time to make our decision. That's very true. Our lives are all on the line. Excellent. Then shall we resume our game of hide and seek? saw the killer, they would have said something by now. Perhaps someone saw the victim at some point. Even that might be enough for now. Yeah. All we need right now is any kind of new info. It's over. It's all over. You want to know who saw the victim? The killer. And only the killer. No, it's wrong. I believe someone else did see the victim before he was murdered. What do you think, Celeste? Now that you mention it, yes. I did see him. Huh? Really? Oh, but I suppose only Makoto knows about this. The rest of you had no idea, did you? That is why you're all making such ugly noises. Whatever! Just hurry up and tell us! It was last night. Right before night time, I saw Chihiro in the dormitory warehouse. I saw him stuffing a track jacket into a duffel bag. And then, I assume, he headed off to exercise. A track jacket and a duffel bag? But we didn't find anything like that at the murder scene. It seems likely that the culprit destroyed them to get rid of any evidence. And that is when he said something that struck me as rather odd. Ch 
Chihiro told me he was in a hurry. But why would he be in a hurry? Only if someone were waiting for him, I should think. So, Mr. Fujisaki was on his way to meet with someone, and then they were going to work out together? But Hina and I had invited him to exercise with us plenty of times, and he always declined. Probably because he was afraid you'd find out the secret he was hiding, right? Which means that conversely, he must have trusted whoever he was meeting with very much. Enough so that he was willing to risk his secret being revealed. Oh, the marvel of friendship! The point is, whoever he met up with is the culprit, right? So we just gotta figure out who it was. But knowing what we know, I can't even guess. No, you already have what you need to make the connection. Huh? You know who the killer is. S seriously who, who is it? Who's the killer? Think back to the track jacket and duffel bag the killer disposed of. Focus on the details of these items, and it should become obvious who was waiting for him. Are you sure about that? You really think we can figure out who did it based on two pieces of evidence that we don't have? What? You want to track down some fingerprints or something? Even if we had the equipment for that, we wouldn't know how to use it. As was noted, the evidence is already gone. There's nothing to get fingerprints from. Maybe, but we can make certain inferences if we just take the time to talk it out. Easy for you to say. But fine. Celeste, did you notice anything special about the bag or jacket? The bag was... Just a normal duffel bag from the warehouse. All the bags in there are the same, so I can't imagine what would make that one special. Well, if I remember right, there was a decent variety of tracksuits to choose from. Do you think there might be some connection between the culprit and Shihiro's jacket? Perhaps. Let's explore that and talk a bit more about the jacket he took. First of all, we know where Chihiro was headed. He was on his way to go exercise. So next we have to ask, why did he choose the specific tracksuit that he did? What do you mean, the specific tracksuit? I got it! He picked that tracksuit because it matched the one the culprit was wearing! So, what you're saying is, the killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit as him? No, that's wrong! Hold on a second, Mondo. What did you just say? Huh? What'd I say? When Celeste testified a few minutes ago, she said... She never said anything about the jacket's color. So why did you say Chihiro's blue tracksuit? What are you... You just... Hey, Celeste, what color was Chihiro's tracksuit? As a matter of fact, it was blue. And before we began the trial, did you tell anyone that? The only one I told about any of this was you. Then... Mondo, how did you know what color Shihiro's tracksuit was? Well, because I... I just... I'm sure he saw the clothes at some point in the investigation. No, that can't be it. The bag and clothes were surely disposed of by the time we began our investigation. Then the only reason he could have known what color the tracksuit was... 
It's if he saw Cherry with it before he died! That's the only possibility! Cherry? Uh, are you talking about your hero? So, how about it? Did you see the tracksuiter, didn't you? Just by chance. I just happened to see it last night. He walked past me, and he was carrying the tracksuit in his hands. No, that can't be it either. According to Celeste's testimony... And when Celeste noticed it, Chihiro made a point of making sure the jacket was completely in the back. If you just ran into him briefly, you couldn't possibly have seen what color the tracksuit was. It would appear you've dug your own grave. Perhaps. But you handed him the shovel, didn't you? That's why you said what you did. Focus on the tracksuit and it'll be obvious who he met with? What a bunch of nonsense. Ah, now I understand. It was all one big bluff, wasn't it? Your true intention was to draw a slip of the tongue from the culprit. That's why you said you knew who did it. To put them on edge. That's right. However, Mondo was my target all along. I had my suspicions about him from the very beginning. But why? What made you so suspicious? That's a good question. There was a certain turning point that ticked me off. Maybe you didn't notice it, Mondo, but you tend to refer to men and women differently. You only call guys dude. For girls, it's chick. And after he was killed, you happened to refer to him as dude. Once I picked up on that, it occurred to me that Mondo knew something we didn't. You didn't notice such a tiny detail? Are you a witch? She's a witch! You're positively frightful! No, I'm not the frightful one. Not nearly as frightful as someone capable of murdering a friend. Yeah. Mondo, was it really you? Did you really... kill Chihiro? I... 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 Uh, I didn't kill anyone! You've been all over me, judging everything I say, putting words in my mouth. What gives you the right to treat me like a goddamn criminal? Yeah, he would never do something like that. This is a false accusation. It's true. My reasoning on that is pretty shaky. That was fast. Well, this does present us with a problem. It seems we are all out of leads. <laughs> My time has nearly come. That's what my little ghost friend is telling me. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Kikumi, weren't you telling me you found some evidence? Really? What kind of evidence? Actually, you know, now that I'm thinking about it here calmly, it might not be all that relevant. Jeez, does your confidence just get up and walk away? It's fine, man. Just tell us. If you really insist, then... Um... Here it is. What do you have there? It happens to be an e-handbook. I found it laying on the ground, so I scooped it up. We know Chihiro's handbook was missing from the scene of the crime, right? For a fact. For a fact indeed! I was totally sure I'd found it. But it must hold some clue about the culprit, right? Well, that's what I was hoping. But it's busted. It won't even turn on. I imagine the culprit broke it to get rid of any evidence after the murder. That's odd. I didn't think the handbooks were quite so... fragile. You're right. 
They're not. They're totally waterproof and shock resistant. It would take an awful lot to break one. And yet, this one does appear to be broken, as is Leon's, sitting useless in the main hall. For all your confidence, that is a remarkably high failure rate. <laughs> Do you think there might be some kind of mystery in there somewhere? How precisely did the handbooks get broken? A gun! You already told us before that the handbook has one weak point, didn't you? Yeah. You remember that? Uh, uh, sure, maybe I let that slip, but I never told anyone what the weak point actually was. But if the handbook is supposed to never break, and two of them broke in quick succession, then... Then we can only assume that someone's figured out its weakness. You know what the weakness is, right, Monokuma? So, what is it? Huh? You're asking me? I think it's a necessary piece of information if you want this to be a fair trial. But if I tell you, and someone else decides to copy it, that would be very not good. Just tell us already! Why would we want to break our own handbooks? <sighs> oh well, I have a weakness for cushy demands. But you're sure you won't follow their example? Then allow me to make a special announcement. The weak point of my cutting-edge e-handbook is... When it's exposed to high temperatures for too long, it will suffer a meltdown and totally break! I flippin' knew it! You knew it? Yeah, because I found the handbook laying on the floor of the sauna. The temperature in the sauna can reach over 200 degrees. Strange how you don't get burnt, huh? It's because as your sweat evaporates, it creates a cool layer of air around your skin. If the hot air of the sauna were somehow pushed directly onto your skin, you'd definitely get fried. That layer of air would get blown away. That's why you may feel a burning when you move around. So when you're in a sauna, make sure to keep nice and still. Oh, interesting. I learned one new fact today. That is a mere trifling speck of knowledge. Anyway, if you found the victim's handbook in the sauna, then the killer must have been purposely trying to raise its temperature in order to break it. Meaning the culprit somehow knew its weakness. But how'd they find out? Monokuma said he didn't tell anyone, right? Indeed. Quite the mystery. What if they found out by accident? What do you mean, by accident? What if the killer took their own handbook into the sauna, not knowing its weakness, and it broke? They'd realize it was broken, of course, and it wouldn't be hard to figure out why. And once they had Chihiro's handbook, they knew they had an easy way to dispose of it. I won't say it's not possible, but who would have done something like that? I don't know of anyone who took their handbook into the sauna. I might know someone who did. Whoa! Seriously? I think the one who may have taken their handbook into the sauna was... <laughs> Here's my answer! Mondo, your handbook got broken in the sauna, didn't it? What? Why? Why do you keep accusing him? Mondo and Taka had an endurance contest in the sauna not too long ago, remember? And for the contest, Mondo just so happened to keep his school uniform on. But little did he realize, he'd also left his handbook in one of his uniform pockets. And when it was all over, 
Mondo discovered that taking your handbook into the sauna could easily destroy it. Uh. No, wait, hold on! You've got it all wrong! He would never kill! I don't accept this! Show me the proof! The actual solid proof! Let's test Makoto's assertion. If what he says is correct, then Mondo, you broke your own handbook. In other words, if Mondo's handbook is actually broken, then that proves that what Makoto said is right. Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine! No, it's wrong! Mondo, the handbook you have right now, is it really yours? The fuck is that supposed to mean? The broken handbook that was in the main hall. Isn't that one actually yours? What the heck are you talking about? What I mean is, I think Mondo swapped his handbook out for one that actually works. I think he took Leon's handbook and replaced it with his own. After all, Monokuma said himself that Leon's handbook never should have broken. That's right! The punishment it suffered wasn't nearly enough to destroy it. So then, the broken handbook in the main hall is actually Mondo's. Which would mean that the handbook Mondo has right now is actually Leon's, yes? But doesn't that violate the school regulation that says loaning out your handbook is prohibited? Well. Here's how I look at it. There is a rule about loaning your handbook to another student, but if they're dead, they're not a student. It's kind of a gray area, I admit, but no worries. If anything, it just makes things more interesting. As such, I decree that exchanging handbooks with a corpse is not a violation of the rules. Well, Mondo, if I'm wrong about this, you're welcome to say so. I'm happy to admit I made a mistake, but... Son of a bitch! What's wrong, bro? C come on! Tell him he's wrong! You are wrong! You have to be wrong! Everything you just said is wrong! You made it all up! Okay, then why don't we look back on this case one more time, from the beginning? That way, everything will become clear, and we'll all see if I was right or wrong.
Here's exactly what happened. First, let's take a look back to before the incident. Last night, Celeste saw Chihiro in the warehouse, correct? At the time, she was apparently stuffing something into a duffel bag. That something was a blue tracksuit. You can confirm this, right, Celeste? With bag in hand, Chihiro headed out, even though it was officially nighttime. She made her way to the locker room, specifically the boys' locker room. But how could the victim, who was apparently a girl, access the boys' locker room? Simple, because she was really a he, which is why he was able to use his own handbook to gain entrance to the boys' locker room. Once inside, he met with someone there. And the person he met was the one who killed him. It seems likely that the killer grabbed the nearby dumbbell, approached the unsuspecting Chihiro, and attacked him. And that's where the blood stains on the poster and carpeting in the boys' locker room came from. was likely in the heat of the moment. The body was arranged, but the murder itself felt unplanned. Which is why the killer hurried to try and hide the act. First, pulling up the bloodstained carpet. Then, removing the bloody poster. and finally carrying the corpse into the girl's locker room. A girl's handbook was necessary to get into the locker room, of course. But this alone doesn't prove that the killer was necessarily a girl. After all, Sayaka and Junko's handbooks had been placed in the main hall. Using one of those, a boy could get into the girl's locker room without much problem. And that's exactly how the killer did it. With the carpet and the poster they brought with them, they got to work. They changed the layout of the boys and girls locker room in what you might call a crime scene switch. That could have been the end of things, but no. Yakuya discovered the body and decided to intervene in the situation, making things even more complicated. So, after stumbling on the crime scene, he went and grabbed the extension cord from the library, and then he got to work. He used the cord to string up Chihiro's lifeless body, Then, using the victim's own blood, he left a grisly message there at the scene of the crime. He wanted to create the illusion that Genocide Jack was responsible for the slaughter. And around the same time that Byakuya was putting together this facade, the killer, having already disposed of Chihiro's bag and other belongings, arrived at the sauna. There, they plan to destroy the last piece of evidence, Chihiro's handbook. And just as the killer expected, the steamy sauna was enough to ruin the electronic gadget. Somehow, the killer knew that the handbook couldn't stand up to the heat of the sauna. And the reason they knew that is because the sauna had already wrecked their own handbook. That's how it all played out. Shh. 
Isn't that right, Mondo Arata? Some evidence. You're wrong. I won't listen. I refute you. False. Show me some evidence. I won't listen. False. I refuse to vote. Show me some evidence. You're wrong. I won't listen. I repeat you! False! Show me some evidence! I won't listen! False! You're corrupt! I refuse to vote! I refute you! False! You're corrupt! Show me some evidence! I won't listen! I refuse to vote! Show me some evidence. You're wrong. I won't listen. Show me some evidence. This should prove it. If my thinking so far is right, Mondo must have replaced his broken handbook with Leon's. In which case, we can just check each of our handbooks right now. Once we do that, we'll... We don't gotta do that. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. I did it. I killed him. No choice, man. After hearing all that, I gotta just... give up. Go ahead, Monokuma. Get it over with. Ask for the goddamn verdict. Roger that! Wait! Hold on! No waiting! No holding on! Time for the moment we've all been waiting for! Grab your lever and give it a yank! Who will you elect as the Blackened this time around? Will you make the right choice, or the dreadfully wrong one? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Unbelievable. 
Sorry. What? What is this? Now then. Actually. Sorry. But, but... That's right. I want to change. That's right. Indeed. Um... Certainly. But... Because... Yeah. 
I knew it. What... what is this? You're wrong! Don't make me repeat myself. I just... Don't fuck with me! I... I just...
Bye. I... I just... Sorry. Piece of... What? What? Huh? What? What? No! That's right. You son of a bitch! I killed Chihiro. Even after all this time, I'm still just as weak as I've always been. And thanks to that, I did something I can never take back. Keep the promise we made from one man to another.
Naturally. Hey. However. What? <laughs> Honestly. There is nothing to be done. Indeed. Hey. What's this? You. Huh? What? 
the heck? Well, anyway, like I was saying, this is a pretty good spot. Yeah, a really good spot. Anyway, isn't it amazing how that girl went and killed someone before things even had a chance to get boring? Once things really get moving, it'll be like a roller coaster. There won't be any stopping it. Fear and despair charge forward at a speed nothing can hope to match. But I must admit, I'm disappointed. I went to all the pain and effort of making you part of the group, and you couldn't play your part. You do remember you were supposed to make the first move, right? Well, no biggie. Nothing we can do about it now, so just do your best to make things more exciting from now on, okay? After all, that's what everyone wants to see. As long as you don't want to know my measurements, fire away! Oh, my, my, you really took me by surprise there. I know I said you could ask anything, but... Super denied, ultra denied, demonic denied! Because you see, that's my ace in the hole. And nobody'd be dumb enough to reveal that, right? No matter how close they were to their friends. <laughs> I know I shouldn't cry, but I've had enough. I can't take it anymore. Getting out of here anytime soon? It's impossible. I can't let myself think about how much I want to get out of here. If I keep thinking like that, I might decide to... Hmm. 
Possible. Nothing to be done. You know? <laughs> I'm right, right? Perhaps. Hmm. Well, then. <laughs> um. You called for me, so I appear! What? Uh, um...
Isn't it wonderful? Listen up! Ba-bum, ba-bum. So then... Most unfortunate. Yes, indeed.
Watch out!
Impossible. So in the end... Mm-hmm.
What? Actually, Honestly. Sorry. Hina. But...
Honestly. Well, Nothing to be done. Mm. Oh. Um. So, um, uh, um, come on, come on. Then perhaps... Yes, it's me. then. Hey. 
Hey. Makoto. Anyway... Hello, nice to meet you. I'm Shihiro Fujisaki. <laughs> mm. I knew it. That's right. It's true. Of it. In other words, hmm. <laughs> I see. Are you okay with this? I mean... Anyway...
That's right. Leave it to me. I see. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Are you okay with this? However, So then, but it's true. However, <laughs> it's like... Um... <laughs> what? Shall we go? Yeah! 
What's the matter? What the heck? Hey, come on. <laughs> oh, um, damnation. Um... Wah wah? <laughs> it's like... <sighs> mm-hmm. <laughs> no way! You got it! This is fine. Indeed. Of course.
Oh, um... It would seem... Correct. Ado, I give you this ten million dollars. I prepared this graduation present for whichever lucky student makes it out of here alive. What do you think? It's ten million bucks, ten million smackaroos. It's like totally wow, wow, wow. Oh, am I right? It's true. Hmm. 
<laughs> this is a school announcement. It is now 10 p.m. As such, it is officially nighttime. Soon the doors to the dining hall will be locked, and entry at that point is strictly prohibited. Okay then, sweet dreams everyone. Good night, sleep tight. Don't let the bed bug bite. Hmm. Hey. Because... You know? How about that? Hmm. Hmm. subject can suddenly become brighter! Our dreams are expanding! Ding, ding! Good morning, everyone! It is now 7 a.m., and nighttime is officially over! Time to rise and shine! Get ready to greet another beautiful day! Could it be? Hmm.
Just a second.
Enough already. Correct. <clears throat> this is a school announcement. It is now 10 p.m. As such, it is officially nighttime. Soon the doors to the dining hall will be locked, and entry at that point is strictly prohibited. Okay then, sweet dreams, everyone. Good night, sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Good morning, everyone! It is now 7 a.m., and nighttime is officially over! Time to rise and shine! Get ready to greet another beautiful day! You know? Hmm. Hey, come on. Listen to me. No! 
wrong. How very sad. I suppose. Hey. <laughs> it's like... Are you okay with this? Honestly. I know that. What? 
Yeah! F you! Yeah! <clears throat> this is a school announcement. It is now 10 p.m. As such, it is officially nighttime. Soon the doors to the dining hall will be locked, and entry at that point is strictly prohibited. Okay then, sweet dreams, everyone. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Once again, Happy New Day! Good morning, everyone! It is now 7 a.m., and nighttime is officially over. Time to rise and shine! Get ready to greet another beautiful day!
So in the end... That's enough. Yep! Uh -huh. Huh? 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 Hmm. Have you reached that certain age? Forgiveness! <sighs> Naturally. talking. Yo! You know? Hmm.
Hmm. Actually, hmm. You know? We're serious. Hey, come on. Hey. How about that? That's right. However, Indeed. But... So that's it. <laughs> Interesting.
It is now 10 p.m. As such, it is officially nighttime. Soon the doors to the dining hall will be locked, and entry at that point is strictly prohibited. Okay then, sweet dreams, everyone. Good night, sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Hmm. There is nothing to be done. Fine. forgive are way more abnormal than the ones they don't.
Good morning, everyone. It is now 7 a.m., and nighttime is officially over. Time to rise and shine. Get ready to greet another beautiful day. However... would seem ten million dollars I've prepared this graduation present for whichever lucky student makes it out of here alive what do you think it's ten million bucks and some macaroons. It's like totally wow, wow, wow. Am I right?
For me, I see. Indeed. Indeed. Actually,
This is bad. What? 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 What are you saying? You've got to be kidding! Stop talking. What? Oh. That's fine. Okay. say Indeed What the hell am I looking at Okay with this?
So in other words, Very strange. Um... Ugh. Hmm. So that's it. one.
Just a second. What? What? Hmm. It's all clear now. So then... So then... has been discovered after a certain amount of time which you may use however you like the class trial will begin Are you okay with this? So then...
say? Come on. What? Hey! Indeed. Huh? 
Tina. No way! No! Tina. This is...
In other words, What? Hmm. So then... But... <laughs> Come on. Indeed. Goodbye. A body has been discovered! After a certain amount of time, which you may use however you like, the class trial will begin! Hmm. It's the Monokuma file! <laughs> What? 
stop talking. Punishment is waiting for you. See ya later! Hmm. Who, who would do this? Why? Why? He's alive again? Where am I? Cold. So cold. Is winter coming? Hifumi! Wake up! Huh? Uh, that's right. I remember now. Hope's Peak. I remember everything before I met you all. I met you all. <laughs> oh, the light, it's reaching out to me like the tail of a comet. Ifumi, who was it? Who attacked you? Who tried to kill you? Who killed me? That's right. I remember their name. Y Yasu. Hero. Honestly. Stop talking. Huh. Then perhaps... So, in other words... Indeed.
very strange. <sighs> hmm. Well. Hmm. Perhaps. Speaking of which, I'd like to ask the bear, if there is an accomplice, do they also become blackened? So you ask, and so I shall answer! Each murder is allowed to have an accomplice, but only the one who does the killing will get to graduate! So in other words, two people can work together, but one of them has no chance of profiting from it. Then there's no way anyone would work together, right? In other words... So then... Hey! Um... So then... Hmm... It's all clear now. Thank you. 
So in other words,
So then... Mm. However...
However... Yes, indeed. Indeed.
It's all clear now.
I mean... Huh? Oh, hey, Makoto! That's right. Hmm. Uh, um. What the heck? Please. What are you saying? What the 
See, look. See how loose it is? I mean, come on. I'm blind as a bat in here. Can't see my feet at all. I'm surprised you got anywhere in this thing. I'm telling you, it wasn't me! And not to mention, you totally can't bend at the waist. Seems like a pretty obvious oversight. That's not a very nice thing to say. Hmm? Uh, I, I mean, it's not like I made it. I just got caught up in the moment. Well, either way, now we know for sure, right? I mean, it seems pretty clear that nobody but Hero could have fit into this dumb costume. Then perhaps... Right. Correct. Please. What the heck? Uh, um. Oh, so then. Uh, um. Yeah! 
be mean. Just a second. Hmm. <laughs> no way. Shall we go? Hey. Correct. Hey. Anyway. So then... I knew it. I see. Hey. So then... That's right. In other words... Huh? 
however. Makoto. Because... Is that right? So then... Indeed. That's right. Indeed. Why is that? However, uh, um, Is that right? So...
Hey. Is that right? Are you excited? Are you pumped? It's time for the class trial to begin! Like the bright burst of fireworks, like the flash of a soul clashing with life and death! And so, with no further ado, everyone please meet at the usual spot! Make your way to the red door on the first floor of the school! <laughs> See you soon! It would seem... Shall we go? Monokuma appears! Wrong! Whew. Boy, <laughs> tough crowd. Stop talking. Okay. Hey! Hey! Let's go. <laughs> Please! What the heck? What the heck?
with a basic explanation of the class trial. So, your votes will determine the results. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. Now then, to begin with... We already know who did it! Was that? It was Hero. He does not have an alibi for when the murders took place, and we found him in that suit. Don't try and deny it! You killed them! I didn't! Someone knocked me out! I, I was asleep the whole time! I don't know anything about it! Shut your murdering mouth, murderer! Who are you calling a murderer? I am sorry to say, Hero. But we do have evidence. Blueprints for the suit. Parts we assume were used to build it. And all of it was found in your room. You have to admit, the evidence is quite compelling. It points to you as having created the suit and wearing it while committing crime after crime. How many times do I have to tell you? I... I... I don't know, I don't know, I don't know! Everything we found in your room. The blueprints, the suit parts, they are all... No, that's wrong! Are we sure Hero really made those blueprints? What do you mean? Well, take a look at this. It's the note that Hero wrote, asking everyone to meet up after Alter Ego disappeared. The handwriting's obviously different. Wouldn't you say? When you compare it to the blueprints... There's no way you could think the same person made both of them. Unless that person made it a point to disguise their handwriting. No, the differences are bigger than that, I think. Come on! I'm not smart enough to think of trying to change my handwriting anyway. So, Makoto, are you saying you don't think Hiro's the culprit? And he is not the only one. I think Hero is innocent as well. What? Then who was in that robo-justice suit? Is it like Hero said? Was there really someone running around in a second suit? The suspicious individual hidden within the suit. Go ahead, Makoto. Tell them who it was. So? Who was in the robo-justice suit? A gun! Other than Hero, I can't think of anyone else it could have been. Obviously, he was the one in that particular suit, and we never found any kind of second suit. Then there can be no doubt. Hero is the prime suspect. That doesn't make any sense! You just said Hero didn't do it! It makes perfect sense. Hero was the suspicious individual in the suit, but he's not the culprit. So what you're saying is... 
That's right. The culprit in this case has nothing to do with being in the robo-justice suit. What? Now that's a bold assumption! And what reason do you have to make such a statement? You do have a reason, yes? Of course. But before we get to that, there's something else we need to clarify first. So let's get that out of the way. Hey, stop trying to boss us around! All things have a proper order. So what is it? What needs to be clarified? We must clarify the method of transportation for Taka's lifeless body. It would seem that his corpse was moved using certain particular items. Makoto, can you tell us what they were? Dolly and a tarp, right? So, let's see if I can explain. Taka's body disappeared from the equipment room. And then we rediscovered it in the repository. And when we found it for the second time, it was wrapped in a blue tarp, right? It was the same tarp that, up until then, was stored in the equipment room. So the killer must have seen it there, and decided to use it when they moved Taka's body. That way, they wouldn't leave any bloodstains while they were moving it. Okay, that explains the tarp. And the dolly? Same thing. I'm sure the dolly was in the equipment room when we first found Taka's body there. But when the body disappeared, so did the doll. Later, when Taka's body reappeared in the repository, so did the doll. In other words, you think they used the dolly to move the body, am I right? But are you sure you are not mistaken? Huh? Are you absolutely positive the dolly was in the equipment room when we found Taka's body? That dolly was made specifically for moving large objects between the repository and the art room. It would be very strange indeed to discover it had made its way to the equipment room. Is it not possible that it was in the repository all along and you simply didn't realize it? She's raised an objection. How do you respond? There is no shame in being wrong. Nobody expects much from you anyway. We have all accepted the fact that you rarely understand what is going on around you. Agree. You are a fool. So pathetic. 
Lies will get you nowhere. Do your worst. Away with you. You miserable wretch. I cannot agree. You are a fool. Lies will get you nowhere. Do your worst, you miserable wretch. You have it wrong. I cannot agree. You are a fool. So pathetic. Lies will get you nowhere. Do your worst, away with you. You miserable wretch. I cannot agree. You are a fool. Lies will get you nowhere. Do your worst, you miserable wretch. You miserable wretch. You have it wrong. I cannot agree. You are a fool. So pathetic. Lies will get you nowhere. Do your worst. Away with you. You miserable wretch. I cannot agree. This should prove it. If you're asking for proof that the dolly moved, I have it right here. When I found the dolly in the repository, one of the wheels had a blood stain on it. There was a pool of blood in the equipment room with a tire mark in it that matched the dolly wheel's tread. The killer probably rolled the dolly through the blood on accident as they wheeled the body out of the room. And as the blood dried on the tire, they moved the body into the repository. So there's my proof that the dolly was used to move Taka's body. <laughs> well, anyway, that was just something we had to get out of the way. Let's get back to the main subject. Yeah, the subject of how Robo-Justice didn't do it. Because if it's not a killer robot, then what kind of robot is it? I'm not sure that really matters. I'd be happy to explain why the occupant of the suit couldn't possibly be the killer. If you look back on how the body was transported, it will become immediately obvious. was killed in the equipment room. And from there, the body was moved to the repository, correct? Yeah. The culprit wrapped the body in the tarp, then loaded it onto the dolly and wheeled it off, right? Now, keep in mind that the dolly doesn't have a handle. Well, yeah. But even without a handle, all you'd have to do is bend over. No, it's wrong! You're absolutely right that you could push a dolly without a handle if you stoop down low. But if you were wearing that suit, do you think you could actually get into a position like that? What do you mean? Think back to what you said when we were all checking out the suit together, remember? When you're in that suit, not only can you not see your feet, but you can't even bend at the waist. Am I right about that? Now that you mention it, yeah. It seems like it'd be awfully hard to push that dolly if you couldn't bend over. Well, what's to stop you from simply pushing the dolly with your feet? When you can't even see your feet? You really think someone could kick the dolly all that way? It'd be totally impossible! Not that I can say for sure myself. On top of that, if you were wearing such a rigid, cumbersome suit, it's very unlikely you would have the dexterity to go about wrapping the body in a tarp. Well, I mean, isn't that just a matter of taking off the suit when you're ready to move the body? I got it! 
I don't think taking off the suit was an option. If you remember... Possible to put the suit on or take it off without help. Then you really can't take it off by yourself. Hero wasn't just making it up. Uh, of course, I wasn't making it up. If he could have gotten it off by himself, I don't think he would have let us see him wearing it. Showing up in the suit was basically an invitation for everyone to suspect it. Yeah, that's right. So. It's really, really true that Robo Justice couldn't have moved the dolly? To be clear, whoever did move the body, it couldn't have been Hero in the robot suit, correct? No, wait. Just a second, if you please. Have you forgotten about the picture that I took? You all got a good look at it, did you not? The image of Hifumi being dragged away by Robo Justice? If whoever was in that suit is not the culprit, how do you explain that? Besides, do you remember what the now deceased Hifumi said? So long as those facts exist, the proper conclusion is beyond question. The individual inside the suit and the culprit are one and the same. It was Hero, without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah, that's gotta be right. <laughs> Hold on a second! It's still far too early to reach that conclusion. Besides, there's no hurry to decide who did it. Before we rush to a verdict, shouldn't we explore every single possibility? Instead of seizing on one viewpoint, the truth is uncovered by analyzing things from every angle. Perhaps, but where do we go from here? Let's review this series of unfortunate events from the beginning. Maybe we'll uncover something new. <laughs> what a pain in the ass! I don't disagree, but our lives are on the line. If this is what it takes, we have to do it. Plus, maybe we'll get to find out where the heck Kyoko was when everything went down. All right then, let's take another look back at what happened. I suppose we could start with this morning. Four of us gathered together in the dining hall. Makoto, Hina, Kyoko, and myself. We waited there for quite a while, but nobody else showed up, so we went to look for everyone. That was around 8 a.m. And as soon as we split up, Kyoko went missing. Soon after that, Hina found Celeste in the rec room and quickly came to get Makoto and me. It seems I was unconscious for about an hour after I was attacked by my mystery assailant. I know it was an hour, because I remember being attacked a little after seven. That was when we saw Celeste's picture and discovered that her assailant had been wearing a strange costume. As it turns out, it was Robo-Justice. It also soon became clear that this same Robo-Justice had abducted Hifumi. We were soon joined in our search by Byakuya and Toko, and then went on to find Hifumi in the library. He was injured, so we took him to the nurse's office and resumed our search for the suspect. But not long after leaving the nurse's office... When Celeste told us that, we decided to split up and search the second floor. 
And soon after that, I saw someone moving around on the third floor. And I yelled out to everyone as soon as I did. Then... At that point, we decided to divide up into two groups. Celeste, Hina, and I went back to the nurse's office while Sakura, Yakuya, and Toko chased after the suspect. When we got back to the nurse's office, we found Hifumi, dead. And that's when we heard the body discovery announcement. I left Celeste and Hina there and headed back to the third floor to let the others know what had happened. Meanwhile, we had just discovered Taka's body in the equipment room. We must have found both bodies at almost exactly the same time. Because we heard the same announcement not long after we discovered his body. And that's when I told you guys about Hifumi. Then the three of us headed for the nurse's office. But right after we left the physics lab, we ran into Celeste who'd arrived after us, and she told us something very surprising. We rushed back to the nurse's office and saw that she was right. Then we remembered we'd left Toko passed out in the equipment room, so we hurried back again. But when we got there, we discovered that now Taka's body had also gone missing. Next thing we knew, we were searching the school for two missing dead bodies. And after some time... Celeste informed us that she'd found the bodies, and we all headed to the repository. Which is where we rediscovered the corpses. I think that about covers it. I see. The whole thing sounds exceptionally complicated. It certainly seems to me that these are not a simple series of connected events. Okay, well... If that's true, then what? Rather than a single series of events, I think we have to consider each murder a separate situation. And from there, we can uncover the contradictions surrounding all of them. Now then, let's get started, beginning with what happened to Taka. So, regarding Taka's death, I wonder if he died before Hifumi, or perhaps it was after? We already know what order they were killed in. Taka came last. What makes you say that? Because of the numbering of the justice hammers. It's true that Hifumi was killed with Justice Hammer 3, while Taka's death came from a swing of Justice Hammer 4. See? So it's obvious Taka came after. So, regarding Taka's death, I wonder if he died before Hifumi, or perhaps it was after? We already know what order they were killed in. No, it's wrong.
Hold on. There's no reason to assume that the hammers were used in the same order as their numbers. If anything, that's just another way the killer tried to disguise their actions. So you're saying the culprit wanted us to think the hammers were used in order, but in reality, Taka was killed before Hifumi? Okay then, let's see the proof. the hands pointing just past six o'clock. It must have gotten broken when he was attacked by the killer, because as of last night... So if it wasn't broken after six last night, then he must have been attacked around 6 this morning. And that would be his official time of death. But if that's true, then he was killed well before Hifumi. And before Celeste was attacked this morning, which happened around 7. That's right. Taka was killed before any of the other incidents took place. That simple fact slipped past all of us. We made the wrong assumption about the order of events, all because of those justice hammers. That's exactly why the culprit wrote the numbers on each hammer and had them increase in size. That way, when we saw how they were used in each incident, we'd easily make that wrong assumption. Now, if Taka was killed around six, then everyone's alibis for his murder go out the window. Because when he was killed, we hadn't met up in the dining hall yet. That may be true in the case of Taka's murder. But all of our alibis still hold true for Hifumi's death. That's right. With him, at least, we're all safe. Screaming, we were all together. Except for Hiro and Kyoko. Then we all ran down to the nurse's office, and that's where we found his body. That's totally true! We're all in the clear! Oh, I know! They must have recorded him screaming on a tape or something, then played it later on! If that's true, where's the tape? I don't know. Just go making stuff up. Anyway, we all have rock solid alibis for when we heard Hifumi scream. Since all of us were there together, clearly none of us could have killed him. And it does not stop there. There was also the moment when we discovered his body had disappeared. When his body vanished from the nurse's office, Hina and I were in the bathroom together while everyone else was in the equipment room, correct? And then there's the disappearance of Taka's body from the equipment room. At that time, we were all gathered together in the nurse's office because of Hifumi going missing. Well, don't forget, I was passed out in the equipment room the whole time. Wait, then what if Genocide Jill did it? She could have dragged Taka's body out of there right then. Even if she could pull that off, there's no way she could have done the same with Hifumi's body. 
because, as we just established, she was passed out in the equipment room when his body disappeared. Besides, I didn't do either of them anyway. In other words, it is impossible that any of us could have killed Hifumi or moved either of their bodies. On the other hand, Hiro and Kyoko had disappeared, so they most certainly could have done those things. Hmm. So what now, Kyoko? For now, we can't get fixated on who did it, or we'll just keep going around in circles. So instead of who, I propose we start talking about how. In particular, I think we need to figure out how Hifumi's body got moved. That's true. We searched everywhere, but we couldn't figure out how to explain his body disappearing. And according to what Celeste said... His body apparently disappeared in the one minute her and Hina took their eyes off of it. But to carry that much weight from the first floor up to the third in that short amount of time? Oh man, yeah! There's no way! It'd be impossible! Well, what if I told you there was a way to make the impossible possible? What? How? If the dead body were to move itself. The dead body m moved on its own? <laughs> no! Not another ghost! I don't think it has anything to do with the occult. I think what she's implying is... We thought Hifumi was dead, but perhaps in reality he was still alive. He was... alive? Are you saying Hifumi wasn't carried out of the nurse's office, but simply walked out on his own? But I mean, we found his body. He was dead. Perhaps he was simply playing dead. That... it isn't possible. Are you saying that when we first found Hifumi in the nurse's office, there's a chance he was actually still alive? No, it is impossible. Hifumi was dead, without a doubt. And you know that how? Surely you heard the body discovery announcement along with the rest of us. Hifumi's dead body had been found. And that is why the announcement was made. Are we really so sure about that? Maybe the announcement was intended to signal someone else's discovery. Are you saying that when we first found Hifumi in the nurse's office, there's a chance he was actually still alive? No, it is impossible. Hifumi was dead, without a doubt. And you know that how? Surely you heard the body discovery announcement along with the rest of us. Hifumi's dead body had been found. No, that's wrong! Was the body discovery announcement that was made really intended for Hifumi? Of course it was. The announcement played right after we discovered his body. Maybe. But that was also the same time that Taka's body was found. That's right. It wasn't long after finding his body that we heard the announcement. So there's a good chance we've made a mistake in there somewhere. I think we've confused whether the announcement was for Hifumi or Taka. First of all, if two bodies had been found, there really should have been two announcements. Maybe Monokuma simply got lazy and rolled them together into one. What do you say, Monokuma? Any comment? Well, it's a very sensitive issue, so I can't go into too much detail. 
But what I can say about the Body Discovery announcement is that it's only broadcast when three or more people find a dead body for the first time. That didn't answer our question, man. We're asking if you're a lazy bum. No, actually, that was plenty. Huh? He said it's only broadcast when a body is discovered for the first time. Which means, even if we find the same body again later, he won't make the announcement again. If that's true, then why was the announcement made again later on? Huh? Later on? Exactly. We heard the body discovery announcement twice. We heard it a second time in the repository, when we rediscovered the two bodies. It didn't seem weird at the time, but it contradicts what Monokuma just told us, doesn't it? Exactly. If we were actually rediscovering both bodies, the announcement shouldn't have played. And in reality, when the two dead bodies were rediscovered, one of them was actually being discovered for the first time. So when we found Hifumi the first time in the nurse's office, he wasn't actually dead yet. Meaning he wasn't actually found dead until we came upon him in the repository. And that's just part of it. There's one other thing that leads me to believe he was still alive in the nurse's office. Oh, 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 I know, I know! Because he was super good at playing dead! Bada bing, bada boo! That is the worst logic I have ever heard. But honestly, I do not think there's anything that can prove he was still alive. Okay then, let's take another look at the events surrounding the discovery of his body. Then it should become clear whether he was really alive or not. This whole thing is pointless. Well, here's one thing we do know. The first time we found Hifumi's body was in the nurse's office. And then, while me and Celeste were in the bathroom, his body disappeared! And the next time we saw his body, it was in the repository. But when you compare his body before being moved and his body after being moved, other than the change in how it was positioned, there was no notable difference. No, it's wrong! In fact, there was one clear difference between Hifumi and the nurse's office and the repository. His glasses. That fact alone proves that he was only playing dead in the beginning. Perhaps you'd like to fill the rest of us in? When we found Hifumi in the nurse's office, his glasses were covered with blood. But when we found him again later in the repository, they were spotless. And I found the item he used to wipe them clean in the nurse's office trash can. I got it! It was a glasses cleaning block featuring a certain cartoon mascot. One look at the blood stain on the cloth should make things clear. This piece of cloth was used to wipe Hifumi's glasses clean. And the mascot on the cloth is the same one that's on the digital camera, right? And whose digital camera was it? Hifumi's, of course. The character was... Princess Piggle. From Demon Angel Pretty Pudgy Princess, I think. I highly doubt anyone but Hifumi would have brought something like this to school. I see your point. 
And the only people here who wear glasses are... I wouldn't be caught dead using a tacky piece of garbage like that. A few tissues is all I need to keep my glasses clean. Then there's no question. It belonged to Hifumi. Mm. Mm. So what you're saying is... What exactly? What I'm saying is, the blood on his glasses was wiped away using his own glasses cleaning cloth. Even if that is true, it does not mean he wiped the blood off himself. But who would benefit from a clean pair of glasses other than the glasses owner? That's a good point. And it must have been him, right? So let's assume that Hifumi was still alive in the nurse's office. He pretends to be dead. Then when he's alone, he wipes his glasses clean so he can see. Then he stands up and walks out on his own two feet. And with that, the impossible task of moving his copious corpse becomes possible, wouldn't you say? But then, if he was just pretending to be dead, What was with all that blood? Was it paint or something? The fridge in the nurse's office contains packs of blood for emergencies. He probably used one of those. He figured if he was gonna play dead, he should go all out. So he just dumped it everywhere! But he got crazy with it and had to wipe his glasses off when he was done! Oh, what an idiot! And if Hifumi was still alive at that point, the disappearance of Paka's body is easily explained. It should be perfectly obvious who must have moved Taka's corpse. I got it! It could only have been Hifumi. While we were all gathered in the nurse's office, he went to the equipment room and took Taka's body. That also explains how the door to the repository got locked. The door was locked? Well, after the bodies disappeared, we all went looking for them, right? So me and Sakura headed for the repository. But when we got there, the door was locked. And the repository door can only be locked from the inside. Which means, when Hina and Sakura got to the repository, someone was already inside. And it could only have been Hifumi, who just finished stashing Taka's body there. He convinced us all he was dead, and when he saw his chance, he dragged Taka's body to the repository. So, Hifumi wasn't just another victim in this case. He was one of the assailants. But that means he took part in the murders. I just can't believe it. If you're having trouble, would you like me to show you one more piece of evidence? There's more? Oh, absolutely. The single biggest fact pointing to his involvement has yet to be revealed. You know what I'm talking about, right, Makoto? The item he took off of Taka's lifeless body? I got it! You're talking about the note Kifumi had hidden away, aren't you? Hidden note? That's right. We found it stuffed in his pants. What? In his pants? Mm, yes, his pants. Okay, well, forget about the pants for now. Take a look at what the note says. note I was telling you about. The one that told me where to go. Huh? Wait, this one's a little different. In my note it said, Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the rec room at 1 a.m. I see. Then this note isn't the same one Hero got. It's not the same? In other words, the killer got in touch with another person besides Hiro. And that person could only have been... I got it! That's right! Taka! The killer used this note to draw out Taka and murder him. 
Hello? Over here! Objection! Objection! I don't really understand what's going on, but Hifumi had that letter, right? So whoever wrote it wasn't drawing out TikTok, they were drawing out Huffy! Um, just to be clear, TikTok is Taka and Huffy is Hifumi, right? Oh, yes! Why must you ruin it every time? intended for must have been happy but remember what the note said what time did it say to me 6 a.m. I believe the time doesn't matter the note has nothing to do with TikTok no that's wrong No, there absolutely is a connection. What? what the hell are you talking about? The note said to meet at 6 a.m., which is the same time Taka was murdered. You've already proven that using his wristwatch. But there's more. Look where the note says to meet. The equipment room, right? Which is where Taka was killed. I see. So... Taka was murdered at both the time and place written in the note. I think that should be plenty to show that this note was definitely meant for Taka. Hmm. Well, did you put it like that? No further objections! <laughs> then someone used that note to trick Taka. Just the same as me. <sighs> the culprit really is a cold-blooded monster. Telling people they found a way out. But if they gave the note to Taka, what was Hifumi doing with it? Stuffed down his pants, no less! Most likely, Hifumi stole it off Taka's corpse after he died. Huh? He stole it? Where's your proof? Go ahead, show us. When I searched Taka's body, I saw that his lifeless hand was gripping a small scrap of paper. If I'm right about this, the sheet of paper this piece came from is... I knew it! It fits perfectly with the note we found hidden on Hifumi! Then Taka's scrap and Hifumi's note... Yup, they're from the same piece of paper. Hifumi had the note meant for Taka while Taka's corpse still grasped a small piece of that note. There is only one way to explain it. Taka died clutching the note. Hifumi tried to free the note from his death grip, leaving behind only one small scrap. Did I get all that right? That means Hifumi knew the note was important. Exactly, which proves that he was an accomplice in the murder. Whoa. Yeah. After seeing all this, Hifumi was super involved in this whole thing for sure. In fact, he was behind the whole thing. In fact, he's still alive! Sorry, no. When we found him in the repository, Hifumi was truly and completely dead. The second body discovery announcement proves that. So then... Who killed Hifumi? Whoever did is the mastermind, the true killer. He was killed in the repository, so he must have been killed not long after transporting Taka's body. So, he must have been killed after Taka's body vanished, but before we found both bodies in the repository. During that time, we'd all split up and were searching for Taka's missing body. In other words, during that time, 
None of us have alibis. Wait, but me and Sakura were together. Stop trying to steal the spotlight, you stupid walrus! Who are you calling a walrus? Anyway, when they were killed bothers me too. But there's something that's been bothering me even more. And what might that be? The weapon they used to kill Hifumi! The weapon? Yeah, because I mean, according to the Monokuma file, the way Taka and Hifumi were killed was almost the same, with them having similar fractures and all. But Justice Hammer 3 and 4 were still laying around in the nurse's office and equipment room, right? So if Hifumi was killed in the repository, the culprit would have had to grab one of the hammers, kill Hifumi, then put the hammer back where they found it. But wouldn't that be seriously risky for him? I'm surprised. It seems there's some semblance of a brain knocking around that skull of yours after all. Hell yeah, it's packed in there good and tight. He's right though. I don't understand it either. The Monokuma file makes it clear that they were killed using similar instruments. But if the hammers were already laying around those other rooms... So the question is, how could the culprit have gotten their hands on either of the hammers? Personally, I haven't a clue. So which hammer was used to attack Celeste? Number one or number two? Those were accounted for in other rooms too. And I don't think either one is big enough to kill someone. Um... Then... Is it not possible they used a different weapon? I don't think it is possible. They were both killed with the same kind of thing, right? So then, what was used to kill Hifumi? What was used to kill Hifumi? Was it Justice Hammer 3? Maybe Justice Hammer 4? Well, whatever it was, there's one thing we have to figure out. How was the culprit able to move around so freely with the weapon? How did nobody witness them carrying it? Sounds like a Justice Hammer 5 was about to make its appearance! Check out murdergear.com slash hammer time for more info! Well, one thing seems pretty clear. The murder weapon had to be one of the justice. No, it's wrong. The murder weapon wasn't a justice hammer at all. No, it was something completely different. But seriously, a different weapon? Specifically, a hammer from the repository. The killer could have easily used that to kill the food. Now, all the hammers in the repository were covered in flecks of grit and debris. But for some reason, one of them had been scrubbed clean. Huh? And the reason it had been scrubbed clean was most likely because it was used to commit murder. If the hammer got covered in Hifumi's blood, of course they'd have to clean it off. I'd also like to point out that the repository has all kinds of hammers. Big ones, small ones, and even some flat mallet-like ones. I think whoever made the Justice Hammers used those as a basis for their design. If that's true, that would explain the Monokuma Files' note about the wounds being similar. So Hifumi moved Taka's body to the repository, where someone then used a hammer to kill him. Whoever did that is the true killer. The one who threw me was working with. And the one who betrayed him. Hold on a moment. I still think it's strange to assume someone was working together with him. The way the graduation rule works, there is no benefit to helping someone else carry out a murder. So the idea that anyone would work together like that is simply ludicrous. We talked about this, did we not?
based on the rules that have been laid out for us, even if more than one person is complicit in the murder, only the one who actually carried out the act can graduate and survive. Assuming the rule holds true, it is simply impossible that two people work together on this. That is how the rule was explained to us. But that only really applies if there's one murder, right? In this case, however, there were two murders. Based on the rules that have been laid out for us, even if more than one person is complicit in the murder, only the one who actually carried out the act can graduate and survive. Assuming the rule holds true. No, it's wrong! Since there were two murders, it's at least plausible that more than one person was involved. What do you mean? If there'd only been one murder, then yes, the idea of an accomplice isn't really worth considering. Naturally, if only one person can be saved per murder, an accomplice has no risk versus reward benefit. Risk versus reward benefit? The payoff for working together. The reward that balances out the risk of taking part in a scheme. There's no point in being someone's accomplice if there's no benefit to you. However, if there were some potential mutual reward for the risk, then cooperation becomes possible. You're saying that two people could act as each other's accomplices to commit two separate murders? I think that's what the true killer told Hifumi. They would each have an accomplice for their crime. And based on the case's events, Hifumi would have been the first one to act, murdering Taka. They made him carry out the first murder so he couldn't back out of helping them later on. So in this case, there wasn't one single person committing multiple murders. Instead, each person killed someone, creating two separate incidents. And it only looked like one person because that's how the true killer designed it to look. A single suspicious individual, a similar weapon used in each crime, disappearing bodies. By creating one seamless set of circumstances, they made it look like one person was behind it all. The mastermind picked their target and managed to convince him to go along with their plan. And then to avoid the no accomplices rule, they simply killed their accomplice. Which, if true, means that betraying Hifumi was part of the plan from the very beginning. But that's just awful. How could anyone be so cruel? You think so? I can't help but admire its cunning. Still, their choice of accomplice seems... odd. could be involved, but then who was the one pulling Hifumi's strings? That's problem numero uno right now! Celeste. Ah, so I'm the suspicious individual now, am I? <laughs> I really do hate this kind of joke. A joke? I wonder. So what you are saying, then, is that I specifically chose to work together with Hifumi. The idea that I would choose to spend any amount of time interacting with him, that I would go within ten feet of that Brains, that lazy, worthless, goddamn idiot! Uh, 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 pardon -moi. Just to be clear, there is evidence to support it. 
Is that so? It is. Throughout the investigation, there was certain behavior that was common only to the two of you. Considering what we've learned so far, it only further proves that the two of you were working together. I got it! The behavior they had in common has to do with the suspicious individual in the suit, doesn't it? The only ones who ever actually saw Robo-Justice firsthand were Celeste and Hifumi. Shush, the adults are talking now. Sorry. As he said, only Celeste and Hifumi ever laid eyes on the costumed individual. If we accept that Hifumi was one of the culprits, we can't help but suspect what Celeste has said as well. Are you saying everything they told us was a lie? After taking Hifumi to the nurse's office, we all began our search for this individual, correct? And not too long after that, do you remember what Celeste said? We headed to the second floor specifically because of what she claimed to have seen. Next, to draw us all to the physics lab up on the third floor, she let out a blood-curdling scream. And when we'd all come to see what was wrong, what was it she said? Once she'd done her job of getting us all up to the physics lab, it was time for her partner to get to work. It was to get us to divide into two groups. In fact, Celeste was precisely the one who proposed that we split up. Well, if Celeste and Hifumi were working together, all those chance events suddenly become connected. And on top of that, that piercing cry of yours early on. <laughs> that was to signal Hifumi, wasn't it? It was your way of telling him, we're on the third floor, everything's going according to plan. Why else would you let out a scream that could have carried across the sea? I just realized another strange thing. When we found Hifumi in the nurse's office, who we now know was only pretending to be dead. <laughs> Celeste, you were the first one to say he'd been murdered. You wanted to make sure we wouldn't have any doubt in our minds. Everything, the whole thing was one big act. Hina, you were with Celeste when Hifumi's body disappeared, right? Yeah. I was feeling kind of sick, so Celeste took me to the bathroom. Wait, then that was... She wasn't worried about you. She just saw a chance to help Hifumi sneak out of the nurse's office. Each piece isn't much by itself, but start putting them together and the picture gets very ugly indeed. Wouldn't you agree, Celeste? I have no idea what you mean. Don't bother trying to deny it. You made one fatal mistake. Oh, did I? I didn't even catch it myself when you first said it, but looking back, I can say that that one little slip-up was your undoing.
What are you talking about? I'm talking about what you said after Hifumi's body disappeared and we returned to the nurse's office. saying that too, but I don't understand what's so strange about it. Then pay attention. Sakura, Toko, and I were first to discover Taka's body in the equipment room. Then Makoto showed up and told us Hifumi had been killed, so Sakura and I left with Makoto. Once we were in the hall, we ran into Celeste, and the four of us headed to the nurse's office. Now. The entire time we were together, none of us said anything about Taka being dead. Think about it. Celeste's comment doesn't make sense. It was completely out of place. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. Although I don't really get what it means. You hear that, Celeste? Everyone's having some trouble understanding. Could you repeat what you said? If you're really not the culprit, you shouldn't have any problem repeating it, right? Enjoying this. Enjoying the sight of us standing around, frightened and confused. They must be positively elated. We are all going to die here. We are going to die, just like those guys died. And that is all I said. And that's all it takes to finish this. It's obvious, isn't it? What was so strange about Celeste's comment? was they must really be enjoying this enjoying the sight of us standing around frightened and confused they must be positively elated we are all going to die here we are going to die just like those no it's wrong that's right there's no reason Celeste should have said, just like those guys died. When she said that, none of us had told her Taka was dead. Exactly. And we didn't run into her until after we were all out in the hall. So there was never any chance for her to have seen his body in the equipment room for herself. So how did you know, Celeste? How did you know more than one person had been killed? And how did you know they were both guys? Because Kyoko had also disappeared, right? So she could have been dead too. <laughs> you all have such vivid imaginations, you know that? Imaginations? You claim that I was lying when I told you about the suspicious person I saw. Then what about the picture I took? How do you explain this picture of the costumed villain dragging Hifumi away? It, it has to be some kind of setup, right? So let's put the suit on, and then, then she used the camera's timer to, to set up the picture. Have you so quickly forgotten? You are the only one who could have possibly fit into that suit. Plus, I happen to know that this particular camera does not have a timer. In other words, it is an unassailable fact that this is a picture of Hifumi being dragged away. If everything I told you was a lie, how can this picture exist? Simple. Are we sure that's really a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away? What could you possibly mean by that? Surely there are other explanations than the one you've offered up. No, there is no other explanation. I got it! 
It's not a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away. I would say it's a picture of Hifumi dragging the suspect away. That's certainly within the realm of possibility. The one being dragged off in that picture isn't Hifumi, but the person in the robot suit. We've simply been led to believe that it's the other way around. And the strange costume might only exist to lead us astray even farther. If you saw someone wearing something like that in this situation, of course you'd notice and be suspicious. That's what happened! You put me to sleep and made me out to be the bad guy in all this! <laughs> Such a thing... is utterly impossible. Hifumi was dragging him away? Ridiculous. Is it? I don't think it's ridiculous at all. Then shut your mouth and allow me to educate you. Dude, after I passed out! Then you just draped me across Hifumi and had him carry my weight! You tried to make me look like the bad guy! Like I said, ridiculous. As you can see in the picture, the suspect is standing perfectly upright. If the person inside the suit was unconscious, there's no way they could stand up straight like that. No, that's wrong! No. Even if the person inside the suit were unconscious, they could still stand up like that. Because that Robo-Justice suit had a certain characteristic. That's right! They totally made a mistake when they made it, so it couldn't bend at the waist. I'm not so sure that was a mistake. I think the suit was designed from the beginning to be used the way it was. <laughs> Celeste and Hifumi took the suit they'd specially designed and stuffed Hiro into it. That's how they were able to fake that whole thing. The point of it all was to make us believe whoever was in the suit was to blame. <laughs> well then, I suppose this is checkmate. <laughs> Don't make me laugh, you idiot! What do you mean, checkmate? Celeste? Clearly! You want to cram me into your little guilty box? Well, there's one little problem. Have you already forgotten what Hifumi told us as he lay dying? Say Yasuhiro, but are we sure he was really pointing the finger at Hiro? What the hell are you talking about? I've burned you a lot! Kyoko, what do you mean by that? Think back to how Hifumi used to talk to us. How did he refer to each of us? I got it! That's right! Our last names! He called us all by our last names! Exactly. I know I heard him say Mr. Nayagi more than once, for example. So if Hifumi did mean to say Hiro's name, 
he would have said his last name, Hagakura. I'm sure it was just incidental. By chance, he just... his first name. Indecent? Don't talk. Random chance. Now isn't that a convenient explanation? No. There's no reason to think he would have said the name any different than normal. But he must have run out of energy before he could say any more. So Hifumi was trying to tell us the last name of whoever killed him? But the name he said doesn't apply to anyone here. Well, no. Hold on. There's one person it could apply to. And that's Celeste. She never actually told us what her real name is. <laughs> what did you just say? To think you'd take your false accusation so far, I don't know whether to laugh or spit! Come on! Enough with your idiotic blather! Yasuhiro is a loser's name! Do I look like a loser to you? Well, do I? What? I think I've earned the right to be a little on edge. Okay, then fill us in. What's your real name? Fine. Make sure your ear holes are wide open and listen up! My real name is Celestia Ludenberg. Could you please stop making me repeat myself over and over again? Kafumi was trying to tell us something. He wanted us to know the killer's last name, Yasuhiro. If there's one person here who might have that last name... It would have to be you, Celeste. You haven't told anyone what your real name is. How many times do I have to tell you? My name is... Celestia Ludenberg, God damn it! How long do you plan to go on pretending? I'm not pretending. It's the truth. And since you have no way to contradict me... No, that's wrong! That's it! The handbook! What?! Anytime you turn your handbook on, it shows the owner's name when it boots up, right? Monokuma told us all about it before. So all we have to do is check her handbook, and that'll clear up everything. That's how we can find out Celeste's real name. That's an invasion of privacy. Refuse to cooperate! Celeste, can you please just tell us what really happened? Please, just tell us. Even when I'm put in check, it's just my nature not to give up. Because, 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 because! Until the game's over, you never know what might happen! Fine then. Let me settle it. Let me go over the case again, from the beginning, and shed light on all your crimes. And that'll bring everything to an end.
is exactly what happened. Before anything, the killer persuaded someone to help carry out the murder. And that person was... Kifumi. With an accomplice, the killer was able to execute a number of otherwise impossible schemes. First, they convinced someone to meet them in the rec room last night at one in the morning. That someone they met with was Hiro. The murderous duo intended to pass Hiro off as the prime suspect. So when they met up with him, they drugged him, knocked him out, and stuffed him into the robo-justice suit. Next, Kifumi positioned himself to make it look like Robo-Justice was attacking him, while the killer used a digital camera to take pictures of the assault. They did all this just to create evidence that would put the suspicion on Hiro. When they were done with him, they shoved him, still unconscious, into the pool room locker. And then finally, at 6 a.m., they moved into the murder phase of their plan. They called Taka to the equipment room. And that's where Kifumi killed him, making it the scene of the first murder. The murder weapon was Justice Hammer 4, which was left there in the equipment room. The reason Hammer Number 4 was used was to create confusion about the order of the crimes. So, next they falsified two more assault incidents. For these attacks, the killers pretended to be the victims to solidify Robo-Justice as the suspect. The first fake incident was the attack in the rec room. There, the killers wanted us to see Justice Hammer 1, and the Robo-Justice pictures they'd taken. They wanted to make sure we bought the surprise attack story. The second fake incident was the attack in the library. This time, they planted Justice Hammer 2 and an injured Yifumi to sell us that story. With these two incidents, the killers were able to create a certain preconception in our minds that the suspect was increasing the size of the hammers and attacking people in order as they did. We fell right into their trap and started looking for the suspect based on that. But... While we did that, we left Kifumi alone in the nurse's office. This was exactly what Kifumi was hoping for. took a blood packet from the refrigerator and Justice Hammer 3 and turned the room into a crime scene in which he himself had apparently been brutally murdered. He let out a scream to draw us back and when we returned, that's what we found. Meanwhile, the other group that had been out searching found Taka's body at the same time. So when we heard the body discovery announcement, we naturally assumed it was for Hifumi. We left the nurse's office, and Hifumi once again took advantage of the situation. He simply got up and made his escape. When we learned his body had disappeared, we all rushed back to the nurse's office. And once again, Hifumi had the chance he was waiting for. This time, he snuck into the equipment room. He wrapped Taka's body in a tarp and used the dolly to move it all the way down to the repository. That explains how each of the bodies disappeared. But even Hifumi didn't know what the true killer had in mind for their final act.
their plan all along was to kill Hifumi and get rid of the one person who could betray them. And they did it using an ordinary, everyday hammer from the repository. That should cover everything that happened in this case. And the villain behind it all is... my neck then you admit it you're the killer <laughs> listen to you trying to take charge as if you're my private instructor I Celestia Ludenberg actually no Taiko Yasuhiro is fine Taiko? so you finally accepted it I'm the kind of person, once I've lost, I don't like things to drag on. Interesting. Okay, Monokuma. I'm ready to begin. Or, no, I suppose this is the end, isn't it? Hmm, hmm. It is indeed the moment we've all been waiting for. Time to vote, okay? Okay. If you would, please locate your lever and cast your vote. And when the votes are tallied, who will become the blackened? Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Just a second. <laughs> In other words... Indeed. I see. <laughs> um... Actually... Are you okay with this? 
For me, oh, um, as for me, what? Hmm? Actually... What? <sighs> Indeed. This is unforgivable! Completely unforgivable! Honestly. <laughs> I swear I will save her! Actually... Indeed. But... Okay with this? Don't be mean! 
I wonder about that. Why? What the heck? Hmm. For me, isn't it wonderful? Nothing to be done. Just the worst. Oh. Do you understand? <laughs> Chills! Kills! Now then, I've prepared a very special punishment! Let's give it everything we've got! It's punishment time! I guess I'll let Kyoko hold on to this. What? Will it really give you the hope you're looking for? I can't say I ever saw it that way. Which is why... Actually, it's not important. Well then... Take care, everyone. Perhaps we'll meet again. In another life.
team. What are you gonna do? Let me out of here! Too bad! then. So... Huh? <laughs> hey! Indeed. Hey. What? So... Come on. What? Goodbye. Well then. Yo! Shall we go? So then...
however. What? Indeed. What? It's true. That's fine. Correct. Correct.
Why, you? What do you think you're doing? I asked you a question. What's the meaning of this? How dare you defy me? This wasn't part of the deal! I've made a decision. I will no longer retreat. No longer compromise. No longer regret. I've made my decision. I'm going to resist you. Hmm. Okay. But you do realize what will happen if you go through with this, right? You haven't forgotten, have you? What I'm holding hostage? I see. It's true. You got it! You know? We're serious. It's no 
not like some occult mystery. The occult is bullcrap! So, um... You got it all wrong! Huh? So... Actually... Hmm... But... The end is nigh! Some crazy beam came out of nowhere and locked onto my hamburger. And as soon as the beam touched it, the burger started floating in midair. And then, still floating there, the entire burger started coming apart. One part of it just vanished while the rest fell back into my hand. Do you realize what that means? It means the burger wasn't 100% beef. It must have had some pork or something mixed in. Something like 70% pork and 30% beef would be my guess. You can't trick me. How about that? <laughs> yeah! Of course. Indeed. So... What? That's fine. 
I... Because... It would seem... That doesn't matter. Just a second. So... Listen to me. So then... Hmm. Am I wrong? Correct. However, that's fine. Goodbye.
It's true. It's true. Um... Huh? Well... Uh, um... However...
well. In other words... Mm. So, um... That's right! Deal. Hmm. Hmm. Are serious. What? So then. Because... Hey, come on. Of course. What?
such ignorance. It would seem... Mm. Hmm. Okay. Problem. <laughs> How about that? Well, Just a second. So then... Just a second. Go 
That's right. So, um... Hey! Indeed. Master? So then... Anyway... Okay, 
Raven. I see. Indeed. That's right! Hmm. <laughs> Wait. Uh, um... then uh, um yep uh. huh?
Huh. Hmm. Announcement. It is now 10 p.m. As such, it is officially night time. Soon the doors to the dining hall will be locked, and entry at that point is strictly prohibited. Okay then, sweet dreams, everyone. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bug bite. Correct. Hey. Um... It's true.
Huh? Hey, come on. You know? You got it! Attention, attention! Please gather in the gym as soon as you possibly can. Quickly, 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 quickly! Ha <laughs> ha! 
Possible. Make me repeat myself. Come on. That's terrible! 
plate. Ugh. However, Sorry. Hmm. <clears throat> this is a school announcement. It is now 10 p.m. As such, it is officially nighttime. Soon the doors to the dining hall will be locked, and entry at that point is strictly prohibited. Okay then, sweet dreams everyone. Good night, sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Hm. No way! Don't make me repeat myself. Why? What? What is this? Calm down. Why? Anyway. But I don't, because I'm a bear! Good morning, everyone! It is now 7 a.m., and nighttime is officially over! Time to rise and shine! Get ready to greet another bee! Beautiful day! Uh, um... Ignorance.
stop talking. What is this? Naturally. Did you say? That's terrible. Hey. What the heck? However, In other words... But... Interesting. What the hell? You disgust me! You're... you're a monster! To say something like that? It should have been you. You should have been the one to die! What? <laughs> Interesting. That's right. Just a second. Hmm. Hey. I don't have time to play with you. Uh, um. You know? Announcement. It is now 10 p.m. As such, it is officially nighttime. 
Soon the doors to the dining hall will be locked. An entry at that point is strictly prohibited. Okay then. Sweet dreams, everyone. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. The secret origin story of Monokuma! Good morning, everyone! It is now 7 a.m., and nighttime is officially over! To get ready to greet another beautiful day!
ver. That's fine. In other words... <laughs> I wouldn't have expected such arrogance from you. Because... That's fine. And I... Anyway... Indeed. 
so... Shall we go? Indeed. Wrong. Right. Indeed. So, um... What? Hey. Certainly. Correct. Makoto. Hey. Now, if... So, uh... 
Um, I want to believe in myself. Leave it to me. Listen. That's right. Indeed. However, That's what we have to do. Correct. It's true. So then... So then... Makoto. Correct. Goodbye.
What? Why is that? It's true. However, so correct. Makoto. Indeed. Hey. In other words, indeed.
have been discovered! After a certain amount of time, which you may use however you like, the class trial will begin! Huh? Sakuras? Sakuras? Dead? She's... really dead? Just a second. <laughs> Interesting. Huh? It's your fault! <laughs> what is this? I will 
forgive you. That's fine. Listen. Listen to me.
In other words, Hey. That's fine. In other words, however, it's true. In other words, it's true. In other words, Indeed. It's true. That's fine. Naturally.
Because, I mean... Just a second. Hey. Correct. So... Why?
It's true. Wrong. Hey. Indeed. Come on. However, it's true. Certainly. In other words, Listen. So then... Listen to me.
Back to normal. Genocide Jack isn't around anymore. Don't even say her name. It makes me sick to my stomach. I was in such a good mood, too. Hey, I was hoping to talk to you about something. Is now a bad time? <laughs> What do you want? Actually... Don't look at me! Hey, come on! What?
It's certainly possible. What?
So in other words, Anyway... Anyway... That doesn't matter. So then...
so then. In other words, Listen. In other words, so then. So then... I knew it. In other words... Hey! Just a second. Hey. Whew. It's true. So... Hey. Correct. I see. Hey. It's true. It would seem... Indeed. Correct. It's true. Hey. So... 
however. me sleeping. Your investigation was just so boring, I couldn't stay awake. Should I do it? Is it okay? Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Okay, then let's begin the class trial. You know where to meet, right? Please go through the red door on the first floor of the school. <laughs> See you soon.
with a basic explanation of the class trial. So, your votes will determine the results. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. Now then, where to begin? We already know who did it. Whoa! Deja vu! The one who killed Sakura... is one of the people that hated her. Byakuya, Toko, or Hiro. It was one of you. <laughs> I had nothing to do with it. Yeah! I'd never kill someone, no way! I don't want to hear your stupid excuses. One of you! One of you killed Sakura! And what reason do you have for saying so? Because you all had a motive! You hated her! Is that it? That doesn't make any sense. That's the only reason you have for accusing us? No, that's wrong! Another reason you suspect them is because Sakura wanted to meet with them, right? Yeah, and that was right before she died. So there's no doubt about it. One of those three killed her. to meet with all three of them? There's no way that's not suspicious! One of you is absolutely guilty! I don't deny that she wanted to meet with us, but I never went to see her. I didn't either. Yeah, same here! I never saw her! No, it's wrong! Hero. When we were talking before, you dropped a small piece of paper, remember? It was white with red polka dots. What's that got to do with anything? Red polka dots? That's gotta be the wrapper from the candy I gave Sakura! No, it's... it's... um... Ever since we got into the warehouse, I totally monopolized that entire box of candy. So there's no way a single one of them was left in the warehouse. In that case, Hiro, where did you get that piece of candy? From Sakura! It's the only explanation! Uh, um... Well, I mean... Yeah, sure I got it from her, but... But she gave it to me forever ago! It doesn't have anything to do with what happened to her! When? When did she give it to you? The last time you saw Sakura was... when Hina had to go to the nurse's office, right? Yeah, so I must have got it some time before then. I got it! I'm not sure about that, Hira. Hina didn't actually give Sakura the candy till after she left the nurse's office. So if that was the last time you saw her, 
There's no reason you should have had that candy. Damn it! Uh, I mean, what I meant was, uh... Oh, that's right! I did meet up with her in the rec room! You got a problem with that? Why the sudden hostility? But we just talked! That's all! I didn't do anything! You gotta believe me! You're acting incredibly suspicious. You're acting incredibly suspicious! More hostility. It's not just normal hostility! You're the real culprit! I even have proof! Huh? Proof? What are you talking about? I'm talking about her shining message. At the scene of the crime, she had written out Toko in her own blood, right? It was her dying message. Just like what you guys were talking about with Sayaka. That's true. I saw it for myself. See? See? Toko did it! What are you saying? No way! I didn't do it! You just don't know when you're beat, do you? Hero, hold on. When did you see that dying message of hers? Huh? Well, when we found Ogre's body. Duh. But if you recall, Hina was very adamant about keeping you away from the scene of the crime. So it's hard to believe that's when you actually saw the message for yourself. I got it! Kyoko, you found the magazine on the magazine shelf, right? That's right. Looking through the shelf, I found the magazine with the dying message on it. I found it right there at the scene of the crime, after we'd started the investigation. If that's true, then what Hiro just said doesn't really make sense, does it? Doesn't make sense? What doesn't make sense? Everything I said makes perfect sense! I can tell you exactly when I found the dying message. When Ogre's body was discovered. And I can tell you when I found the dying message. It was only after the investigation had begun. I found the magazine tucked away on the magazine shelf. When I pulled it out, I saw her final words. What's your problem? What I said makes total sense. I can tell you exactly when I found the dying message. When Ogre's body was discovered. No, it's wrong. When Sakura's body was found, that magazine was sitting on the shelf nearby. That's where Kyoko found it, after we'd begun the investigation. And you weren't at the murder scene, so there's no way you could have seen it then. Tell us the truth, Hero. When did you see the message? Uh, hold on! You're focusing on the wrong part! Why does it matter when I saw it? All you gotta do is read the Vienna Sausage Ogre left us, and we know who the killer is! Toko! I don't even know where to begin with that one. He's just trying to confuse us. Actually... Can we even be sure Sakura wrote that message in the first place? Um, yeah? I think we can all agree Ogre wrote that message. 100%! Without a doubt, she wrote it! And this is me talking, so you know it's true! Show me the proof. I'm at least 30% right. 
the occult is bullcrap. Give it a rest. I'm at least 30% right. The occult is bullcrap. The end is nigh. Show me the proof. I'm at least 30% right. The occult is bullcrap. Give it a rest. I'm at least 30% right. The occult is bullcrap. The end is nigh. I'm at least 30% right. The occult is bullcrap. Give it a rest. The end is nigh. Can't hear you, can't hear you. Show me the proof. I'm at least 30% right. The occult is bullcrap. Show me the proof. This should prove it. I'm completely unconvinced that Sakura wrote that dying message. Because if you look at it, the message was almost certainly written using a finger. But both of her hands were completely free of blood. So what? So, who did write it? Hiro could very well have written it himself. That would explain how he knew about the message in the first place. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Ah! He admits it! I figured as much. But why would you write something like that? B because... Because I killed her! Please, just let me explain what happened. I got Ogre's note, and so I headed to the rec room right before noon, just like it said. You just did exactly as the note asked? What a fool. And when I got there... And that's all she said. After that, we just stood around in awkward silence. Suddenly, I heard her mutter something. As soon as I heard that, I just knew. I knew she was gonna try and kill me. She was gonna kill me and make her escape. So of course I freaked out, and then... I saw my only chance. I grabbed the Monokuma bottle from the shelf and smashed it across her head! I... I hit her from behind, before she had any idea what was happening. Then she just... went limp. I didn't see her move again after that. Once it was over, I pulled myself together. I realized if I didn't do something, I'd be caught and executed. So I wrote Toko's name in blood across a magazine on the table, and I ran away. I can't believe you! You're the worst! I hope you die! Well, that's what happened. Go ahead. Roast me, boil me, do whatever you want. You're not gonna get off that easy. It's death. Death for the one that killed Sakura. We're ready to vote now, right? We know who did it! No, I think there's more to Hiro's story. What are you talking about? What else could there be? There's one thing that Hiro's story just now doesn't explain. And until we figure that part out, we can't consider the case closed. true. Everything you just said. It doesn't explain why the magazine was hidden, does it? Huh? 
By the time the body was discovered, the magazine had been picked up and put on the shelf. Why would you take the time to write that message, then stick it somewhere we might not find it? Oh, well, uh, I didn't hide it. I'm sure I just left it sitting there on the table. Really? He's lying! He's gotta be lying! I don't see any reason he would lie now, after already confessing to the crime. Hey, he's not lying? Assuming he's telling the truth, someone else must have put the magazine back on the shelf. In other words, at least one other person was in the rec room both before and after the incident. I don't think there's any question about that. But then, who was it? If they went to the trouble of hiding the magazine, they must not have liked what was written on it. I got it! It had to be Toko, right? Look! Who else would want to hide the magazine other than the person whose name was written on it? Is he right, Toko? Did you really go to the rec room? Why would I have... Doesn't even matter! We already know who did it, right? Hero just admitted it! That's right. I killed her. No, you didn't. Who asked you? I don't doubt Hero attacked Sakura with the bottle. But that's not where this case ends. What do you mean? What he means is that Hero isn't the killer. You can't be serious! That's just... I don't believe it! Hero, tell us what happened one more time. If we go through it once more, it should become clear he's not Sakura's killer. Um, so... what do you want me to do? Just tell us what happened one more time when you attacked Sakura. I don't really see why, but... okay. I didn't want to, but I did it. I grabbed a Monokuma bottle from the shelf nearby, and I hit Ogre from behind before she could do anything. You hit her from behind, and you only hit her once, is that right? Yeah, just once. No, that's wrong! If Sakura died from Hiro's single blow, that doesn't explain why she had two head wounds. Huh? Two? That's right. She had two separate wounds on her head. And remember, this girl examines dead bodies as a hobby. Personally, I'm inclined to believe her. But I only hit her once. How could she have two wounds? Two wounds means she was struck twice. What's more, both attacks must have come from a Monokuma bottle. Hold on! How can you know that just from some cuts on her head? She was attacked twice with two Monokuma bottles? It's not just because of her head wounds. It's also because of the Monokuma bottles themselves. There's something very suspicious about those bottles. Once you understand that point, you'll understand why two separate Monokuma bottles must have been used. Think back. After the incident, there were four Monokuma bottles left on the shelf, right? And we found pieces of a bottle on the ground, along with the chest piece it had inside. That was the bottle Hiro hit Sakura with, right? For now, just note that there were four intact bottles and one broken bottle. But originally, there were six bottles in total, meaning one has gone missing. 
But how can you know for sure there were six bottles? That's easy. If you look at what the bottles all had in common, it should become clear. Pieces. Inside each bottle, there was a Monokuma figure holding a different chess piece. King, Rook, Bishop, Pawn. I definitely remember seeing each of those. And the piece that was inside the broken bottle we found was... The Knight, if I remember. So, what's that matter? I guess you don't know too much about chess, do you? Then let me explain. In chess, there are six different pieces. The king, the queen, the rook, knight, bishop, and pawn. What was left intact at the crime scene were the king, rook, bishop, and pawn. Just those four. And on the ground was the knight. Oh! So the queen is missing. So we only have evidence for five bottles at the scene, while one apparently went missing. What does chess have to do with anything? Yeah, Shogi is way better. Yeah. Wait, no, that's not what I mean. So let's say a bottle did go missing. There's still no evidence that has anything to do with this case. That bottle could have disappeared any time before the murder. No. It's clear that the missing bottle is connected to this case. How is it clear? Think about what state the missing bottle must have been in. Maybe then you'll understand. I got it! The bottle must have been broken. Sure. Because there was evidence at the scene that supports it. Huh? That's right. We found evidence that shows there was more than just one broken bottle at the scene. And what is this evidence? Experiment. We compared the weight of the broken bottle pieces at the scene to one of the unbroken bottles. And what we found was that the collection of pieces was heavy. And the reason for that is... There was actually more than one bottle's worth of shattered glass. So from this, we can surmise that Two bottles were actually broken at the scene of the crime. But someone did their best to clean up the pieces of one of the bottles, along with the figure inside. But when they did, they must have left behind a few too many pieces. Which is only natural. They certainly had no way to measure the exact right number of pieces to remove. But why would they have to try and get rid of it like that anyway? because of what it would reveal about the case. I got it! The bottle that was removed from the scene was used the second time Sakura was attacked. 
the second wound on Sakura's head came from that second bottle. Given all the evidence, this is the only possible conclusion. The killer wanted to make it look like there was only one attack, so they had to get rid of their evidence. From there, we can conclude that it wasn't Hiro who delivered that second blow. Wouldn't you agree, Toko? And there's the matter of the magazine. You must have been in the rec room when the incident took place. Wait, wait. I admit, maybe there was a second attack, but, but there's no evidence I had anything to, to do with it. No way! You killed her! I'm sure of it! Shut up! Until two seconds ago, you were claiming you killed her! I'm not afraid to admit when I'm wrong. That's just the kind of guy I am. Plus, I just remembered something that proves it. Okay, fine. Let's hear it. It was right after I got Ogre's note. I was kind of nervous about it, so I went to the rec room early. You know, to stake it out or whatever. So I was waiting there, and that's when I saw her. I saw Toko go into the rec room. Pretty soon, Ogre showed up, and she went into the rec room. I assumed Toko was still in there, so I figured everything would be okay. That's why I headed in. But when I got inside, Ogre was all alone. Toko had disappeared. And you just now decided to share that with us? After the shock of thinking I'd killed someone, I forgot all about it. Could someone tighten the screws on his brain? I think they've come loose. So, Toko, where the heck did you disappear to? You don't know what you're talking about. I never went in the rec room. I'm sure she didn't disappear, but maybe she found somewhere to hide. What? Hiding in the rec room? Don't be ridiculous. Whoa. Why are you all getting up on me? You're all nothing but... Roman! Someone left a handprint behind on the inside of the locker. They must have been hiding in there and put their hand on the wall without thinking. Does this handprint look familiar, Toko? No, it doesn't. Okay then, let's just compare it to your hand, shall we? That'll clear everything up, right? Yeah! Stop 
wasting my time. Just tell us the truth. Okay, it's my handprint. Dang, she just straight up admitted it. Then you killed Sakura! No, I swear, there's no way! Out with it. I probably did kill her. Straight up again? Wait, what do you mean, probably? Give us the details, Toko. What happened between you and Sakura? Talk. Now. After I read Sakura's note, I decided to go there early, so I went into the rec room. I didn't know what she might do if I didn't go, but I was too scared to face her head on. So I figured I'd just sneak in first and hide in the locker. Then, did you see what happened? Did you see me hit her? Yeah, and I saw you write my name. I saw you forge her dying message. Well, that's awkward. So after he left, I jumped out of the locker and put the magazine back on the shelf. But when you did, you put it back upside down. I didn't mean to. I was in a hurry. Imbeciles, all of you. Forget all that. Why did you attack Sakura? After I put the magazine back, I heard a sound behind me like a, like a monster growling. And when I turned around... There was Sakura, covered in blood and staring right at me! When I saw all that blood, I fainted right there in front of the magazines. I don't remember what happened after that. If you want to know more, you'll have to ask her. Ha ha! Guess who's back! It was your fault after all! My fault! Master's fault! When our faults combine, they soar to even greater heights! Just answer the question. Did you kill Sakura? Well, to be honest, Miss Morose and me don't actually share our memories. So I can't really say what was going on. But I was just minding my own business, sleeping peacefully when someone shook me away. Was it a prince paying me a visit? I wonder. So I opened my eyes to see. Splatter everywhere! I was not prepared for that. And, well, I guess it took me by surprise. I got so startled, I smacked her with the first thing I could find! Which I guess was a bottle. Sakura was just worried about you, and you... You're terrible! No, she's terrible! Thanks to her, I murdered someone who wasn't an adorable boy for the first time ever! And when it was all over, you collected the pieces of the bottle to get rid of the evidence, didn't you? I wasn't about to die for some woman! If I'm gonna go down, I want it to be for killing Master! <gasps> Just go away and die your meaningless death alone. Don't drag me into it. But I just can't catch a break, you know? Fate's got it out for me. Because normally, Sakura should have been able to dodge my attack, no problem! Even as strong as she is, she must have still been reeling from Hero's attack. Hey, come on! That's... you know... But anyway, I'm not the one that killed Ogre! So that's good! Well then, that's that. Let's start the vote. What's wrong? Come on, everyone, we're ready to vote, right? Let's do this. No, not quite yet. Huh? Not yet? Why not yet? Don't you think there was something odd about Toko's story? I mean, you had to have noticed. Odd? Huh? Hero's attack, and then Toko's, but that still wasn't the end of it. Tell us your story one more time. Tell us what happened after you fainted. Then even this gaggle of idiots should understand what I'm talking about. You wish it my command, darling!
carefully. And all of a sudden, Sakura was right there in front of me. I remember waking up right in front of the magazine shelf. You were taken by surprise when you saw Ogre covered in blood. So you smashed her head in with the Monokuma bottle? You got it! I smashed her good! And where did the attack take place? Right where I woke up! I killed her there in front of the shelf! No, that's wrong! We found Sakura sitting upright in a chair. If the blow by the shelf was the cause of death, there's no explanation why she was in that chair. So, you finally noticed. That's just another lie from a bloodthirsty serial killer. Are you sure you didn't attack her while she was sitting in the chair? No, I'm sure she's telling the truth. Anyone who saw the murder scene should think the same way. Sakura was definitely attacked in front of the shelf. The blood stained by the magazines is proof of that. And she must have moved the body after she killed her, right? All to make it look like I did it. Because when I hit her, she was sitting in the chair. Hey, come on now, look at me. I can't carry anything heavier than my own scissors. There's no way I could move a muscle-bound heavyweight like that. Then, then what's the deal? Well... Are you still convinced the case has come to an end? But, but... Plus, the biggest mystery of all, the locked room, still has yet to be explained. Until we take care of that, we can't say this case has been properly settled. Oh, that part's easy! After she killed Sakura, Toko just hid in the locker again. Oh, so she just hid in there till everyone showed up and opened the door? And while everything was all confused and hectic, she just snuck out of the locker into the group. No, I don't think that's possible. I got it! Even before we open the door to the rec room, Tina and I both got to look inside. And at that point, the locker was already open. So obviously, Toko couldn't have been hiding in there. Okay then, where was she hiding? I don't know! What's this whole locked room thing about anyway? How did you not know? You killed her! I think the fact that I don't know proves I didn't Thank you very much. You're lying! No, she's not. I've been saying all along, there's still more to this case. But if Genocide Jill didn't do it, that means Ogre didn't die from the shot to the head! And? Well, well I can't imagine what else could have killed her. That's because you're overlooking vital information. that killed Ogre. If it wasn't from Genocide Jill's attack, then what was it? There's no other possible cause. What killed Sakura? I can't think of anything other than the shot to a... No, that's wrong. According to the Monokuma file, Sakura had vomited blood. I think we can assume there's a chance this was related to her cause of death. In fact, there was even a trace of blood left around her mouth. Well, I mean, maybe when she got hit with the bottles, she cut the inside of her mouth. If that's all it was, the file wouldn't have specified vomited blood. Not to mention, I didn't find any cuts inside her mouth. You even checked in there? God, you really are into dead bodies! 
No, I'm not into dead bodies. What I'm into is solving mysteries. But if there wasn't a cut or anything, then what made her vomit blood? Some sort of reaction within her body, most likely. Sakura was poisoned. Poisoned? That's right. This is the conclusion I've arrived at, and so there can be no mistake. <laughs> You're making me go all weak in the knees! She was poisoned? It isn't possible! Is it really so hard to believe? Then let me explain exactly how the culprit was able to poison her. You can... explain it? Of course, if you don't mind. Everyone, quiet! Shut up and listen to Master! But you're the only one talking. The key to unlocking this mystery was hiding in the chem lab up on the fourth floor. Huh? Not in the rec room? Then I could have found it all along! You never would have, since you gave up on the search the moment you were barred from the crime scene. Well, yeah, good point. There's a big shelving unit in the chem lab that houses a variety of mixtures and chemicals. And that's where I found this. Is that the poison? It's not an especially powerful poison, but it'll still kill you if you drink an entire bottle. But the specific properties don't matter. What does matter is where I found it. Where'd you find it? The shelf is divided up into three sections, A, B, and C. In section A, dietary supplements, in B, reagents, and in C, a variety of lethal chemicals. And that's where the poison came from? Section C? Well, that's the question, isn't it? I got it! The poison was actually in Section A, wasn't it? Huh? You just said that Section A was for supplements or whatever. Strange, isn't it? Why would there be a bottle of poison mixed in with all those nutritional additives? Yeah, so? Why? Because the culprit switched it out, that's why. What do you mean? I mean... this. certainly makes me want to spit it out. What's so high quality about this stuff? Huh? What are you talking about? I'm talking about the protein, of course. Protein? Can I see that bottle for a second? Oh, uh, sure. Do whatever you like. This is... It's protein powder. Correct. That wasn't poison in the bottle, but harmless protein powder. Which makes one wonder... The poison that should have been in that bottle, where did it go?
Now I understand. The poison must have been poured into the protein can. If the protein's in the poison bottle, it seems only logical to assume the reverse is true, right? Absolutely. The contents of each container were switched. So the protein was in the bottle of poison, and the poison was in the protein can. Once you accept that, it becomes obvious how the culprit was able to get Sakura to drink the poison. Holy crap! All they had to do was hand her something there at the scene, and she was happy to drink the poison herself. I got it! You're saying they gave her a protein drink, right? A protein drink which actually contained a deadly poison. What? That's all it took to kill Sakura. That is the true cause of death. You know, I do remember Ogre saying that protein stuff was good for all kinds of aches and pains. So maybe she took it to try and help with the whole bleeding head wound thing. But what was offered to her instead was a bottle full of poison. And I already know exactly who swapped the mixtures. For real? Who was it? Evidence revealing who replaced the two materials was left in the chem lab for anyone to see. I got it! The footprints left behind in front of the shelf. That's the evidence you're talking about, isn't it? I visited the chem lab this morning, and there were definitely no footprints there at that point. They must have appeared around the time of the murder, which leaves no doubt that they're connected. What's more, the footprints were in front of Section A, where I found the bottle meant for the poison. The culprit must have gone to Section A to swap the poison and protein, leaving their footprints behind. And given how clear the prints were, figuring out who they belong to will pose no problem. All we have to do is check everyone's footprints right now. Then we'll see who... It was me. The footprints. They're mine. Uh, Hina? If you're all gonna find out anyway, I'd rather you hear it straight from me, you know? Then, Ogre's killer was... Yep. I did it! I killed Sakura! Just as I suspected. The footprints were made by a pair of sneakers. There was no mistaking it. And the only people here who wear sneakers are... I got it! Me and Hina are the only ones. Oh, so Byaku, that explains why you... If the footprints didn't belong to Makoto, that left only one other possibility. Just Nina. Plus, Nina's been acting strange ever since the trial began. You were in an awful rush to get to the vote, weren't you? This whole time, you've been focused on pinning the crime on someone else, haven't you? I... I can't believe it. What about it can't you believe? Well, it's just... the two of them were so close. That's likely exactly why it turned out this way. Because they were so close, Sakura didn't think twice about it when Hina handed her the concoction. Hina used that trust to kill her. 
She deceived the victim, and she tried to deceive all of us. I have to say, Hina, coming from you, this was a particularly nasty little scheme. Is it true? Did you really kill Sakura? And if you did, why? Why would you do that? I found her. There in the rec room. She was hurt. She asked me to bring her that protein drink. But when I went to get the powder from the chem lab, it just occurred to me all of a sudden. Now's my chance to kill her. That's what you thought, right? That's when you switched out the protein powder, and that's when you gave her the poisoned mixture. And then, she downed it, all at once. And, and then... Hold it! I'm not convinced. You're not about to claim she wouldn't kill a close friend, are you? You still don't get it, do you? The game we're playing here isn't so kind. Honey words like friendship don't matter here. What matters is outwitting the opponent, defeating them. Not a person alive would sacrifice themselves for another. In the end, we're all in it for ourselves. Just like how this girl sacrificed Sakura to save herself. You say that, but I'm still not convinced. <sighs> how many times do you plan to repeat yourself? Don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying it because of some misguided sentimentalism. But there's still that one unsolved mystery, and I'm not convinced. Are you talking about the locked room problem? Hina, if you really are the killer, explain it. How did you create that locked room? Well... That doesn't matter! Just because I'm guilty, that means I have to tell you everything? No, it doesn't. But the fact that you won't tell us concerns me. Surely you're not... Do you honestly think Hina didn't actually kill her? And if I do? Impossible. She switched out the mixtures. She's the culprit. There's no way you can doubt this. Are you sure about that? Even ignoring the fact that I don't want to believe it, it just doesn't fit. What doesn't fit? I mean... Why would someone leave such a clear clue like a footprint? It's too... obvious. Too easy. He's right. It makes it look like you wanted people to suspect you. That... that was... I was just... nervous. So... I didn't notice I'd left a footprint. You didn't notice? That's just how it was. What can I do? Listen, Hina. Could you go into a bit more detail? Tell us more about when you switched the poison and the protein. But how come? That doesn't matter. Hina, please. I'd like to know too. F fine. Waste your time if you like. It's clear that Hina is the culprit. There's nobody else to suspect. Nobody else could have possibly done it. Go ahead, Hina. Start from the moment you arrived at the chem lab. Well... Right away, I went to Section C and got the poison. And is that when you spilled the powder in front of that part of the shelf? Yeah. When I opened the bottle, I dropped it like an idiot. I see. Okay then, go on. So then I moved to Section A and got the protein powder, and that's where I switched them. Once I was done with that, I took the protein can that had the poison in it and left the room. But I accidentally put the bottle filled with protein powder back on the wrong shelf. And because of that, everything I did got found out. And that's it. That story you just told. First you went to Section C to get the poison, then moved to Section A to get the protein, right? Meaning you went from Section C to Section A. Do I have that correct? Y yeah
Can you repeat that series of events one more time? What's wrong with you, Big Mac? You're being awfully pushy. It's the same thing no matter how many times you hear it. How long until you're satisfied? First, I went to Section C. That's when I grabbed the poison. And you spilled some of the powder on the ground in front of the shelf. Yeah. When I grabbed the bottle, I dropped it. Okay, and then? I moved from section C to section C. No, that's wrong! You said you went to get the poison from section C. And that's where you spilled the powder, right? Yeah. What about it? And after that, you said you moved from Section C to Section A to get the protein. But the footprints left at the scene were not moving from Section C to Section A. That contradicts what you just said. Look. Then maybe she moved in some weird direction on purpose to disguise her movements? No, that can't be it. Remember what Hina just said? What the? Hina, what's the meaning of this? Uh, um, well... You lied to us, plain and simple. If you look at the footprints, your movements in the chem lab are obvious. The powder had already been spilled when you came in, and you went straight to Section A. So you never went to Section C. Whatever you did there, it only involved Section A. Well, let me see. What, what the? What the hell? What's going on here? And the footprints aren't the only problem with her account. What? Before I explain that part, I'd like to submit some new evidence. New evidence? Impossible, there can't be. Are you sure? After all, you're the one that gave it to me. I did? It was hidden inside the bottle of poison you gave me. I'm amazed you of all people would miss such a vital clue. A truly grave oversight. Just say it already! What is it you think you found? I found this. It had sunk to the bottom of the bottle. And the hidden clue was exposed, thanks to you ingesting the powder. I couldn't have solved the mystery without you. So, thank you for that. But, but, what is it? Oh, you still don't realize? Well then, Makoto, why don't you explain it? Huh? Me? Fine. If you really do know, explain the meaning of that shard of glass. I got it! It's part of the window from the rec room door, right? The window? The window we broke to get in was light blue, just like that. So I think that must be it. You're right, it must be. Of course, that leads to another question. How did a shard of glass from the window get inside this bottle of poison? What's so strange about that? What's strange is that, according to what Hina told us... I got it! The bottle of poison was left on the shelf in the chem lab. That is what you said, right, Hina? Uh, uh... And yet... Somehow, a piece of glass from the rec room window made its way into the bottle. Everything Hina told us was a lie? In reality, that bottle of poison most definitely found its way to the rec room. 
It was there at least until the window got broken. In other words, when the locked room was unlocked. There's no other way to explain the presence of that glass in that bottle. And then, once the room was opened, the bottle somehow got moved back to the shelf in the chem lab. Meanwhile, the protein can we found at the crime scene was planted there. That had to be after the locked room was opened. In other words, after Sakura died. Wait, hold on. You're moving too fast. I'll grant you, the bottle of poison may well have been in the rec room when it was locked. But how can you say the protein can was put there after the room was unlocked? We already know she was given the protein can with the poison inside, right? If that can wasn't there when she died, how did she get poisoned? You're right. We do need to explain that. But before we do, there's something I'd like to confirm with everyone here. Huh? It has to do with the protein can. After Sakura's body was discovered, did anyone move it or trip over it or anything like that? What are you talking about? Is this some kind of loaded question? Not at all. Just answer to the best of your ability. Well, no, not that I remember. Yeah, me either. Not me. Me either. Okay then, that settles it. That proves that the protein can found its way to the murder scene after the room was opened. Oh come on! How can you say that? How can you know what I don't know? When it comes to that protein can, there's not a doubt in my mind. Until the locked room was unlocked, it absolutely was not in there. So you're saying... someone planted it there after we got the door open? No. No, that's impossible! It, it had to have been in there the whole time! It had to be! It was in there before the wreck leak! No, that's wrong! You remember how there was broken glass scattered all around the room, right? Of course. It came from the window you broke to get in. What about it? Well, those pieces weren't just scattered around the protein can. We also found pieces underneath the can. What? And this proves it. It shows that the can must have been put down on the floor after the window was broken. So it had to be after we got into the room. I... I see. So that's your explanation. Kyoko, earlier when you asked if anyone had moved the can or tripped over it... If that were the case, that would explain the can being on top of the glass. So you asked everyone about it to eliminate that possibility right out of the gate. And that's made everything clear, hasn't it? As long as it was a locked room, it only contained the bottle of poison and not the protein can. But once the room was opened up, they were switched. And as a result, the protein can wound up in the rec room and the bottle of poison returned to the chem lab. If that's all true, then... Why did Sakura drink the poison? I thought we all agreed she was tricked into drinking it because of the protein can. No, that's not why. The only explanation is she drank it from its original bottle, knowing exactly what it was. Precisely. She was alone in a locked room. All she had was the poison. What other possibility is there? You're saying she drank it, knowing what it was? Such a ridiculous fiction is... Exactly what happened. Then tell us already! Er, sorry. Please, tell us. Before we get to that, we need to clarify one other thing. We need to establish who exactly got the poison from the chem lab and took it to the rec room. It was Hina, right? 
She took it and gave it to Ogre. What do you think, Makoto? I got it! I think it was Sakura herself. Huh? So Sakura, who was apparently murdered, just poisoned herself? What are you talking about? There's no way! On the contrary, we know for a fact she went to the chem lab, right to the section full of poisons. You're lying! Stop lying! Why? Why would you lie like that? You're a liar! What are you saying? Wrong! You're wrong! I'm telling you, I did it! Stop talking! You're a liar! Wrong! You're wrong! Wrong! You're wrong! I hate you! You're a liar! What are you saying? Wrong! You're wrong! I'm telling you, I did it! Stop talking! You're a liar! Wrong! You're wrong! Wrong! You're wrong! I hate you! Do you have any kind of proof, Sakura? This should prove it! Hina, did you know that Sakura's foot had a certain yellow powder stuck to it? It did? It did. The same yellow powder that had been spilled by the shelf in the chem lab. That powder was yellow, wasn't it? So the powder we found on Sakura, what else could it be but the powder from the chem lab? Wait, wait, wait. So, what was that powder doing on Ogre's foot? And it was only on her instep, right? Sakura must have been standing right there where the powder was spilled. So the person who spilled the powder by the shelf wasn't Hina, but Sakura. Uh. And when Sakura dropped the bottle, she dropped it away from where she was actually standing. Which is how she was able to avoid getting it all over herself. But the powder still got scattered around, and some of it must have wound up on her instep. Is there any problem with my thinking? But why did Sakura pay a visit to Section C in the first place? The only explanation is that she was looking for poison. After all, that's all that section contains. No! It was me! I... The poison! Because... Because... Because I killed her! No. You didn't kill her. The one who killed Sakura was Sakura herself. <laughs> what? The killer was Sakura? Wait, so you're saying it was suicide? I don't believe it. I don't believe it any more than I believe I can fly. I can't believe it either. Or rather, I don't want to believe it. But when you really think about it, Everything matches up. Sakura went and got the poison. She barricaded herself in a room, and she drank it. All so she could end her own life. And that explains why we couldn't solve the mystery of the locked room. I got it! 
The locked room mystery was created by Sakura. I'm sure she locked herself in so nobody could stop her from doing what she did. She sat there, drank the poison, and breathed her last breath. And the empty bottle of poison rolled around the locked room until we came and opened it. At that point, someone grabbed the bottle and snuck it out of the room. And that was you, wasn't it, Hina? You did it to throw off the investigation, didn't you? When we found her body, you stayed right there near the door. Because you already knew Sakura was dead. And because the bottle of poison had rolled near the doorway. That's when you picked up the bottle, right? I was too shocked to notice anything, and Kyoko was busy checking the bottle. And the more I think about it, the more I realize how unusual your actions were. You said you were going to go get everyone else. But your real intention was to go to the chem lab and switch out the containers, wasn't it? Once you were at the chem lab, you headed straight to the section where the protein powder was kept. There, you took the powder and poured it into the bottle of poison you grabbed from the rec room. When you left the lab, all you had was the empty protein can. Thinking about it like that, the footprints make perfect sense. When you were done, you gathered everyone together. And once you were back in the rec room, While everyone else was focused on Sakura, you quietly placed the can on the ground. Honestly, you should have noticed. You should have been the first one to run up to Sakura's lifeless body. The Hina I know never would have left her side in a situation like that. So, Sakura committed suicide. In order to hide this fact, Hina undertook a series of actions to undermine the investigation. As long as you could disguise the truth, you didn't care if we blamed you for her death. That's why you didn't bother to get rid of such obvious evidence, right? The footprints in the powder and the bottle of poison? Vital pieces of evidence, and yet... So you're saying Hina consciously deceived us to make it look like she killed Sakura? No! No, 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 no! I killed her! I did it! That's enough, Hina. It's over. It's not! Nothing's over! It is. Actually, no. You're right. We have to end this properly.
here's exactly what happened. This case began when Sakura asked a number of people to meet her in the rec room. Specifically, those people were Hiro, Toko, and Byakuya. But one of them headed out a bit earlier than the others, Toko. She got there one step ahead of everyone else and looked around for a good hiding spot. And she found it. She crawled into the locker to get out of sight. Then, from inside the locker, she saw Sakura enter the room. Next to arrive was Hiro. When he got there, he mistakenly thought Sakura was going to try to kill him, so he panicked. Without thinking, he grabbed a nearby Monokuma bot and attacked Sakura with it. Thinking he'd killed her, he hastily began covering up his crime. He took a magazine from the table and forged a dying message from Sakura. To that end, he wrote down a name. Toko. By writing her name, he was hoping to pin the murder on her. But of course, Toko had witnessed the whole thing. So as soon as the coast was clear, she jumped out of the locker and hid the magazine on the shelf with all the others. But in her rush, she made one little mistake. She put the magazine back upside down. Soon after, she watched as Sakura slowly opened her eyes. She also saw the blood dripping off Sakura's head and fainted. This caused her personality to switch back over to Genocide Jack. When she woke back up, her second personality also saw the blood-soaked Sakura, and she freaked out. And just like Hiro, she grabbed another Monokuma bottle and attacked her. This explains why there were two wounds on Sakura's head. Assuming Sakura really was dead this time, she set about disposing of the evidence. She gathered up the broken Monokuma bottle shards and the queen chest piece. And that explains how Sakura was attacked twice with the same type of weapon. But even after those two blows, she was still alive. So then, what was Sakura's actual cause of death? It was the poison that Sakura herself got from the chem lab. She turned the rec room into a true locked room scenario and then drank the deadly mixture. And there, she took her final breath. Later on, the rest of us discovered that her body was in there. We had to smash the door's window to get inside. But someone already knew what had happened knew that she had committed suicide. And that same someone quietly snatched the bottle of poison from off the ground. And while nobody was looking, replaced it with an empty protein can. They did all this specifically to place all the suspicion on themselves in an attempt to guide the trial to a false conclusion. And the one who went to all that effort? It's you, Hina. 
That's the full truth of the case. <laughs> Sakura took her own life, and you claim to be the killer to hide that fact. Isn't that right? That's what happened? But, Makoto, how did you... How did you manage to... How were you able to uncover the truth that even I couldn't discern? Huh? Oh, well, I mean... You still haven't realized? We don't all act according to calculations and cost-benefit diagrams. That's what makes us so complicated. That's what you don't understand. And that's why you couldn't solve this case. <laughs> See? Didn't I tell you? When you dismiss other people's feelings, it'll always come back to bite you in the end. Okay, okay. I think we can all agree you made your point. Did you guys forget already? You still haven't voted yet. Oh yeah, that's right. You seriously forgot? <sighs> I can feel my energy draining out of me. Well, whatever. You don't really have a choice anyway. You just gotta do it. Maybe you don't want to, but please grab your lever and cast your vote! So, who will be chosen as the blacken? Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? did you say? Come on! What are you thinking? Don't be mean! What is this? to die. What? 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 What?
No forgiveness! I can't forgive this! Thank you. 
words. Yes, indeed! What the heck? Of course! Yep! Too bad! It's true! Well now, well now, well now, well now. Gonna do. Hey, hey. But hold on. <sighs> Enough already. As you know, I've been giving information to the one who's imprisoned you here. You see, the Mastermind took control of my family's dojo and demanded I become their tool. I couldn't let it be destroyed under my watch. So even if it meant my own life, I had to protect it. That's how I saw things. And what the Mastermind wanted from me was nothing less than murder. However, as I lived here with all of you, as I lived here with Hina, my resolve began to weaken. I cannot betray those who would call me their friend. I've made a decision. I will no longer retreat, no longer compromise, no longer regret. I've made my decision. I'm going to resist you. <laughs> Of course, I understand if you all hate me. All of this is because of my own weakness. So 
So this is my atonement for betraying you. That's what I had in mind. My own situation has started having an effect on more people than just me. Which is exactly what the Mastermind wanted when they revealed my betrayal. Of course, I'm still responsible for that as well. But I've decided the one I'm going to kill is myself. If it can save you, then sacrificing my own life could have no greater meaning. Whatever you think of me, please know that you are all my most treasured friends. However... <laughs> Finally, Hina, I want to apologize to you especially. I never saw you as my enemy. You were only ever my friend, who I wanted to help as much as possible. Hina, whatever it takes, survive. Survive along with everyone else. No matter what, just survive. What are you gonna do? Uh oh! <laughs> Too bad! <laughs> What? 
you know? Well? You guys?
What's the matter? Just as I thought. Actually... What are you thinking? Yep. Hina. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yo! But... Yes. Uh, um... Not possible. <sighs> Stop talking. Hmm. <clears throat> As such, it is officially night time. Soon the doors to the dining hall will be locked, and entry at that point is strictly prohibited. Okay then, sweet dreams everyone. Good night, sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Kyoko? Yes, it's me. Huh? Kyoko? I said yes. So Kyoko's here. Wait, what? It's true.
correct. Lakota. So... Goodbye. Just a second. <laughs> you too? You guys? It's true. Hey. Shall we go? Goodbye. Mukuro Ikusaba. <gasps> Mukuro Ikusaba. The 16th student lying hidden somewhere in this school. The one they call the ultimate despair. Watch out for her.
Mukuro Ikusaba. <gasps> Mukuro Ikusaba. The 16th student, lying hidden somewhere in this school. The one they call the ultimate despair. Watch out for her. Let's go.
Right. Mikuro Ikusaba, the 16th student lying hidden somewhere in this school. 
the one they call the ultimate despair. Watch out for her. So then... Hey. Indeed. Yeah. 
So, in other words... It can't be... other words. It's all clear now. Hey! So then...
It's true. Naturally. Well... What? Very suspicious. 
ambitious. How about that? Wrong. What the heck? So... Hmm. <laughs> 
It can't be. Because... So, um... Uh, um... However... What the heck? What? <laughs> Stop talking. <laughs> Come on.
Okay. Correct. So then... Indeed. So... So... However, correct. Indeed. That's right. Indeed. Correct. Nukuro Ikusaba, the 16th student, lying hidden somewhere in this school. The one they call the ultimate despair. Watch out for her. Indeed. In other words... Wrong. Anyway... So... Is that right? Hey!
thể. Why is that? Spend all your time trying to avoid danger. You'll never move forward. Hey. It's true. However... Hey. Indeed. Hey. Indeed. Well... So then, Makoto. Goodbye. Monokuma appears! Hey! Hey! Most suspicious.
You need something? Brought to you by Spike Junsoft Company Limited. to recommend it to your friends, too! Good morning, everyone! It is now 7 a.m., and nighttime is officially over! Time to rise and shine! Get ready to greet another beautiful day!
Very strange. You know? What's this?
I under... understand. I understand. I understand. I should understand everything. My goal isn't to get out of here. It's to stay here. Hope. This is all for hope. And that's why I have to stay. I have to stay here. My dream just now... What? So strange. Huh? Consider that pretty damn abnormal. Good morning, everyone. It is now 7 a.m. and nighttime is officially over. Time to rise and shine. Get ready to greet another beautiful day.
Hey, Makoto. Hey, Makoto! What? What does it look like? We're dismantling it to see what makes it tick. Dismantling? But I mean, that's Monokuma you're messing with, right? Yeah, that's right. She's not even phased. So, in other words... <laughs> hmm. 
Clear now. Naturally. What? What the heck? Such ignorance. Come on. It's all clear now.
So in other words... Hey! What? I mean... What the heck? Okay... Actually... Hmm... Clear now. What? What? Naturally. <laughs> what? all your time trying to avoid danger, you'll never move forward. Hey. Uh, um... possible.
you say? Come <laughs> on. 
The 16th student, lying hidden somewhere in this school. The one they call the ultimate despair. Watch out for her. So, in other words...
see. So that's it. It's all clear now. Such ignorance. I'm telling you, 
on you. Come on. Actually,
What? Of course! B. A 
body has been discovered. After a certain amount of time, which you may use however you like, the class trial will begin. <laughs> it's the Monokuma file! Heart pounding excitement! I can't wait! I can't wait! Stop talking. What the heck? Quiet. Stop talking.
In other words, in other words, naturally.
serious. All clear now. What? Just give up.
let's go. Certainly possible.
I see. Naturally. Saba, the 16th student lying hidden somewhere in this school. The one they call the ultimate despair. Watch out for her. Ignorance.
It's certainly possible. Hmm. What? It's all clear now. Hmm. So in other words, Let's go. I see. Very strange. Very strange. Why? Hmm. What? Let's go. Hmm.
What? Time is utterly silent, and yet it constantly assaults us, organisms, the earth, natural phenomena. It damages us little by little until the end. You should really think about that. Anyway, it's time to begin the class trial. So, please meet up in the usual spot. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> That's right. Hmm. words. Oh. 
Um. But. That's right. Wrong. In other words, just a second, Makoto. It would seem. Goodbye. begin with a basic explanation of the class trial. So, your votes will determine the results. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. Okay, well, I'll leave the rest up to you. Well then, let's discuss the specifics of the victim. First, we need to clarify who exactly the unidentified victim is. It's Kyoko! There's no other explanation! But Kyoko's standing right there. No! That's a ghost! But... she has legs and stuff. Well, that's just because... she's like the latest evolution in ghost technology! There's a limit to how much ridiculousness I can tolerate. Um, okay. So I just have to prove that the corpse isn't Kyoko, right? Then let's compare Kyoko's traits to the traits of the dead body. Her traits? I got it! I'm talking about her gloves. They'll give us some insight into the mystery. I'm sure of it. In that case, I think it would be helpful if someone explained why she actually wears those gloves. And would you happen to know the answer? In fact, Monokuma told me. 
Apparently, you have scars on your hands you don't want anyone to see. Oh! You know, now that I think about it, the corpse wasn't wearing any gloves, right? It probably just got burnt up in the explosion. I'm not convinced. The ghost is just trying to fool us all. No, there's no way the corpse was wearing gloves. Whoever it was, they were wearing fake nails, remember? I imagine trying to wear gloves over nails like that would have been a pretty big pain. Besides, Kyoko wears gloves to hide her hands, right? It'd be pretty weird for someone who's self-conscious about their hands to wear fake nails, don't you think? Jeez, man, you don't know women, huh? They're complicated like that. If anyone doesn't know women, it's you. Well, Kyoko, any thoughts? These gloves were custom made to the size of my hands to make sure they don't interfere with my daily life. If I wore fake nails, the gloves wouldn't fit properly. Then that's that. The dead body doesn't belong to Kyoko. Which should have been obvious since she's standing right here. Okay, so then, who's the real victim? First, we need to figure that out. That's the first thing I said. You're the one who's been dragging us around in circles. <laughs> Kyoko really is still alive. Then who died? There's gotta be some way to figure it out. I don't think so. The face was scorched beyond recognition. And there wasn't any description in the Monokuma file. Well, if we can't identify the body... No, that's wrong! There was one clue left behind that we can use to identify the body. What? For real? If you're lying, you'll die a cruel and unusual death! Cruel and unusual death? This I gotta see! She's just being stupid. Ignore them, Makoto. Tell us what you're talking about. The key to figuring out who it was is the tattoo on the back of her hand. Well, yeah. The design's pretty strange, huh? Is this... a dog? Her master must have made her get it. To be like, you're my bitch! Seriously? It really did something that humiliating? No, that's not it. The identity of the victim is hidden within that tattoo. Oh, really? I got it! The Fenrir Mercenary Corps. That's the name of the military group Mukuro Ikusaba belonged to. Okay, so... To show that they're a member of the team, each soldier that joins the squad would get a tattoo representing Fenrir somewhere on their body. Fenrir?
representation of Fenrir is a wolf. Fenrir, the wolf of Ragnarok. It's from Norse mythology. A huge world-ending wolf beast. He's the child of the trickster god Loki. And a female giant. Man, after all this time, we finally got a glimpse of the literary all-star. A wolf tattoo. Then that means... Exactly. The body we found had a tattoo of a wolf. Which means that person must have once belonged to Fenrir. So it must have been Mukuro. What? Oh, hold on. Isn't she the one that was behind this whole thing? <laughs> you sound surprised, but you're absolutely right. Yes, indeed. The trial this time is to solve the murder of Mukuro Ikusaba. Are you saying the mastermind is dead? And now we have to have a clueless trial? No. It means we were wrong in thinking that Mukuro was the mastermind at all. But I mean, being the ultimate despair seems like a pretty mastermindy title to me. Maybe we shouldn't have been thinking of her as the ultimate despair in the first place. After all, looking at her profile, I didn't see anything that would fit such a description. All it said was that she was the ultimate soldier. If I remember correctly, that other information came from... Kyoko. That's what you told Makoto, right? So that means... Kyoko got it wrong? Um, who was she? Who was Mukuro Hikusaba? She's been gone this whole time? And when she finally turns up, she gets killed! Usually when there's a scene where an important character dies, it has a lot more detail. So you're saying she wasn't an important character? Which would mean she was the same as us. Just another participant. Then who's the real mastermind? It must have been the Hope's Peak Academy headmaster after all. No, the headmaster has nothing to do with it. But how can we trust that? We already know your information about Mukuro was wrong. My information was not wrong. Okay, okay! We're in the middle of a trial right now! Figuring out who killed Mukuro is first and foremost! Please limit all future prattle, chatter, and chit-chat as much as possible! Fine. Uncovering the identity of the Mastermind will have to wait. But remember this. No matter what happens, we will find out who you really are. I stake my family name on it. I have officially decided to completely ignore all such attempts at provocation. Now then, just so nobody's confused, let me state this one more time for the record. The reason we're having a class trial is because a murder among the students has taken place. Hammer that point straight into your big old brains! What you're saying is that both the victim and the culprit are part of the student body? Then... one of us killed Mukuro? Wait, no! There's a chance that there's some mystery 17th person who's been hiding all along! Nope! There are only 16 students in total that have been taking part in these events! Seriously? Then... One of us killed Mukuro? Who did it? Who's the killer this time? Get a hold of yourself. We've already narrowed down the list of possible suspects. Huh? I'm sure you realize who I'm talking about, right, Makoto? Who the evidence points to? I got it! You've narrowed it down to... Yoko and me, right? Why do you say that? Allow me to explain. Just after nighttime last night, I went to the garden, so I can confirm that at that point, there was no dead body there. So, the murder must have taken place after I left the garden. However, Hiro, Toko, Hina, and I were in the gym the entire time. The gym? That's right. The four of us were there trying to dismantle Monokuma. The whole time, we were very careful not to go anywhere alone. We even went to the bathroom in pairs. All of which is to say, the four of us all have alibis. The only ones without alibis... Are me, 
and Makoto. That's why you're able to narrow down the list of suspects. Exactly so. Um, I have something I'd like to say regarding the whole alibi thing. Are you thinking of raising an objection? Well, before that, I just want to try and get a better idea of what time the murder took place. Doing that might reveal some kind of clue. Whatever you want, somebody go ahead and help him out. Me and Byakuya can both confirm that the body wasn't in the garden at... Well, it was after nighttime for sure. I'd say it must have been around 10 o'clock. So the murder must have happened after 10 p.m. Then I guess we can say the time frame for the murder was between then and when we found the body? Oh, but what time did we find the body? The one who saw the body first was Toko, right? And she went to go get the pickaxe. I got it! The body must have been discovered at 9 a.m., since that's when Toko went to get the pickaxe. Totally sure the murder happened sometime between 10 at night and 9 in the morning. For me, I was already asleep before nighttime hit, so I don't have an alibi after 10 o'clock. But I'm sure I met up with everyone else before 9 this morning. We ran into each other in the dining hall, right? That was around... Oh yeah! Right around 7.30. I remember checking right before I went in, so I'm totally sure about it. Which means from 10 p.m. to 7.30 a.m., you don't have an alibi. a time frame for the murder. It took place somewhere between 10 o'clock at night. No, it's wrong. Actually, the murder couldn't have happened anywhere near 10 o'clock. It had to have taken place way later. And what makes you say that? Because of the sprinklers in the garden. The sprinklers are set to go off right at 7.30 every morning, right? So if the body had been in the garden before 7.30, then it should have been completely soaked. Oh, hold on! I remember this part perfectly! The body was wet. Dripping wet, in fact. Sorry, Toko, but you're wrong. I'm wrong? How? Are you saying only the mouth down south was wet? How dare you spew such indecent words! No, I'm saying that the body was wet, but not because of the sprinklers. What do you mean? By denying the sprinkler, are you trying to deny my entire existence? Man, you're totally wacko. If you really think it wasn't the sprinkler,
prove it? Just remember what the body was like after the explosion, and you'll see why it wasn't the sprinklers. The top half of the body was wet, yes, but the bottom half was completely dry. If the sprinklers got the body wet, shouldn't the whole body have been wet? So they only got the top wet? The bottom was completely dry? What a brutal maniac! I'm so sick of her. Let's just move on. The reason only the top half was wet was because... While the body was still on fire, I doused it with water. But only the part on fire, the top half. Oh, then I guess the sprinklers really didn't do it. So if the sprinklers didn't get the body wet, then the murder must have taken place sometime after the sprinklers turned on at 7.30 in the morning. Which means she must have been killed sometime between then and when the body was discovered at 9. But Makoto's alibi was only missing from 10 o'clock last night to 7.30 this morning, right? So there's no way Makoto could have done it. I guess you had an alibi after all. Good for you. In which case, the only one left without an alibi is Kyoko. I'd just like to say one thing. If you vote for me, and I die here, the mystery of this school will stay hidden forever. Which is why I can't let that happen. So are you saying you're not the culprit? Of course I'm not. I have no reason to kill anyone. This is a trap the Mastermind has laid for us. A trap? <laughs> We're this far into the game and now you decide to blame me? Stop wasting time! Stop wasting energy! You really think your little trick is gonna work? Shut up, you! You got it, boss! Shutting up now! Anyway, Kyoko, you actually did have a reason to kill her. Huh? She did? She thought Mukuro was the ultimate despair. In other words, the mastermind behind everything. So she killed her to try and put a stop to all this. Isn't that right, Kyoko? But you made one catastrophic mistake. Mukuro wasn't the mastermind at all. And as a result, we were forced into another trial, something I'm sure you weren't at all expecting. So that was her motive? If she had a motive and no alibi, well then, I think it's pretty clear Kyoko's got to be the culprit. I'm not the only one without an alibi. Makoto's explanation is still insufficient. Huh? The sprinklers didn't get the body wet, but that doesn't mean the murder happened when he said it did. What are you... Because you see, there is a way the body could have avoided getting wet. Interesting. I'm listening. All it would take is covering the body with a certain something to keep it from getting wet. I got it! You're talking about the tarp, aren't you? You catch on quick. You're right. All you'd have to do is cover the body with the tarp, and that'd take care of the water. In fact, that's exactly what the killer did. The dirt pattern on the tarp can attest to that. Only one side of the tarp got dirty, because that's the side that got covered in water. The side that faced down over the body, meanwhile, kept perfectly clean. This proves that the killer used the tarp to keep the body from getting soaked. But why would they go to all that effort just to keep the body from getting wet? Most likely so they could cloud the issue of when the murder actually took place. In other words, to create an excuse exactly like the one Makoto just gave us.
Hey, something's not right. And what might that be? By covering the body with the car, the killer prevented it from getting wet. So the reason the tarp was only dirty on one side was the sprinkler got that side wet. But the underside of the tarp, it was totally spotless, right? It's because that side was protected from the water. Since it was facing down toward the body, of course it didn't get dirty. No, that's wrong. Actually, one side being clean is pretty strange if you think about it. Because the blood wasn't dry before the body got blown up, right? Yakuya said it himself. Not to touch it, or you might get some on you. If you put a tarp on a body in that state, it absolutely would have gotten blood on it. Well, maybe the culprit washed it, so nobody would know they used it. If they had, they would have washed both sides. Just washing the one side wouldn't hide anything. Oh! Yeah, true. More than that, what if the very blood we saw on the body was meant as a kind of camouflage? What if, after the killer used the tarp to avoid the sprinklers, they then covered the body in blood that didn't belong to the victim? You mean... Someone else's blood? Where would they get something like that? I know! They could have grabbed some of the blood packs from the nurse's office! That's what Hifumi did, right? When he pretended to be dead? No, that's not what happened this time. The killer got the blood from right there in the garden. When I checked the chicken coop before the murder, there were five chickens. But after the murder, there were only four. So, you're saying someone killed a chicken and then covered the body with its blood? Man, that's messed up. Killing a living thing just to do something like that is awful. They should have at least eaten it. I wonder if the killer had to get the blood from the scene so they wouldn't be spotted walking around. Anyway, there's no denying that a chicken went missing, which provides a basis for my theory. Perhaps, but even so, there's one thing that still doesn't make sense. You said the culprit used the tarp to avoid the water and then covered the body in blood, right? But if that's the case, then the blood should have soaked into the ground around the body. But that's not what we saw. Only the victim's clothing had blood on it. The ground was completely clean. I have to agree, that certainly is strange. Maybe they didn't apply the blood at the scene. Maybe they covered the coat in blood beforehand. They covered it beforehand? When you discovered the body, was it wearing the coat like you normally would? Um. I think so. Wait, no. The head was through the neck hole, but the arms weren't in the sleeves. Then that settles it. Sorry, I'm having a tough time keeping up. What settles what? Here's what happened. The murder took place before the sprinklers went off. But the body didn't get wet because the killer covered it with the tarp. Then, later, at the same time the killer was gathering up the tarp, they pulled the coat over the body, the coat they already covered in blood. This series of cover-ups was meant to disguise the actual time the murder occurred. 
They wanted us to think the murder happened sometime after the sprinklers had gone off, at 7.30. If that's actually what took place, it certainly becomes possible that the murder happened earlier. But to pull all that off, wouldn't they have had to go back to the garden after the sprinklers turned off? That actually wouldn't have been all that difficult. Huh? They already had the coat ready, so they just had to grab the tarp and pull the coat over the body. They'd be done in no time. Maybe, but still. Hina, after you met up with Makoto in the dining hall, did you two stay together from that point on? Oh, no. I headed off to the gym, and Makoto didn't show up till later. Then he had plenty of time to spare, wouldn't you say? That's not... Don't bother saying it's not possible. I must admit, Kyoko's reasoning is sound. Makoto's alibi is inadequate. Well then, it looks like we're back to square one. Makoto's alibi is no good, so once again, our suspects are him and Kyoko. For serious, man? Which one of them did it? Hey, why don't we let luck decide? Let's flip a coin. 50-50 odds. Oh! See? Pretty good idea, right? No, not that. I just remembered something super serious. Well, don't just stand there. Out with it. You know that knife we found all black and burnt? The one we found stuck in the body before it exploded, right? According to the Monokuma file, the knife went all the way through, from front to back. So, what about it? I'm pretty sure I'd seen that knife somewhere before. That's what I thought when I first saw it. I just remember. To Makoto? You don't seem surprised. You must have noticed earlier. Yeah. Then why did you hide that fact? It's not that I hid it. It's just... Suspicious! Very suspicious indeed! The knife we found stuck in the body came from Makoto. Now I'm totally convinced he did it. Well, thousand percent convinced. Before, then that seals it. Makoto did it. Just because I had the knife once, that automatically makes me the killer. Well, getting stabbed is what killed her. No, that's wrong. Wait, hold on. The stab wound isn't what killed Mukuro. That should be clear from the description of the cover-up we just heard. Lies! We never talked about what killed her! No, don't you remember? The killer covered the dead body with the tarp, and then put the bloody coat on it. 
right? In other words, the victim never wore that blood-stained coat until after they were dead. Okay, fine. So what? So, when we discovered the body, the knife had been thrust through the coat along with the body. Meaning, if she wasn't stabbed until the coat was put on, and she was already dead at that point, obviously the stab wound isn't what killed her. Maybe you stabbed her twice. Once to kill her and once to cover it up. I got it! The Monokuma file clearly states that there was only one stab wound. Oh yeah, it sure did. I totally forgot about that. Then the knife... ...was just another piece of camouflage set up by the true killer. They probably stabbed her to draw attention away from what actually killed her. Exploding the body afterward was probably meant to do the same thing. The explosion severely damaged the body, making it impossible to know what really killed her. It was all the killer's attempt to destroy all evidence of their crime. So they wanted us to notice the stab wound and then detonated the body afterward. They meant for us to latch onto the knife as the cause of death, then destroy any evidence proving otherwise. Oh, hey, I have a question. It kind of goes back to the beginning, but what's the deal with that explosion anyway? Why'd the body just blow up all of a sudden like that? If you bothered to put that lump of gray matter between your ears to use, you'd know the answer. Well, if you're so smart, just tell me. I'll tell you. I bet some unknown quantum particle caused an atomic level spontaneous combustion! I might be dumb, but even I'm not dumb enough to believe that. Go ahead, Makoto. Tell her or we won't make any headway on this. I got it! After the explosion, we found a tiny fragment of something on the ground near the body, right? That fragment reveals the cause of the explosion. Huh? You know, I feel like I've seen something like it somewhere before. That's only natural. Because, of course, we saw the same thing when we dismantled Monokuma. It's part of a bomb. Oh! Then the explosion was because of the Monokuma bomb. Anyway, the culprit's motive is becoming more and more obvious by the minute. They wanted the knife wound to look like the fatal injury so that we'd suspect Makoto. And the only one who would benefit from that is the only other possible suspect. You, Kyoko. Hold on a second, Yakuya. What's the problem? Well, I just feel like we need to think this through. We still don't know what actually killed the victim. That's true. It's definitely bugging me. What really killed her? Fine. I have no problem with that. Let us continue the debate. It won't change the facts of the case regardless. Then shall we continue the debate? The victim's fatal injury has yet to be determined, correct? The explosion didn't kill her for sure. I guess. Well, yeah. She was already totally dead when that happened. And it wasn't me because of the knife, right? And then there's only one other thing. Oh, yeah. Um, according to the Monokuma file, that's gotta be it. There was evidence that showed she was hit on the back of her head. And more than that, the victim had suffered countless wounds across her entire body. Then shall we continue the debate? The victim's fatal injury has yet to be determined, correct? No, it's wrong! Mukuro 
died because of the blow to the back of the head she suffered. What about the wounds all over the rest of her body? They didn't have anything to do with it? The Monokuma file makes it clear that those weren't fresh wounds. Oh yeah, good point. If they were old, I guess they don't really matter. Okay, then we're safe in assuming the blow to the back of her head is what killed her. But then, what was the murder weapon? The Monokuma file says she was hit with a blonde object about as thick as a metal pipe. Oh, I bet it was the pickaxe! How is that even possible? If you hit someone with that, it encased their skull in completely. Well, maybe they held it the other way and hit her with the handle. No way! The balance would be all off. You wouldn't be able to swing it with any kind of power. I wouldn't mind testing it on you if you want. No thanks. I bet you just hit me with a metal end and call it an accident. I'd love to scoop out that nasty brain of yours, throw it on the ground, and, and spit on it! <laughs> I feel the same way! Looks like we're on the same page this time. Seriously? We want to figure out what killed her, right? It just so happens we already know. We already know? I knew we could count on you, Master! So what was it? Go ahead and tell them, Makoto. Surely you've deduced the real murder weapon? I got it! Mukuro was hit in the back of the head with something. And that's what killed him. And that something was... the titanium arrow we found in the locker in the dojo. Arrow. That's what the culprit attacked Mukuro with? Indeed. There's no doubt about it. Are you sure? That sounds... kind of weird. Hey! How dare you backtalk, Master! You have no right! I'm not backtalking anything. I'm just saying what I think. Titanium Arrow. It was in the dojo locker, right? I have no doubt that was the murder weapon. Are you sure? You don't sound convinced. What's the problem? Well, because in the Monokuma file, it said the weapon must have been about as thick as a metal pipe, right? It seems like an arrow would just be too... No, it's wrong! You're right. Just the one arrow would have been too weak. That's why the killer used another weapon. Another weapon? Inside the dojo locker, we also found a balled up wad of duct tape. The killer probably uses duct tape to bind multiple arrows together. Bundling them together using the duct tape would easily create a single weapon as thick as a pipe. And that's exactly what the killer did. It's similar to Aesop's fable about the bundle of sticks. One stick is weak, but put them together, and they become strong. It's meant to teach cooperation. Damn, that's harsh. How is it harsh? Are you even listening? Anyway, that explains the murder weapon. As for who the culprit is that stashed the weapon in the dojo locker, it was you, Kyoko. I've never been to the dojo. Oh no, you absolutely have. How can you say that with such confidence? Because we have proof, of course. Don't we, Makoto? Uh, oh, um... Hmm? What's the matter? Surely you don't intend to protect a murderer. You know what will happen if you do, don't you? If you cover for the culprit, there's only one thing that can lead to. The death of us all, remember? Uh, of course I remember. Then show us. Show everyone the evidence that proves Kyoko went to the dojo. I 
I got it! The one thing that proves Kyoko was in the dojo is right here. The key to the dojo locker. And how does that prove anything? Because I found it in your room. It was in my room? Don't bother trying to play dumb. That key is just the final piece of the puzzle. Your non-existent alibi, your clear motive, your attempts to frame Makoto for the crime. This all proves that you are the true culprit. You can't explain this away, so just give up. Hold on a second. Not this again. You really are dead set on defending her, aren't you? No, it's not that I want to defend her. It's just, there's one more thing I need to ask her. Kyoko. I want you to tell me something. Last night, you were in my room, weren't you? Why? What were you doing there? That's what I need to know. I was just... protecting you. What? That's enough. The time for idle chatter is over. A verdict is close at hand. Wait. I'm warning you. Don't make this mistake. I'm not the killer. I knew you were stubborn, but this is just getting ridiculous. Really? But you should know better than anyone I didn't do it. Can you tell me I'm wrong? I should know? Those words you just spoke. What do you mean? Exactly what I said. I'm not the killer. You should understand that more than anyone here. Yakuya, what are you hiding? Master would never hide something from me! There's proof that you aren't the culprit. Is that what you're saying? You stated a theory earlier. You said I hid the evidence of my crime in the dojo locker, and then left the locker key in my own room. Correct? But... could I really have done that? Those words you just spoke. What do you mean? Exactly what I said. I'm not the killer. You should understand that more than anyone here. Yakuya, what are you hiding? Master would never hide something from me! There's proof that you are the culprit. No, it's wrong! If I'm right, Kyoko wouldn't have been able to get into her room. Huh? Why not? Because she had given her room key to Yakuya. I see. So that's what you meant. And if I had the key to your room... Then obviously I had no way of getting in. Without my room key, I couldn't have possibly put the locker key in there myself. Am I wrong? It would appear not. Then you're finally starting to understand.
Well, does no one have a rebuttal? Have you decided to accept her assertion as fact? I see. So you still refuse to accept it. I suppose we have to admit that Kyoko didn't put the locker key in her room, that it was someone else. But who else could it have been? I mean, Byakuya had a room key, right? You! What are you trying to imply? But of course, I have an alibi. From nighttime on, I was with you guys the entire time. I couldn't possibly have killed anyone, or put the key in Kyoko's room. Well, someone had to put the key in there. There's only one other possibility I can think of. Someone could have had the key on them, then once they arrived at the scene, pretended to find it there. What? It, it had to be Makoto, right? I don't see any other option. Wait a second! You've got it all wrong! Let's think about it one more time. There's got to be a hidden side to this case. Huh? A hidden side? First of all, there's something off about this entire trial. You all see it, don't you? Mukuro, who we didn't even know existed, suddenly shows up dead. And then we're thrown into a trial. And Kyoko even said it's a trap the mastermind set for us. So that's why this has to be... Okay! Time's up! Huh? Time's up! Class trial's all over! Everyone can stop talking now! What? Time's up? What do you mean, time's up? There's no time's up. Since when have we... It's because you were late! So we had to push back the start time! So then, it's time for voting time, okay? Everyone, please vote using the lever in front of you! Voting time? Now, who will be chosen as the Blackened? Will you make the right choice, or the dreadfully wrong one? Hey, hold on! What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? expect you to forgive me. Let's give it everything we've got! It's punishment time!
In other words... What... what did you say? So...
Just a second. It smells... awful. Indeed. So... Hey. So... You... Indeed. However... It's true. In other words... Indeed. That's right. It would seem... However... Why is that? However...
understand. I should understand everything. My goal isn't to get out of here. It's to stay here. Listen. Hey. Correct. So... I... Correct. So... In other words... However, so It's true. Indeed. Correct. However, I So... However... However... Anyway...
indeed. Correct. That's right. In other words... Indeed. Correct. However, correct. Indeed. Correct. In other words, Makoto.
anyway. Indeed. That's right. It's true. Indeed. Hey. So... Wrong. Right. Indeed. It's true. However... I... What? Wrong. However, I... 
I... So... However, Right. I... However... So... However... I... Correct. Wrong. Hey. Indeed. That's right.
listen. So then... In other words... However... Because... So... Right. Indeed. Shall we go? Well now, well now, well now, well now. In other words... <laughs> However... However, Well... 
that doesn't matter. That's right. Because... However... What the heck?! Indeed. Indeed. Listen to me. Yeah. Hey. That's what we have to do. It's true. It's time for one last showdown. One final battle between hope and despair. Hey. <laughs> Bear it! What's wrong? In other words... <laughs> I can barely contain myself! It's true. <laughs> Listen to me. Hey. What's wrong? Hey. Hey! 
Listen. However, Because... In other words, correct. Hey. That's right. True.
Makoto. In other words, Indeed. In other words, however, However, correct. Hey. However, anyway, shall we go? However, is that Makoto? Y you guys, it is. There's no two ways about it. That's Makoto. Huh? You s survived? Jeez, you're like a stubborn little cockroach. You know that. I'm just asking to make sure, but you're not a ghost, right?
what? What the heck? Makoto. Yes. Hmm. It's true. Huh? In other words, Wrong. I see. Huh? That's right. However, What did you say? However... Indeed.
In other words, announcement. You've all probably figured this out by now, but at this point, the killing game has now entered true ending mode. So, in the name of fairness, I will unlock every room in the school. Look wherever you want. Solve the mystery in whatever way you see fit. <laughs> then we can all meet up at the class trial, okay? <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> In the name of my family. Goodbye.
Indeed. However, so So then, correct. Makoto.
Correct. Indeed. However, in other words, however, whew, Correct. Indeed. It's true. Well,
Makoto. It would seem... Anyway... Wrong. Correct. In other words... Would you?
Why? Because... In other words, it would seem I Just a second. Anyway... Shh. <laughs> 
Wah wah. Say what? Hello. Found it. Too bad.
sorry. So, in other words... I see. In other words... So, in other words... <laughs> Interesting. It 
it's all clear now.
Is everyone working hard? Is your investigation coming along nicely? Well then, since you're all giving it your best, your generous headmaster will give you a little hint. <laughs> For those of you who are interested, please make your way to the gym ASA possible!
are you gonna do? Hmm. Unbelievable.
Yes, yes. Oh, I'm on Right. Makoto. Indeed. Listen. It would seem... I knew it. Indeed. It would seem... Anyway... Makoto. Listen. I see. So... Makoto. So then... It would seem... Because...
Indeed. Indeed. Is that right? Because... Wrong. Listen. However... So then... At the very least... Right. In other words... Indeed. Indeed. then So... Indeed. I see. 
and Why is that? Because... In other words, however, I Makoto. <laughs> so then... Mm-hmm. 
Okay then, are you ready to begin? I do apologize, but I hope you don't mind if I record our conversation. I'm a little slow, you know. I never really got the hang of taking notes while having a conversation. So this video is meant to serve as a kind of contract substitute. It's not that I don't trust you guys. It's more like insurance. So please don't worry too much. Now then, let me get straight to the point. There is a chance that you may have to spend the rest of your life here in the school. Can you accept that? I'm sorry about all this. Well, I can promise you that I will do everything in my power to keep you safe. As the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, I give you my word. So, Makoto, before we begin, I should let you know that I'll be recording our conversation. Yes. Now, shall we get straight to the point? Makoto. There's a chance you may have to spend the rest of your life here in the school. Can you accept that? Yes. I'm sorry I'm putting you through all this. Well, I mean, we don't have much of a choice, do we? But I promise that as long as you're in this school, I will do everything I can to protect you. As the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, that's the very least I can do for you.
ไปวะชื่อแบนเ
down there. Thrills, chills, kills! That's fine. Unbelievable. Today, I'm feeling white. Stop talking. <laughs> you guys. In the name of my family. However... However... So... Since this will be the final class trial, I've come up with a special rule. So listen up! If you can figure out Mukuro's killer and go on to solve the mystery of this school, you guys win! But if you can't, then I win! And of course, waiting for the loser is the super exciting, super heart pounding punishment! Are you saying that if you lose, you'll execute yourself? Yep, sure will. And that's final? No loopholes? No wiggling out of it later? Of course not! Bears never go back on their word! Never mind all that. I just have one question for you. Oh, you're taking this serious, huh? Are you feeling okay? Is the mastermind only one person? Hmm? Don't bother. I already know the answer. You're all the mastermind, aren't you? You're all out to get me! I'm right, aren't I? I knew it! You guys have all been working together, haven't you? I have evidence, so I know I'm right! Hey, you stole my line! 
You're all out to get me. I'm sure of it. I have evidence of my own. What a coincidence. I, too, have evidence to present. Evidence that proves everyone other than me has been working together. W what? Wait, hold on. This doesn't make any sense. How can the three of us each have that kind of... No, it's wrong. It's not just you three. I have evidence, too. What? You too? The evidence you're all referring to is this group photo, right? Well, well yeah. Huh? Wait, but mine's different. With the picture you have, I'm in it. But that can't be right, because in my picture... See? I'm the only one not in it. Hero, you have a picture too, right? Let's see it. Okay, but be careful with it. It's pretty important evidence. So the secret in these pictures has been revealed. Secret or whatever, I don't care. You guys are all in on this together. That's why I'm the only one missing. But you're in my picture. You're the ones trying to trick me. So the whole purpose behind these photos was to get us questioning and fighting with each other. The mastermind laid a trap to make us each think everyone else was working against us. Huh? I laid a trap? A trap? How rude! What grounds do you have for such audacious accusations? In each case, the only one not in the picture is the person who received it. So, in the picture I got, I'm the only one missing. In the picture Hina got, she's the only one missing. And in the picture Hero got, he's the only one missing. As long as we're talking about it, I suppose I should show you my photo as well. In other words, Monokuma gave each of us a group photo in which that person wasn't included. And when we each saw our picture, we just assumed everyone else was the enemy? <laughs> Figured it out, huh? Yeah, I thought that must be it. But how was that a hint? Listen, can I see everyone's group photo one more time? It's not directly connected to what we're talking about, but I'd like to double check something. Sure, no problem. Yeah, I don't mind. Forget about the photo already? Ugh. Trying to trick me with such an obviously fake photo? I'm still pissed about that. And on top of that, they went to all that trouble to make it look like we were wearing matching uniforms. Hmm? So you think they're fake? 
<laughs> no, no, no. I assure you, they're quite real. W what are you talking about? There's no way. Yeah, I don't remember ever taking a picture like that. So it's got to be a fake. I'm sure of it. But you know, can we really be so sure? Huh? Don't get me wrong. I don't remember taking this picture either. But... Is that really enough to be absolutely positive they're fake? What do you mean? say that somehow, we'd all lost our memories. That could explain it, couldn't it? Oh, I get it. So we all just lost our memories at the same time and forgot about the photo. Makes sense. As if, you expect me to believe such an unbelievable occult-type story? Yeah, we all lost our memories? That's just crazy. got spontaneous amnesia? Since when did this turn into some kind of sci-fi fantasy? I promise you, I haven't lost my memory. Ever since I got to this school, I remember everything that's happened. So the idea that we all lost our memories... Is totally stupid, obviously! You're saying we all got spontaneous amnesia? Since when did this turn into some kind of sci-fi fantasy? I promise you, I haven't lost my memory. Ever since I got to this school, I remember everything that's happened. No, that's wrong! Those photos aren't the only things that point to the possibility of memory loss. This DVD does the same thing. You're not going to show us something indecent, are you? No, it's nothing like that. It's a video of all of us being interviewed by the Hoax Peak Academy headmaster. When you say all of us, you mean... I mean all of us, including you. You lie! I never did any kind of interview. No, it's not a lie. Just watch the DVD and you'll see for yourself. The headmaster did, in fact, interview you. What are you saying? I didn't imagine you would remember. It's not about whether or not I remember. You expect me to believe all this? That I... I lost my memory somehow? Well, we don't have any way to refute it, so we have no choice but to accept it as reality. How can you say that? We're talking about living, breathing amnesia here! To be honest, I have something else on my mind right now. Something else? You said the DVD contains recordings of us being interviewed by the Headmaster, right? What were the interviews about? The Headmaster sat each of us down, one at a time, and asked us the same question. He asked us if we could accept the idea of spending the rest of our lives in this school. 
What kind of question is that? And how did we answer? We'd say no, obviously. Actually, we all said we could. Even me. I heard myself say yes. I could spend the rest of my life at this school. Why? Why would you say yes to something like that? I don't know. I don't remember a thing. The same goes for everyone else. Nobody remembers. You don't remember choosing to live here forever. Or even talking to the headmaster about it at all. It doesn't matter if I remember or not. Even if I bought the whole amnesia thing, the idea that I would want to live here forever? That's just insane! How can I believe that? Insane or not, we can't move forward until you accept it. Am I right? You sure are, cause it's all true! What? I know it sounds absurd, but if it's the truth, there's nothing we can do about it. Indeed. We only have one path in front of us. Then... I really... Yep! You all totally lost your memory at the same time! This is all... making my head hurt. And this isn't like some normal kind of memory loss. You stole those specific memories from us, didn't you? Oopsie! You figured that part out too, huh? Of course. There's no way we would all just happen to get amnesia at the same time. How could someone just steal our memories? How? Come, come, come. That hardly matters right now. If I said it was hypnotism, would you believe me? Or we opened up your skulls and messed with your brains? Would you really believe anything I said? How it happened doesn't matter right now. What matters is figuring out what memories you took from us. That's what you're trying to say, right? <laughs> I knew I could count on you! The interview with the headmaster, taking that group photo, those can't be the only memories we lost. There must have been a purpose to it all. A reason for taking away our memories. Of course there was a purpose. It all has to do with the original motive. You mean the motive you came up with to try and get us to all kill each other? That has something to do with the memories you stole from us? <laughs> it sure does. But that part's still a secret. Anyway, I'm sure it's not easy, but let's all focus on the class trial for the murder of Mukuro Ikusaba. Okay, so you want us to figure out who killed her before we do anything else. So who did it? Who killed her? Whoever did it is the same one who's behind everything. That much I'm sure of. But when you think about it, is the mastermind really here in the school? Of course! They have to be here somewhere. What makes you so sure? Um... What does make me so sure? Exactly! You're just making stuff up! There's no way the Mastermind is here! The Mastermind is probably a million miles away! No, it's wrong! There's no question that the Mastermind is somewhere within the school. How do you know? Did you find some evidence or something? In the back of the data center? I found a panel that controls Monokuma. The Mastermind must have been using that to control him all this time. So there can't be any doubt. The Mastermind has been inside the school all along. There can't be any doubt. In which case, 
there also can be no doubt that the mastermind is one of us. What? Why? Recall what Makoto told us Monokuma said to him earlier. So if the mastermind is in the school, we have to assume it can only be that 16th student. But how'd they manage to survive all of this? So we're the only ones here? It's not me! I'm not the mastermind! Well, it's not me! I blame Makoto! What? Why me? Cuz! It's super weird how you're the only one who survived being executed! Oh, I get it! The only way he could have survived is if he was actually the mastermind himself, right? Aw, oh, nuts! You got me! Wait! What are you trying to say? Everyone, calm down. There's no reason to panic. The mastermind's true identity will become clear soon enough. Just as soon as we find out who killed Mukuro. That's a good point. Rather than wasting time bickering, we should put our minds to work solving this mystery. Yeah, well, how much time have we already spent talking about the murder? He's right. What more is there to talk about? If you want something to talk about, I think there might be one thing. We haven't fully established what Mukuro's fatal injury was. Huh? But I thought we figured that out. She died when she got hit in the back of the head. No, that isn't actually what killed her. It was something entirely different. Wouldn't you agree, Makoto? I got it! All of the wounds covering her body. That's what really killed her. Hey, now hold on a second. You did read the Monokuma file, right? It made it pretty clear. Those wounds were made at least a few days ago. So they can't possibly be what killed her. Consider this. What if the murder itself took place at least a few days ago? What? What if, when we discovered her body, she'd already been dead for several days? If that's true, then naturally the wounds that killed her would appear to be however many days old. That doesn't make any sense. Because... because she had all those wounds before she ever came here. Huh? How do you know that? Isn't it obvious? She was the ultimate soldier, right? So that means... you know... You're wrong. <laughs> She denied me <laughs> before I could even say anything. <laughs> I'm not weird, okay? At least listen to what I have to say before you deny me. Mukuro was the ultimate soldier. She must have been in a, a hundred different battles. So, when you think about it, obviously, she got all those wounds in battle. No, it's wrong. No, Mukuro didn't suffer those wounds in battle. The file we found in the headmaster's room said as much. Despite the time she spent in battle after battle as a member of Fenrir, when she entered this school, she hadn't sustained a single injury. To be denied so completely... Actually, it's kind of refreshing. Oh, maybe it's because of all of Master's training! Anyway, so we can be sure that Mukuro suffered all those wounds after coming to this school. In which case, they could be the very thing that killed her. As a matter of fact, 
it's hard to imagine any other possibility. When examining her body, I found that her stomach and head wounds came after she was already dead. Unless anyone has any better suggestions, I think we can say this with confidence. The wounds Mufaro sustained all over her body are what ultimately killed her. But if that's what killed her, then does that mean she's really been dead for who knows how long? That's exactly what it means. When we found her body in the garden, she'd already been dead for several days. So then, what about the little matter of what happened last night? Makoto, you said you were attacked in your room by a masked assailant. If Mukuro had already been dead for several days, certainly it couldn't have been her. So who was it that attacked you? I got it! The one who attacked me was the true mastermind. When we discovered Mukuro in the garden wearing the same mask, I naturally assumed she must have been the one who attacked me. But I was wrong. It wasn't her at all. It was the mastermind. sitting here listening. I think I'm gonna jump in. Let's start off with a nice, easy question. Your assumption that I attacked Makoto is just that, right? An assumption. You can't really know who was under that mask, can you? I mean, that's the whole point of a mask. The true identity of the masked attacker is Mukuro Ikusaba. At least, that's what I think. <laughs> Do you have any evidence that might convince me otherwise? never saw their face, right? So you can't have any idea who was under that mask. I'm telling you now, it was Mukuro Ikusaba! You're wrong. Even without seeing their face, there's another part of the attacker we can use to prove it wasn't her. Oh? And what is this other part? Is it the right hand? Or the left hand? Maybe the right foot? Or perhaps the left foot? Or could it be... the hips? You never saw their face, right? So you can't have any idea who was under that mask! I'm telling you now, it was Mukuro! No, it's wrong! Mukuro had a tattoo on her right hand, if I remember correctly. A representation of Fenrir. In other words, a wolf tattoo. But I saw the right hand of the person who attacked me. And there was no such tattoo. So there's no way the person behind the mask was Mukuro. Yeah, well, okay. You got me. I guess it wasn't her. But that still doesn't prove that it was me. It could have been, you know, someone else, right? Hiro, Toko, Hina, and I all have solid alibis for that entire night. Yeah, we were in the gym tearing you apart, so it could have been any of us. Oh, okay, sure. It couldn't have been any of you. But what about Kyoko? It totally could have been her. Uh-oh! 
no snappy comeback. Did I score a bullseye? If you insist, I don't mind showing you. Huh? Show me what? What do you think? I'll show you the one thing that proves beyond a shadow of a doubt it wasn't me. Awful, isn't it? It happened when I was first learning to be a detective. I, I thought you didn't want anyone to see those scars. If it means we get another step closer to unmasking the mastermind, it doesn't really bother me. My scars should suffice as proof. Makoto, did the person who attacked you have scars like mine? No, not at all. I'm positive. Then this much has been made clear. There can be no doubt that the one who attacked Makoto is the true mastermind. <laughs> this is just awful! On top of my secret being revealed, I had to look at those positively grotesque scars of yours! Uh, sorry, did I say that out loud? I do hope I didn't hurt your feelings. Not at all. You can say whatever you want. Sure, as long as it means pushing me farther into the corner, right? corner just yet because if you haven't noticed the circumstances surrounding Mukuro's death are totally unknown that's true all we know right now is she was killed a good while before this morning on the contrary we don't know anything other than that you're not going to tell us she was already dead before we arrived here or something, are you? <laughs> In that regard, you have nothing to worry about. I promise you, without a doubt, she died after our little killing game began here. Then somehow, she was killed in secret without any of us knowing. And after she died... Who knows how much time went by before we found her, right? Did the culprit stash her somewhere? She couldn't have been in the garden the whole time, could she? If she was, she would have been totally decomposed. Just like your brain! Then, she was being stored somewhere? But... To hide a body here... To just store it somewhere? Mukuro's body was probably kept hidden in the bio lab. Bio lab? You mean on the fifth floor? That's right. It's actually set up for use as a morgue. So it's the perfect place to hide a body. And it'd keep the body preserved at the same time. Then you're also saying the body was moved from the bio lab to the garden. And I have no doubt that that's exactly what happened. In fact, I have proof. I got it! What makes me so sure the body was carried from the bio lab to the garden is... The tarp that we found in the garden. When I was checking it over again, I noticed something. I noticed that some text had been stamped on one corner of the tarp. Oh, it says Biolab. Holy cow! How'd you notice that tiny little thing? Makoto's nitpicky nature seems to have surfaced with perfect timing. This proves that the tarp originally came from the Biolab. In fact, 
There's a whole stack of tarps just like it in there. So when the killer moved the body to the garden, they must have grabbed a tarp to wrap it in. Then they simply left it as it was to protect against the sprinklers and put the coat on it afterwards. You made everything sound so amazingly consistent. <laughs> That's just a wild guess! Where's your evidence? Prove that the body was wrapped in a tarp and moved! There is no evidence. I was simply explaining what I think happened. But you seem to be getting pretty worked up about it, wouldn't you say? Worked up? Now that the conversation has turned to the topic of the biolab, you must be getting pretty nervous. Because the key to uncovering your secret identity is hidden within that room, isn't it? Are you talking about unmasking the mastermind? You see, the biolab contained an inconsistency. One so major it can't be overlooked. I can't hear you! La 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 la! Such a child. Oh well, just ignore him. Hey, by the way, Makoto, what about that one thing? What one thing? <laughs> what do you think I'm talking about? Your family. <laughs> Don't tell me you forgot about that video message! So what do you think? Are you sure your family's still okay? Why are you bringing that up now? Your mom, your dad, your little sister. What do you think has happened to your family? Are they really as safe as you might have assumed? Stop talking about that! Calm down, Makoto. He wants you to get upset. Are you sure about this? That's impossible! Are you sure about this? That's impossible! I'm not listening! This should prove it! <laughs> the inconsistency Kyoko's talking about is... The lights! <laughs> what, what are you talking about? Uh, what about the lights? Like I said before, the biolab also acts as a morgue. And as part of that, a giant refrigerator was installed in there. That's where everyone who's died is stored. And it was set up so that when a slot had a body in it, a blue light would turn on. In other words, if the blue light is on, that means there's a body in that slot. But I counted up the number of blue lights that were on, including the one Mukuro was in. And there were only nine. Doesn't matter. You gotta give me the bite-sized version here, man. I got it. 
10 of the lights should have been on. Any other number is incredibly suspicious. Suspicious? Why? That's simple. Just recall who's died here so far, and it should become clear. should make you immediately suspicious. But according to the lights in the bio lab, only nine people were being stored there. You're seeing a dead body just up and disappeared? I got it! The mastermind destroyed one of the bodies to get rid of evidence. But if they wanted to do that, they would have destroyed Mukuro's body, since they actually killed her. And yet, her body was left alone. Then, whose body disappeared? It may very well be that none of them disappeared. Well, if that's true, then why doesn't the body count match? Including Monokuma's executions, there have apparently been ten deaths, but there were only nine bodies. That's the point I'm trying to make. I'm completely lost. How can the number of victims be less than the number of murders? I got it! What about if the same person was killed twice? <gasps> killed twice? Officially, Ten murders have been committed so far. But one of the victims may have been murdered, and then murdered again. Murdered and... murdered again? If that's the case, there could have been ten killings, but still only nine victims, right? Technically, you're right, I guess. But still, something like that could easily have happened. No, it is what happened. Sounds like you're already convinced. Then can you tell us who was killed twice? It was Mukuro, of course. Before she was killed as Mukuro Ikusaba, she was killed as someone else. And that's why the body had to be stored in the bio lab until the moment we found it in the garden. No, 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 that's crazy talk. She was killed as someone else? Come on! Besides, who could that someone else even have been? All you have to do is look at those bodily injuries of hers, and that will become obvious. Nothing's gonna become obvious! Because Kyoko's totally delusional! Who is this someone else that Mukuro was killed at? Was it Sayaka Maizono? Junko Enoshima? Leon Kuwata? Chihiro Fujisaki? Manjo Owada? Kiyotaka Ishimaru? Hifumi Yamada? Celestia Lu... whatever? Or maybe... Sakura Ogami? No, no, no! There's no way anyone was murdered! No, it's wrong! Junko! Wasn't her fatal injury pretty similar to Mukuro's? What do you mean? Well, remember what happened to her? She was impaled by a bunch of spears. 
all over her body. And Mukuro died from a number of wounds across her body. When you compare that to the stab wounds Junko suffered... Can the similarities match? Yes, and those are the only fatal injuries that match up. That explains why those two bodies are actually one and the same. So let me see if I have this straight. Junko, or someone going by that name, was stabbed to death with multiple spears. Then her body was kept in the bio lab for however long before being dragged out again. Only this time, it was presented as the corpse of one Mukuro Ikusaba. It all matches up, right? Those wounds Junko suffered could easily be these same injuries. It's really true? Mukuro and Junko are the same person? Wait, so then... What does it all mean? It means that there haven't been ten victims, but nine. Which also means that among the people we thought were dead, one is still alive. And that's the true identity of the Mastermind? Who is it? Who's behind all this? We already know the answer to that. It's Mukuro. She's still alive! She took Yuko's body... ...and made it look like she was the one who died! So Mukuro is still alive! A little silence? Then I must be right. I'm right, aren't I? The body we found in the garden... It wasn't Mukuro! No, that's wrong! No, the body we found in the garden was Mukuro. That's one thing we can be sure of. The body's appearance and measurements are consistent with her records. Right, Kyoko? She was 5 foot 6 inches tall and weighed 97 pounds. Her vitals were 31, 21, 32. Everything in her profile is consistent with that corpse. And then there's the matter of the Fenrir tattoo. So there's no question it's her. But... If Mukuro's not the mastermind, then... Who's actually still alive? Here's my answer! Junko is still alive. It's the only possibility. Are you sure about that? Huh? I admit, since Mukuro is undoubtedly dead, Junko does seem to be the only other explanation. But we saw her get impaled. She died right before our very eyes. If Junko were still alive, the death we saw would had to have been some kind of charade. But you yourself confirmed she was dead, did you not? No question, Junko was dead. So, the idea that she's still alive... It must be wrong. Then you're withdrawing your previous statement? <laughs> 
I know you gave it your best shot, but too bad. I guess your conclusion was a dud. <laughs> too bad, too bad. This case hasn't been decided just yet. Oh? You haven't given up already, have you, Makoto? No, of course not. There's no way I'd give up that easy. That's all well and good, but how do you intend to solve the problem standing in your way? Junko absolutely died. Mukuro absolutely died. Then both of them are dead, right? There can't be any kind of survivor story. I think we need to look at this from the opposite direction. Huh? The opposite direction? Let's assume Junko is still alive. If so, how could she have survived? She switched places with someone else. Switched places? That's right. Before the spears could kill her, she got someone to take her place. Specifically, Mukuro Ikusaba. Then that would make it Mukuro's corpse that showed up later. Which is why the body's height and weight and everything match Mukuro's profile, right? I don't know anything about this switching places thing, but... That had to be Junko who got stabbed to death, right? Yeah, you're saying they switched? When could they even have done that? Right when she was uh, about to die? Like she used some kind of ninja replacement technique? Good point. There's just no way they could have switched like that. So maybe the whole idea is wrong. I got it! The two of them may have switched places from the very beginning. What? From the beginning? Yes. From the moment we first met. If that's when they switched... Then they wouldn't have had to switch at the moment of death, right? After all, the one we saw at that point would have already been Mukuro. Uh, hold on. So, you're saying the Junko we first met... Mukuro all along? Then we'd already met her? I had, like, a normal conversation with her. When we first met, none of us knew who anyone else was. So Mukuro could have simply told us her name was Junko, and we never would have known the difference. That would easily allow the two of them to switch places from the very beginning. Wait, but Mukuro had a tattoo on the back of her hand, right? Junko never had any tattoo like that, did she? 
She could have hidden it with foundation or something like that. If she did, it likely melted away in the explosion, exposing the tattoo after the body was extinguished. Plus, there were the fake nails found on the hands of Mukuro's body. They were the same fake red nails she was wearing when we all met for the first time. But if she really did use foundation... Correct. Even if there was no tattoo on her hand, I couldn't say for certain it wasn't Mukuro. So I'm glad nobody noticed that glaring hole when we were trying to figure out who attacked Makoto. But too bad for you, Monokuma. You can't deny it anymore. Wait, so... this whole thing was a setup from the very beginning? If that's true, it was quite an elaborate plan to be sure. Making it look like Mukuro was Junko. The reason such an elaborate plan was possible is because the two of them were working together. So Mukuro, the ultimate despair, teamed up with someone like her. In other words, it would be fair to say that Junko herself was also the ultimate despair. What's wrong? Lost the will to fight back. I think he's just afraid. Afraid? What's that mean, afraid? Fear is only possible where hope is possible. I only have despair, so fear is an alien concept to me. Then why haven't you been saying anything? Because it's a bunch of nonsense. Junko's my secret identity. <laughs> As if. Then why did you try and protect Junko's real identity? I tried to protect her identity. When did I do that? While I was in the AV room, watching the DVD of our interviews with the Headmaster. I couldn't finish watching the video. And the reason you did that is because you didn't want me to see the real Junko, did you? Oh, yeah! If everyone was in that video, of course Junko would have had to show up. And if Makoto saw the real Junko, it would have been totally obvious that the Junko we met was an imposter. The that whole power outage thing was just a fluke! Getting all riled up! 
This should prove it. The video wasn't the only thing you tried to cover up. You did the same thing with this group photo. Uh, uh oh. I noticed it just a little while ago when we were all comparing the photos we'd gotten. In all the photos, there's a certain similarity, an unusual circumstance. What's so unusual about them? Face. The one thing common to every single photo is that you can't see her face. It's hard to believe her face would just happen to be hidden in every single picture, don't you think? And on top of that, in this photo, you can see that Mukuro is clearly visible. So in other words, at that point, the two of them hadn't switched yet. With all that in mind, there's no doubt that the girl whose face is hidden here is the real Junko. Which is why you had to have pictures that didn't show her face. Because if we could have seen her face, then it would have clearly revealed that the Junko in the pictures wasn't the Junko that we knew. Xanadu! I believe everything Makoto said is true. Junko and Mukuro switched places before we met either of them. So she killed Mukuro, who had taken her place, making it look like she died. And the real Junko is still alive. And she's the one behind this whole murderous situation. This killing game. She's the true mastermind and the ultimate despair. Xanadu times two! With this, the identity and the crimes of the mastermind have been exposed. No! Wait! Hold on! Don't bother trying to deny it. There's no more room for debate. You don't have anywhere left to run. I'll prove everything right now! what happened we met the ultimate fashionista Junko and Oshima right after we all arrived here. 
But that wasn't the real Junko. The girl we saw before us was actually the 16th student who had taken Junko's place. And that girl's name was Mukuro Ikusaba. But it wasn't long before she died at the hands of Monokuma. In other words, the mastermind, Junko and Oshima. Her body was kept in a bio lab, which had been converted into a morgue, until Junko decided to put her body to use. Junko dragged the body out of the bio lab, using the tarp to carry her to the garden. She fabricated the murder to try and frame Kyoko, he proving to be one big thorn in her side. Meanwhile, she wanted us all to think Mukuro was still alive and hiding somewhere inside the school. So she put on a mask and then attacked him. After making sure I'd gotten a good look at the mask, she left the room. Then she put the same mask on Mukuro's body. This was all to make us think the person who attacked me and the corpse were one and the same. She wanted us to believe the murder had only recently taken place. Finally, by strapping a bomb to the body, she was able to destroy any remaining evidence. She needed to hide the body's true identity. She had to make sure we didn't find out it was actually the same person we'd met in the beginning. This is the truth behind Mukuro's murder. And the one who carried it all out is the true mastermind. The one controlling Monokuma. The real Junko and Oshima! the whole story behind this incident. Well, what do you have to say to that? What? Are you broken again? You can't get out of this, so don't even try. Come on! It's time you finally revealed yourself! It's not like you're an endangered species or something. How long do you plan to keep hiding? Give it up, Junko. The game's over. Over? <laughs> Did you really think the story would end once we reached the climax of the case? Wrong! There's still plenty more to go! Waiting so very long for peasants like you to appear. If you swear your fealty to us, we will reward you with half of the entire world. We've even drawn up the deed already. We will grant you honor, status, in some of our home cooking. Have you made your choice? Will you serve under us? <laughs> oh, did you think I was being serious? Sorry, I was just messing with you. It's been so long since I've had an audience. Even I'm not sure what kind of role I'm supposed to play. Anyway, looks like I've finally been set free. 
having to play Monokuma all the time, day after day. It was like I was stuck in purgatory, or like a slow suicide. I get bored so easy, you know? Your face! Huh? What about my face? What's wrong with my beautiful face? People have told me I'm cuter than a hundred chihuahuas combined. I feel like this isn't the first time I've seen you. I got it! That's right! It was before I ever came to this school. I remember seeing a magazine cover. And... You were on it! Wow, you have a pretty good memory. I guess that's why you've made it this far, huh? So I was right. Then what you told me in the main hall when this all began... Sometimes a little lie is necessary to keep things moving along. Wouldn't you agree? That explains why she didn't quite seem the same. Because she was a different person all along. I'm me. And Mukuro is Mukuro. She tried her best. But there's just no way she could have passed as the ultimate fashionista. Two people can never become one as long as the walls of mind and body exist. Not even if they're twins. Twins! I know, it's such a cliche, right? I'm almost embarrassed to admit it. So basically, Rukuro and I had your stereotypical twin relationship. The older sister, tough and proud, that was Mukuro. The younger sister, smart and cute, that was... <laughs> Me! Junko fucking Anishima! And together, we were the Despair Sisters, aka the Ultimate Despair! Whoa! She's a totally different person now! Like I said, I get bored easy as hell! I even get fucking bored with myself! But if, if you're twins, why do you have different last names? Oh, that again? You have any idea how many times people ask me that shit? Maybe it's new to your dumb ass, but it forced me to tears. Answering the same questions over and over? Just make up whatever answer you want, I don't give a shit. The truth's fucking lame anyway. But if she was your twin, that means... You killed your own sister? And for reasons deeper and darker than the ocean. Ha! As if! Well, I suppose I'd better explain. For my plan to work, someone had to be able to control the killing game from behind the scenes. The so-called mastermind had to operate Monokuma, keep an eye on everyone, things like that. But after looking at the situation, I determined it would be impossible for Mukuro to perform such duties. Because naturally, she turned out to be the letdown of the family. Leaving me behind to run off and join some band of mercenaries. Such a disappointment. So, I decided to play the role of director and have her join the rest of you in your school life. I could have let her work alongside me, but she would have been useless to me that way. Besides, 15 students seemed like a solid number to start with. Of course, the fact that she was the ultimate soldier posed something of a problem. She had what I call the three atrocities. Atrociously rank, atrociously filthy, atrociously repulsive. It was atrociously clear just how out of touch she was with the rest of society. Meanwhile, my ultimate fashionista status has an undeniable appeal that I didn't want to go to waste. And that's... 
why you switched identities? Sadly, her inability to match my personality was even greater than I'd calculated. It was a lost cause. She was nothing more than a bit player, an extra, unworthy of lines. Being the utter disappointment that she was, anyone would have expected her to get killed off right away. Which is precisely why I killed her. To meet everyone's expectations. That can't be your only reason, can it? Well, no, of course not. I also did it to avoid becoming bored. I've never been a stickler for following a plan to the letter, you know? If I planned everything out and knew just what was gonna happen, that'd be so boring. So, I changed things just a bit and decided to use Mukuro to make a little point. In other words, Mukuro's death was a one-sided, premeditated act of betrayal. Just as I suspected. When Mukuro was killed, she must have been as surprised as anybody else. <laughs> so you figured it out? Well, you're right! There's no way Mukuro could have pulled off such a convincing performance. But she did teach you all a very valuable lesson, don't you think? How can you talk like that? You sacrificed your own sister! How does that not even bother you? What? I sacrificed her? That's what's got you so hot under the collar? Jeez, misunderstandings sure are scary. We were the ultimate despair, you know? So we never had any kind of hope or expectations. Nope. I felt despair as long as I can remember. Like I never should have been born at all. When I was born, I cried tears of total despair. So that's why for us, it's not a big deal whether we die or kill. We're just those kinds of people. We can do anything. We've always been filled with despair. So when we do something, we go all the way and live without regret! So you just murdered your own sister and didn't think anything of it? That's not true at all. We were twins. How could I not be sad? That's why it gets me so... excited. Huh? Killing my precious sister with my own two hands. That act is filled with so much despair, you can't help but put a super in front of it. It's like super, 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 super despair. No, more than that. Super, 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 super despair. It just feels so good. What the hell is wrong with you? And my sister, too. In that moment of death, I think she must have felt that despair. After all, to be murdered by your own sister, and only as an example to someone else, she must have died feeling such excruciating hopelessness. I'm so jealous of her. Super jealous. I knew you couldn't be just some ordinary person. You're some kind of abnormality. Turning your own despair into some kind of fetish. Abnormality doesn't even begin to describe it. Like, Genocide Jill is crazy for sure, but this is a whole nother level of nuts! You're saying I don't compare to some lowly beast that can only kill the weak, right? So, I'm hopelessly attractive, hopelessly brilliant, hopelessly athletic. I'm the hopelessly perfect ultimate human. No, I don't think there's anything perfect about anything you just said. Yeah, Master's way more perfect, because on top of everything else, he's got that noble blood. Hmm. Don't you mean, had that noble blood? What did you just say? What do you mean by that? <laughs> you still haven't figured that part out yet? Man, you 
you guys are so slow! You haven't even solved all the mysteries, and yet here you are, yap, yap, yapping away! Are you talking about our memories? You've already solved this mystery, right? I'm the killer! So how about the next one? Maybe you should solve the riddle of your missing memories! Then you can start gloating! Damn straight! That's exactly what we're going to do! We're going to solve all these mysteries! And then... We'll have our victory! <laughs> I can't wait! Alright, then let's just get straight to the point! What memories did you steal from us? When the blurry pictures were taken? And those interviews? It must mean... I got it! It must have something to do with our entrance exams! No fair! At least give us a hint! Your brains are like sponges! All drippy and leaky! I already gave you a hint before! All the memories you lost share something in common with a few other things! Do you recall? You're talking about the motives you provided to try and get us to kill each other, right? So you do remember after all. Well, I would hope you wouldn't forget something so important. It was stupid of me to even ask. I apologize from the bottom of my heart for my bad manners. So then, let me ask you another question. Did you notice that each motive I presented you had a specific theme to it? A theme? Yep, you got it. So that's my question to you all. When Sayaka was murdered, what was the theme of the motive I presented? The driving force behind the motive you presented us with at that point was human connections. Ding, ding, ding. You got it. Remember those DVDs I gave you guys? Each video showed the total destruction of your most important relationships. For example, your family. For example, your friends. I ruined all those relationships and showed you the results. It was to motivate your desire to escape and kickstart your urge to kill. But still, what a cruel thing to do. You're the one that did it! Yes, well, I'm perfectly happy to accept your disapproval. Okay! Time for the next question! Um, so, what was the theme for the second motive? Our past, right? Yay! Makoto got it right again! That time, the theme was... Embarrassing memories and secrets! Yeah! <laughs> and the whole reason Mondo did what he did was to protect his secret. So, how long do you plan on dragging this out? motive for the third murder I got it It was money wasn't it Greed Seek and destroy Hell yeah you got it again Damn straight it was money! Celeste killed Hifumi and Taka for a little personal gain! Her greed led to all kinds of death and destruction! What's the point of all this? Why are you making us go through this case by case? 
<laughs> Don't worry, sweet cheeks. Just one more to go. Now, can you tell me the motive behind Crazy Ass Sakura's Crazy Ass Death? case, it was betrayal. Precisely. You see... Once I revealed Sakura's betrayal, that led to everything that came afterwards. Anyway, it looks like you answered all of my questions correctly. How painfully delightful. But what's the point? What meaning is there in asking those questions now? Relationships? Secrets? Money? Betrayal? These are all pretty standard motives, right? The most normal of normal. Totally middle of the road. But of course, those aren't the only motives that exist in this world. In fact, there are as many reasons to kill as there are people on Earth. They compel humans to kill each other, bringing despair to the world. This is what we refer to as the Seed of Despair. Seed of Despair? Just as water, air, and food promote growth in living things, the Seed of Despair also needs nourishment. And that nourishment is hope. Despair can grow only in the presence of hope. Two sides of the same coin, divided by a razor-thin line. Such is hope and despair. How much longer is this stupid speech of yours? Weren't we discussing our missing memories? Why are you trying to change the subject? If you would listen, you would see I'm not changing the subject. We are discussing your memories. What I'm trying to say is, the seed of despair is closely tied to your own memories. <sighs> How so? You see, by taking away your memories, I gave you hope. Of course that hope merely existed to be consumed by despair. How could taking away someone's memories give them hope? And plus, you haven't given us any hope anyway! Is that so? All you've been able to think about during your time here is how to escape, right? The mere fact that that's what you want proves I gave you hope. What are you talking about? If none of you wanted to escape this school, the killings never would have taken place. That is why we took your memories, so that you would have the desire to leave. The only reason we want to leave is because you took our memories. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Correct! Which means, if we did have our memories, then we wouldn't want to leave. Do I understand that right? What? Why the hell would having our memories make us not want to leave? <laughs> A most troubling thought, isn't it? But it's not enough. I want more distress, more despair! I put so much effort into creating hope in order to feed your despair and make it grow! So, just like Crazy Eddie slashing his prices and passing the savings on to you, let me give you a hint! Huh? Really? Then hurry up and tell us! Okie dokie! Like they say, seeing is believing! I'd like for you to see the outside world! You mean the world beyond the school walls? So something really did happen out there. Now are you interested in what I have to say? You wanna see what's out there? <laughs> I wanna see too! See your faces sink into despair. <laughs> now 
Well then, open sesame! Behold! The world beyond the school walls! This is the outside world you've all been so anxious to claw your way back into! So very dangerous. That's what this means. What are you talking about? None of this makes any sense! What, what am I looking at? This is a scene from a movie or something, right? What you just saw, all of you should recognize it. away within the memories that were taken from you. If you can't remember, please just try. Do your best to try and recall. <laughs> Better kick your brain in the ass, cause it's up to that gray lump whether you live or die. I don't remember, ain't a fucking excuse no more, cause now it's time for the final Remember or die! What the fuck happened outside? You want us to remember or whatever, but when it comes to that crazy, confusing video you showed us, I don't understand a damn thing! What's the meaning of the footage we saw? Is this another one of your practical jokes? I mean, you're telling us to remember, but what am I supposed to be remembering? Nobody can remember. No, it's wrong. Actually, she might remember. Uh, who might remember? The other token. Genocide Jack. What? The two of them share certain kinds of knowledge, but their memories aren't linked, right? If their memories are separate, then even if one personality is forgotten, there's a chance the other may still have those memories. What do you say, Toko? Are you telling me to swap places with her? No! Absolutely not! That'd be like forfeiting my entire identity! Toko. You're the only one we can rely on now. Da -da -da -da! It's me, your friendly neighborhood serial killer! Boy, she just gave in like it was nothing. I'm going to ask you a question, and I want to have it answered immediately. Do you know anything about this video? Huh? What video? The video that's playing right now. Oh, um, I'm the mastermind. Oh, nice to meet you! Uh, nice to meet you, too. That's enough! Just look at the stupid screen! Aye, aye! Roger, you got it, Captain! Well, does it look familiar? I don't have all the details, but... Of course it does! Then you remember all the stuff it's showing? Of course I do! So you didn't lose your memory after all. 
Then why didn't you say something earlier? I only answer questions when someone bothers to ask me. Is it quiet take, you know? Oh my god, she's the worst liar in the world. More importantly, if you really do remember, what is it? Huh? What's the matter, Master? Do you really not remember the tragedy? The tragedy? Oh no! You seriously forgot? Maybe I can help you remember with a kiss. Just answer the question. What happened out there? Well, I can't really say if it happened or if it's still happening. But it was the biggest, most awful, most tragic event in human history. Why is that phrase coming up now? Because it's all because of that event! What is? Are you serious? I'm talking about the way the world is now! Is... now? The world's been destroyed, get it? Destroyed? Explain yourself! Tell us everything you know! Copy that, darling! Okay, so this big, awful, tragic event, they started just calling it the tragedy, happened about a year ago. It was so big and so bad that even this murderous fiend went pale at the sight of it. I guess you could say what happened was man-made. But it was more on the level of a worldwide natural disaster! Either way, there's no doubt that it was the biggest, most awful, most tragic event in human history! And as a result, in basically no time flat! The world turned out the way it did, and that's that. That's all there is to it? Come on! There wasn't a single concrete description in there! Well, it just so happens I don't know any of the specifics! Miss Morose thought I'll play out in real time, so why don't you ask her? We already did, and she didn't know anything. That's why we're asking you. Oh, I couldn't live up to Master's expectations! To die! To die! This is the true tragedy! Okay, okay, that's enough of your little lover's quarrel. Whatever happened, it doesn't matter at this exact point in time, right? The end justifies the mean. Everything serves the outcome. In other words, the world has ended. That's the important thing. But how can the world just end? It's... it's the world! Calm down. It's okay. There's no need to panic. Every living person will be dead in a hundred years anyway. So the world ending isn't that big a deal. Oh, come on. Now you're just being ridiculous. Well, as long as we're being ridiculous, I have another ridiculous story to tell you. It's the story of the Tagami Corporation, which has given Byakuya's life all its meaning. What? What did you say? I'm glad to see you took the bait. You bit into it like a middle-aged secretary at an all-you-can-eat cake buffet. Peasant. But I didn't say anything yet. I just got so fucking bored waiting, I couldn't help it! Even if you're wrong, eventually you'll figure it out, right? <laughs> Till then, you're just going in circles. So, no matter what you pick, you get the right answer. Pretty innovative, don't you think? But do you think it might be a disease? Getting bored so easy, I mean. Do you think I might be sick? Anyway, like I was saying, Byakuya's entire lineage has been totally annihilated! What? What the hell are you talking about? I can confirm that his entire family has died. Even the distant relatives. The Tagami name has perished. Stop with these idiotic jokes! Stop! And said with such authority! A peasant would dare challenge us? The Avatar of Divine Punishment? You must learn your place, peasant! You are no longer the ultimate affluent progeny! 
They, they couldn't possibly be gone. The Togami family is destined to guide the world. Hell, there is no world anymore, remember? It got fucked a full year ago. But hold on. That doesn't make any sense. Huh? I don't make sense. There's no way that happened a year ago. I mean, we only came to this school a few weeks ago. If some kind of world-ending event happened a year ago, then how do you explain the totally normal world we were living in up till then? <laughs> Have you considered the possibility that you're mistaken about that? Mistaken? Well, if I'm understanding you right... It sounds like you think the tragedy happened a year before you arrived here. Well, well, yeah. I mean, like he said, we just got here a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago? Ooh, I get it. You're saying that what happened two years ago actually happened more recently, right? Two years ago? Well, I mean, you guys all started attending Hope's Peak Academy two years ago. <laughs> what the hell is this chick trying to say? I understand why you'd have trouble accepting it, but in the end, you can't deny the truth. And the truth is, everything is cause and effect. Deny that, and you may as well give yourself up to God. So, you must surely understand all the hints I've given you so far, right? What are the memories I took from you? Come now, answer us! Answer with all your heart and soul! How are we supposed to answer? I... I just don't know what's going on anymore. I got it! If we accept that what you say is true, then we've all lost our memories of the last two years after coming to this school. Nope. Nope. No, no, no. Nope. No. I mean, no matter what anyone says, uh-uh. Another correct answer. Well done, peasant. Seriously? This routine again? We've lost two years worth of memories? That's right. You've already spent two full years here at Hope's Peak Academy. And that entire period of time is precisely what you've forgotten. I don't remember the last two years of my life. That... that's not possible! like that. You've been living here for two years? Hell no! That's impossible! I mean, I haven't gone to any awesome school events or anything! Heck, I've never even gone to a single class! No, it's wrong! Hero, there's something I'd like you to take a look at. This notebook right here. Huh? Hey, why is my name written on it? I found it in the locker room on the second floor. If you don't mind, could you take a look inside? Sure, whatever you want. 
but I've never seen this notebook before in my life. Wizza Wizza, is something wrong? It's kind of similar. No, even more than that. <laughs> this is absolutely my handwriting, without a doubt! But how is this... I don't remember ever writing in this thing! No! No way! It looks like you actually did attend class here at Hope's Peak. But somehow, you forgot all about it. Lies! It's all one big lie! I don't want to believe it either. But there's also no explanation for this pocketbook. And whose pocketbook is that? It's mine. And the handwriting inside is also mine. There's no doubt about it. But just like Hero, I have no memory of ever writing in it. And the reason for that is the two years of missing memories? <laughs> After seeing all the evidence, do you have any choice but to acknowledge the truth? Isn't it just so desperately dark? The mystery's solved, but it's like a goddamn funeral in here! Shit, man! I've never been to a funeral! Hell yes! Two years of school life. How many moments of blossoming youth have you missed out on? How many fun classes? How many school events? This was your chance to build lasting friendships, right? And on top of that, Something tragically sad happened one year ago. The biggest, most awful, most tragic event in human history. Right before everyone's eyes, the world came crashing down. You absorbed all that despair, but then you forgot it all. And once you'd forgotten, you made the choice to subject yourselves to this killing game. Oh, and there's one other thing. To be even more precise, the memories you all lost were... Actually, never mind. I'm bored. Explaining stuff is boring. What? We are bored of this world! Everyone always talks big, declaring all the great things they'll do. But then they always fizzle out. This world is just so desperately fucking boring! What are you talking about? In a way, I'm jealous of all of you. To give yourself over so completely to such stimulating despair. Yeah, so figure out the rest for yourselves! I'm sick of expositioning all this shit! Figure out what? Figure out where your memories come apart. That's at the heart of all of this. any time other than that day. When I first came to the gates of this school and stepped foot in the main hall, when I passed out, I was overcome with a strange sensation. Wow, you still have enough spirit to keep on talking, huh? Remembers passing out, right? And your sense of time got all messed up because of the memory loss after that? I guess it must have been something like that. After I passed out, I woke up in a classroom with my head on a desk. I assumed not much time had passed since I'd collapsed in the main hall. The reason it felt so short was because... Our memories of the time in between had been completely removed? You got it, honey! Two years of memories? Poof! Gone! Which means, of course... When everyone met for the first time, it wasn't actually for the first time. Unaware of this fact, you took the time to introduce yourselves to each other, but... 
But by that point, we'd already spent two years together at the school. That's what those photos reveal, isn't it? <laughs> yep, that's what they reveal. You were all such close friends. You spent two years together, and then you started killing each other. And it was all so you could escape into a world that's already been annihilated! <laughs> what a terribly tragic tale! Even if you left now, there's nothing you could do to fix it! You're the one who set things up to be like this! I love you all so much. What? Once your school life here began, I thought about you constantly. It's only natural that I would fall in love. So, since I love you guys so much, I'll tell you all about it! All about the idea we came up with as the ultimate despair! Our plan to bring despair to all mankind! Let's go back in time, two years, okay? Back to when everyone first came to this school. School life during that first year overflowed with hope and happiness. Oh boy, it was just the worst. Everyone was enjoying themselves so much. You were all having the time of your lives. But that couldn't last forever, of course. The peacefulness only made it through that first year. Because after that, an event unfolded that hammered a soul-crushing despair into all of humanity. The biggest, most awful, most tragic event in human history. The tragedy. All too soon, the world's days of peace came to a bloody end. And as you can imagine, the school was no exception. The tragedy even made its way here, leading to the extermination of most of the students. What are you? Hmm? What do you mean? The most tragic event in human history, and the ultimate despair that caused it. I can't believe it's all because of just you and Mukuro. Was it some kind of organization? An angry mob? An incredibly motivated family? You have a point. If I had to describe it, I'd say it was none of those. How can I put it? It was more of an ideological thing. Despair is contagious, you know. It's almost like a natural phenomenon. Everyone is capable of it. And now the entire world has fallen into despair. In other words, if you see despair as the enemy, then your enemy is the world itself. I just don't understand why. We didn't ask you to try to understand. This was a tangent anyway, unrelated to the matter at hand. Okay, so let's get back to the story. Hope's Peak had taken so much damage. You guys were the only survivors. The members of the 78th class of Hope's Peak Academy were the only ones left. And then, something super neat happened! Now pay attention, cause this is important, and I'm only gonna say it once! So guess what? To protect everyone who had survived, Hope's Peak was transformed into a shelter! That's right! It was transformed into a shelter! Ah, I said it twice! Now, someone was responsible for that transformation, for creating what would eventually become your prison. Do any of you know who that might have been? I got it! It could only have been the headmaster of Hope Peak Academy. 
he wanted to turn the school into a shelter to try and protect us. To protect us from the despair and tragedy taking place outside. That's why he asked us to make that promise. To say that we were willing to live in this school forever. We believe he had something like that in mind, yes. If you, the collective hope of a new generation, could survive, maybe the world could have a fresh start. Yeah, the headmaster put that much faith in you. And because we had that same hope, that's why we all agreed to live here forever. But creating the shelter was also his single biggest mistake. Laughable, really. He was the headmaster, but he had no idea. He had no idea that we, the ultimate despair, had already made our way into the school. So what was supposed to be a shelter to keep you safe became a cage that made it impossible for you to escape this. I have to say, it really helped me out a lot. It saved me a ton of time. By the way, it was you yourselves who blocked off the windows, the doors, all the exits. Under the headmaster's direction, you all went about your work like obedient little sheep. You mean, we trapped ourselves in here? And then you forgot all about it and started bitching about how you were trapped in here. Once you'd finished building your little shelter, it was time for me and Mukuro to get to work. And thus began the killing game. Me and Mukuro have come here, spending the last two years waiting for that moment. That moment where you all began killing each other served as the climax of our global despair plan. And the only reason you survived the tragedy was so that you could be a part of it. You only let us live so we could go around killing each other? Is that what you're saying? Why? Why would you do that? Because this was so much more than a simple high school death match. Rather, it was a method to hunt down and destroy every last remaining speck of hope in the world. What are you saying? Well, it would seem that there's a little bit left out there. A few souls unwilling to give up hope. So I thought I should show them, which is why I... <laughs> well, why don't you tell me? about you hijacking the airwaves, aren't you? Uh-huh. That's exactly what I'm talking about. To show the world the murders taking place at this school, which was meant to be a symbol of hope. That was the whole point of the ultimate despair! When I said climax, that was what I was talking about! The world watched as you fell into despair and began to kill each other one after another. Despair is as contagious as any disease. Any hope left turns to despair. <laughs> Isn't the power of television just amazing? By the way, since we started broadcasting, a whole bunch of people have tried to come and rescue you. Uh, are you serious? But utilizing the heavy weaponry I installed around the school grounds, I had no problem expelling them. Expelled them? I have to thank you all. 
They were a relentless bunch, refusing to give up on hope and trying to force their beliefs on the world. But in the end, I was able to give them the final despair. Death. So you just used us? To bring despair to everyone in the outside world? Well, sure, but I also gave you a second chance at life, right? So it's like, give and take! Give and take? You're so full of shit! And there's a reason I chose you guys to survive when all the other students were dropping like flies! I mean, we built up two years of memories together. You were all my treasured classmates. Sorry, that's a lie. I just figured you'd despair even more when you found out a friend had betrayed you. And that's the truth, which is what you wanted, right? So, does it make you feel utterly lost and hopeless? You solved the mystery, but despair at the truth, right? Don't tell me. Did you seriously count on the possibility that we would solve your mystery? And if we did, then what? Our final desire for creating this world of despair was so we could experience one last class trial. If you were bold enough to solve the mystery, only to discover that the truth was utterly hopeless, how would you react? What would you do? See? Discovering the truth doesn't necessarily lead to a sense of hope. Truth can be full of despair, too! Like right fucking now! Not to mention... All those motives I talked about were totally meaningless. I mean, with the world having ended and all. Meaningless? Then we... have been murdering each other? For nothing? And think about it. You chose to lock yourselves up here, then started murdering each other to get out. We weren't just random strangers either. We were classmates. We'd spent two years together. We get it! We get it, okay? You're totally awesome, right? We get it already! Don't help us! I'll do anything! Just help me! A peasant begging for his life? Oh, how delightful! We've never witnessed such a travesty firsthand! But I'm sorry to say, begging doesn't work on me! All I want is despair, and there's no reason for it. And since there's no reason, there's no argument against it. There's just no understanding it. No argument, no understanding. What better definition of ultimate despair could there be? Wait, hold on. You've just been going on about whatever you feel like, but... But there's no real reason for us to believe anything you have to say. Huh? You say the world's fallen apart, but I haven't seen it for myself. So I don't acknowledge it. I don't accept it as the truth! Until you see it with your own eyes, truth and falsehood overlap one another. In other words, you're not unlike Schrodinger's cat right now. Is that what you're saying? If so, what then? Aren't you saying you won't accept the truth? Until you can go outside and see for yourself? Well, you better not! You go out into that world and you're all gunners for sure! Trust me, I'm not lying about any of this! Well, even if it's all true... I refuse to give in! I refuse to lose to you! For the sake of everyone you've killed! Huh? Everyone I've killed? What are you talking about? You're the ones who killed them! I didn't kill anyone. I simply gave you a little nudge in the right direction. And that's all it took for you to start killing each other. You're nothing but bloodthirsty animals. That's why anyone was murdered here, peasant! Say what you want about hope, but we're all creatures of instinct, right? Despair comes naturally! Hell yes! <laughs> that's funny as shit! No! This isn't just some game to us. It's 
murder, plain and simple. You stole our memories, invented reasons for us to do it. You pushed us all into a corner. It's all your fault. You certainly have a talent for passing the buck, don't you? That must be your hope, huh? But we don't have much time left to keep up this banter. We have to draw things to a close soon. What do you mean? I'm talking about the vote, of course! You didn't forget about that little rule, did you? Oh, and also, since this will be the last vote, I decided to change the rules! What? You guys so full of hope, and me so full of despair. I've decided to have you vote which one will be punished! If even one of you votes to punish Hope, well then... I'll consider that a win for me! And punish everyone on the side of Hope! Even if it's just one person? Oh, but don't worry! I won't be voting, of course! Even if you don't, you've still got the upper hand in all this! It's okay. Nobody would actually vote to kill themselves, right? Let me just mention one more thing. When I win to punish you guys, you'll have to stay here till you grow old and die. No fighting, no killing. That's your punishment. You mean we just... We'd have to just live here? She's saying she'll let us live! If you're not happy with that... Then go ahead and punish me, and make your way to the outside world. Enter a world fallen from grace, where only despair exists, where you'd likely be dead within a day. What are you saying? So no matter what, we're doomed! Wait a sec! I just got hit with an inspiration bomb! Dying of old age is boring as shit, right? The audience at home isn't gonna dig that at all! So, here's what'll happen. One of you will get to experience an instant, super impressive punishment. What? You... you can't just... Do you mean to say, you'll execute one of us? And I get to decide who's gonna have to suck it down! Makoto, you're up! Me? Yeah, you've been acting up, pausing up! I hate you! So let me make this clear. Everyone has two choices in front of them. If a single person votes for Hope to be punished, then only Makoto will receive a harsh punishment, and the rest of you will live here in peace. If, on the other hand, you desire to see us punished, then you must all leave this place. I will force you out. Ensuring you all die horrible deaths in the outside world. What I'm saying is, if you sacrifice Makoto, the rest of you will get to live out your lives! What? Has your resolve softened? Have you lost confidence? Are you afraid of being punished? Don't you have faith in your friends? No! That's not it! It's okay. You're right to be afraid. It would seem all of those around you have realized the futility of going against me. Guys? It's so beautiful. Your lovely faces, eroded by despair, have come together as one. Besides, Yoko! You could never betray your father, could you? What? I mean, the Headmaster's only wish was that all of you would survive, right? That's why he tried to trap you all here, after all. The least you can do is try to honor your dead father's wishes. <laughs> Kyoko! One person's despair is enough to seal your fate! Isn't that just the most hopeless outcome ever? So, who do you think's gonna give in? Whose despair is gonna sign your death warrant? 
no one. Nobody's gonna give in to despair! We're not gonna lose to you! So boring. Stubborn till the very end, huh? Well, that's fine. Then let's just hurry up and get it over with. It's time for the final vote. Everything will come to an end. Your stupid hope. And your stupid life! We won't give up! As long as there's hope, we'll never give up! If I were to die, that would be the end of Hope's Peak Academy. <laughs> Don't lose hope now! All my fortune-telling senses are telling me not to leave this place. But to live means moving forward, right? So even if it's hard, even if we're scared, we don't have any choice, do we? I want to keep on living. I want to open the next door. There must be something new waiting for me! That's why. That's why. No matter what, I need to get out of here. The whole fortune telling thing doesn't matter anymore. What matters is my own gut feelings. We won't give up. As long as there's hope, we'll never give up. If I were to die, that would be the end of Hope's Peak Academy. <sighs> I've decided to have faith in myself. By the way, the air outside is totally polluted, you know. The only reason we're okay in here is thanks to the air purifiers in the physics lab. Don't lose hope now! I've been thinking about all this. And I was thinking, at a time like this, what would Sakura do? You only get stronger by taking adversity by the horns. Confront that thorny path with enthusiasm. That sounds like something she'd say, right? No. I think that's definitely what she'd say. Which is why I... I... Yeah! I've made up my mind! We won't give up! As long as there's hope, we'll never give up! If I were to die... That would be the end of Hope's Peak Academy. I... I've decided to have faith in myself. By the way, the air outside is totally polluted, you know. The only reason we're okay in here... is thanks to the air purifiers in the physics lab. Say whatever you want. I've made my decision. If I die, the purifiers will screech to a halt. In other words, as soon as I die, the communal life you've all been living will come to an end. Me. Don't lose hope now! <laughs> I don't care either way! I'm fine with whichever one is more interesting! Actually, I may not look like it, I always hated school. No matter how I look, still hate it! <laughs> oh, but no matter what, Master has to come along with us! We won't give up! As long as there's hope, we'll never give up! If I were to die, that would be the end of Hope's Peak Academy. I, I've decided to have faith in myself. By the way, the air outside is totally polluted, you know. The only reason we're okay in here is thanks to the air purifiers in the physics lab. Say whatever you want. I've made my decision. If I die, the purifiers will screech to a halt. In other words, as soon as I die, 
The communal life you've all been living will come to an end. I can keep on living! As long as I have my master's love! <laughs> all of you will have to leave. You'll have to go into the world outside, where only death and despair are waiting. Don't lose hope now! What's the matter? You're not actually trying to encourage me, are you? <laughs> Ridiculous. It never even crossed my mind that I might give in to despair. But don't misunderstand me. I couldn't care in the slightest what happens to you. I just have to keep my word. I swore I would end the life of the Mastermind. Besides, the Togami family isn't dead, because I'm still alive. So until I can restore the Togami family and bring it greater glory than it's ever known... We won't give up! As long as there's hope, we'll never give up! If I were to die... That would be the end of Hope's Peak Academy. I've decided to have faith in myself! By the way, the air outside is totally polluted, you know. The only reason we're okay in here is thanks to the air purifiers in the physics lab. Say whatever you want. I've made my decision. If I die, the purifiers will screech to a halt. In other words, as soon as I die, the communal life you've all been living will come to an end. I can keep on living as long as I have my master's love. <gasps> all of you will have to leave. You'll have to go into the world outside, where only death and despair are waiting. I already said I would claim the Mastermind's life, by whatever means necessary. So, what are you gonna do? Will you just die? Is that what you want? Don't lose hope now! I didn't really know my father so I can't pretend to know what he was thinking. But even if we're just connected by blood, there's one thing I am sure of. He would never want us to abandon Makoto and choose to stay here. I can't explain why exactly. But if I'm sure of anything, I'm sure of that. Just because we don't actually know anything, does that mean we can't understand? Could it be that... No, never mind. So, Makoto, I don't think you wound up at this school because you had good luck or bad luck. I think you came here for a different reason entirely. You came here to bring down the ultimate despair. You came here to confront despair without ever giving up. And if that's true, I think we could call you the ultimate hope. What do you think? What the... What the hell are you? So uncool. Your stupid faces, the stupid things you've said, the stupid way you all treat each other. It's all so uncool, so unhip. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up! Lame, lame, lame. Despair. Every 
Everything is pointless! Suffer from despair! I just love despair! Everything is pointless! No! No! Despair into hope keeps on going! I refuse to give up! I refuse to get bored! I refuse to throw it all away! I refuse to despair! Because all I have going for me is the desire to keep moving forward! What's going on? What's happening? like we've reached the end. I think it may be time to vote. We just gotta pull the lever, right? Good! I'm ready to go! <laughs> Let's put an end to these trials. Put an end to the killing. With our own hands. Don't make me repeat myself. Okay. <laughs> hey. However. How many 
many times do I have to tell you? <laughs> Don't get in my way! <laughs> so this is how the despair of death feels. <sighs> it's so wonderful! Even a tenth of this despair. Even a hundredth. I want every last soul on this planet to taste such despair. I want the entire world to die with that despair in its mouth. Okay, let's do this. I've reserved an extra special punishment for last. Let's give it everything we've got. It's punishment time! <laughs> Hey. Makoto. Indeed. If, on the other hand, you desire to see us punished, then you must all leave this place. 
I will force you out, ensuring you all die horrible deaths in the outside world. In other words... But... It's true. <laughs> yes. Uh, um... enough anyway but <sighs> for serious In other words... Am I wrong? Makoto. This is goodbye. And goodbye to Sakura. But hey, if we gotta say goodbye, we may as well do it with a smile on our face. Hey guys! You guys want your fortunes told anywhere, anytime. You just let me know. I'll be there. You know how much I hate being annoyed. But if something does come up, you may as well let me know. I can't guarantee I'll actually bother listening, but, you know. I don't know why, but I have a burning desire to start writing. I might be able to pull it off. 
A story about Master and me. And the others, I guess. I can't say I'm sorry about what happened, but still. It does feel kind of strange. I really don't know what to say. I guess we graduated? Interesting. Things are getting very interesting indeed. <laughs> like I said at the beginning, I'm not a teddy bear. I am Monokuma. And I am your... I am this school's... Headmaster. 